Yep, so what's up guys? This is your favorite channel, Wabi Sabi Fusion here. Today we are gonna see, what if Naruto and Kim married decide to change the world? So let's move on to the video. September 5th, 2003. Ugh, I can't believe I got detention. Kim stated as she walked through the mall. I don't really see the problem with it. You just spend an hour in a room doing something quietly. More than anything it's like an extra hour of homeroom. Naruto stated as he walked with her into Club Banana. Pulling a top off the rack, Naruto shook his head at the prices. Smarty Mart had the exact same thing for a quarter of the price. But of course, Kim said no. It's not about the time wasted Naruto. It's about the fact that I, a cheerleader, have to go to detention. Cheerleaders don't do detention. Kim said as she looked over some shoes. Kim, anyone can get detention. As long as you're a student you can get detention. And you're a student first and a cheerleader second. Naruto said as Kim held up a dress. Spinning around and presenting it, Kim looked at Naruto expectantly. Kim, I've told you many times that you can pull off almost anything. If you're asking for an expert opinion, you're asking the wrong person. With a smile, Kim looked herself over in the mirror before deciding to put the dress back. It was from last season anyway, and it wasn't old enough to be considered retro yet. Walking out the store, Kim sat down on a bench and placed her head in her left hand. It's not just about the fact that I'm a cheerleader. It's knowing that I'm going to have to deal with Bonnie's harassment tomorrow. Kim expressed sadly as her right hand played with her hair. Sitting down next to her, Naruto wrapped his right arm around Kim's shoulder. Kim, like Ron has said countless times, you fight criminals and save the world. Why does dealing with a 14-year-old girl bother you? Leaning into his shoulder, Kim explained, When I'm out there helping people, it's not about me. It's about them. I like helping people. As long as it's for someone else it's no problem because I'm doing it for them. But when it's about me, things get complicated. I worry about what people think about me. I know I shouldn't, but I can't help it. It gets worse when I realize that I've been all over the world, and I've seen so many different kinds of people. But people like Bonnie just get on my nerves. It also doesn't help that I can't just deal with those types of people like I do with criminals. I can't punch or kick them into submission because that's illegal. Kim finished while crossing over her arms and frowning. Letting the silence hang over them for a while, Naruto thought about what to say. It was a conundrum to say the least. Kim could deal with criminals no problem. But that was because she didn't think of them as peers. They were just criminals to her and thus didn't deserve more than a passing thought. Unfortunately, the same couldn't be said of their high school peers. Having to deal with Bonnie constantly could wear on anyone's nerves. I don't have an answer to that. I really wish I did though. Well, I do. But I know you'd say no. Getting a raised eyebrow, Naruto elaborated. I have Bonnie transferred to a different school. Stifling a laugh, Kim just shook her head. It was a tempting offer. But she couldn't do that to someone or have someone do that for her. Come on. Let's go. I need to be home soon. You're coming over tonight, right? Hearing her stress the word right. Let Naruto he couldn't get out of it without a very good reason. Yes, I'll be there at midnight. Naruto responded despairingly. Spankin. Kim said as they left the mall. Lifting up the window, Naruto sneaked his way inside. Making sure not to make any excess noise, Naruto sneaked his way over to the bed in the room and tried to stealthily go inside the covers. However, a voice made him freeze. You're late, mumbled a half-awake Kim. I lost track of time working on something. Sorry. Naruto whispered to Kim. Just for that you have to be the big spoon. Kim mumbled and then smiled when she heard Naruto respond. But I like being the little spoon. Chuckling at his response, Kim got comfortable and fell back to sleep. Naruto, however, didn't fall asleep immediately. Holding Kim so close let him know that she wasn't wearing a bra. Again, grumbling about how he told her to wear one when they slept together, he fell asleep soon after. September 6, 2003. Holding his breath under Kim's bed, Naruto kept himself off the floor. He didn't want James to see, hear, or even smell him. It'd be hell trying to explain what he was doing there so early. Hearing and seeing him walk down the stairs, Naruto waited 30 seconds before he slowly lowered himself down to the floor. Rolling out from under the bed, Naruto stood up slowly. He didn't want to accidentally see Kim undressing. Kim, I thought we talked about you wearing a bra when I'm sleeping over. Naruto stated as he sat on her bed. But it's so uncomfortable to sleep in. Kim stated with a puppy dog pout. Quickly averting his eyes, Naruto continued. Be that as it may, I don't feel comfortable doing this. 
and you not wearing underwear. Naruto said as he crossed his arms. Naruto, you don't like doing this period. Kim said as she began to undress in plain view of Naruto. Quickly closing his eyes, Naruto began to frown. I don't like sneaking around behind your parents' back. Thinking over the words he said, he realized that it didn't sound like he meant. That came out wrong. I mean that I don't like betraying your parents' trust. And just how are you betraying my parents' trust? Hmm. Kim stated as she finished dressing herself. I'm sneaking into their house once a week to sleep in the same bed as their only daughter. Any parent would freak over that. Flicking his ear, Kim chose to repeat what she had said many times before. You only sleep once a week. If you didn't sleep here, you wouldn't sleep at all. For some reason, you can sleep only when you're near me. That means that it's my responsibility to make sure that you do. Kim stated as she pointed her finger at his face. Getting cross-eyed from looking at her finger, Naruto looked at her face and saw once again the resolve in them, and knew that he wouldn't be able to change her mind. Sighing, Naruto put his hands up in surrender. Kim could be so stubborn. Naruto, what are you doing in here? Kim quickly rode into her pad. Seeing the words disappear, Kim knew that he got the message. I talked back to a teacher, told her that Romeo and Juliet is a horrible play, and that Shakespeare wrote many better plays. Smirking, Kim noticed a certain mole rat make an appearance. Thanks for getting us out of there, Ron. Though, you might want to hide Rufus from Barkin later on, or he might just give you detention. Naruto said as he sat next to Kim at Bueno Nacho. I'm telling you, he is out to get me. I looked at him funny once and he's been after me ever since. Ron stated as he was busy mixing his order together. Why did you look at him funny? Kim asked as she sipped her drink. Though her eyes kept traveling to whatever monstrosity Ron was currently making. I thought I saw a booger. I was gonna tell him about it. But then he gave me detention. Ron half screamed while his arms flailed about. That reminds me, Kim said as she gave Naruto a look. How is Romeo and Juliet a horrible play? Two star-crossed lovers who die in each other's arms. That's romantic. Making a disgusted look, Naruto replied, It's a play about two horny teenagers who couldn't control themselves, and then got everyone around them killed. There's nothing romantic about it. It's a tragedy for a reason. It's even more tragic that out of all of Shakespeare's plays, we have to learn about that piece of crap. Ah, <sighs> huh? Kim, Naruto. I want you to see the crowning achievement of all humanity. The Nako, the perfect blend of nacho and taco. Taking a bite, Ron's eyes rolled up a bit from the taste. Do you guys want some? Ron asked as Rufus took a big chunk out of the Nako, shaking their head. They were startled when Kim's communicator went off, pulling it out of her pocket. She answered the call. Hey Wade, what's the sitch? I looked into our mystery thief and it turns out that she was spotted taking a private jet to a private island. Wade stated while looking smug. What about her history? Any info on that? Naruto asked while he leaned into the view of the camera. Unfortunately, no. You'd think that someone who wore a green and black outfit like that would be memorable. Wade said while looking frustrated. Hmm. That's weird. Well, I guess you're gonna have to expand your search. Naruto said as he moved out of camera view. I could, or you could do it. Wade stated as he winked to Kim and ended the call. Snapping his head back to the communicator, Naruto glowered at the blank screen. Kim just smirked. Ready. Getting a thumbs up, Naruto opened the door. Immediately, the winds began to buffet them as Kim and Ron made sure their packs were secure. Ron, I added suspenders to your pants to see if they'll stay on finally. Naruto yelled while Ron was busy fiddling with his suspenders. Go! Beckoning them to jump Kim and Ron did so. Though Ron was screaming before and during the jump. Seeing them turn into small little dots, Naruto went back to the controls and looked at Team Possible's vitals. Sighing, Naruto settled himself in for a wait. Hearing an explosion Naruto was surprised to see the island exploding. Looking at the clock he saw that less than 30 minutes had passed. Quickly spotting Kim and Ron in the water, Naruto deactivated the ship's cloaking and flew down. Arriving near them, he set the ship on the water. Opening the door, he pulled Kim and then Ron into the ship. Closing the door back up, Naruto wasn't surprised to see that Kim and Ron went to immediately change out of their mission suits. However, Naruto was pleasantly surprised to see that Ron's suspenders held and kept his pants on him. Going back to the controls, Naruto set the plane on an automated path back to Middleton. Hearing a slight yell, Naruto chuckled when he realized that Ron had fallen over. Smack! Ow, Naruto said as he rubbed the back of his head while looking at Kim. Apparently, she didn't like physical comedy. So, what happened? You two were in there for less than a half hour. Naruto stated while rubbing his head, it still stung. Kim had freaky strength for such a small girl. 
Well, we got caught before we could even infiltrate the lair. After that this guy named Dr. Drake or something tried feeding us to his pet sharks. So, we escaped the sharks. And then we were able to retrieve the disc for the cybergentic tick. And then we got attacked by Shago. After that, some lasers were activated and the lair exploded. Kim stated nonchalantly after she sat down on the seat next to Naruto's. You know, I'm wondering about how that happened. I don't buy that chain reaction excuse Shago gave. Ron stated while toweling off his hair. Wait, wasn't he talking about attaching small bombs to his tick? Maybe that's what did it. Kim suggested while Ron just shrugged his shoulders. Anyway, let's get this back to its rightful owner. So set course to the Amazon. Kim stated while crossing her arms and putting her feet on the controls. Glaring at her, Naruto pushed her feet off. This in turn made Kim pout at him. Of course, Naruto just turned his head. Rufus's giggling behind them made Naruto smile while Kim went into a deeper pout. Ron just fell asleep. September 7, 2003. So, the Barkin got you too. Words appeared on her pad. As she was about to respond, she saw that she was being stared at. What are you three staring at? Kim asked rudely. Cheerleader you've got a zit. Junior stated in a flat tone. Cheerleaders don't get zits. Vinny corrected in a condescending tone. Oh, then maybe it's a tiny explosive device. Junior stated in a strange moment of insight. Quickly pulling out her compact, Kim checked and saw that she indeed had the nanotech on her. Crap, Mr. Barkin I got a G. Not this time possible. No exit. Barkin stated as he blocked Kim from exiting, back flipping onto her desk, and then jumping over Barkin Kim. Yelled sorry Mr. Barkin. No one escapes from M. Barkin's threat was cut off when he saw that Naruto ran out the door during his moment of surprise. Those two are going down. Seeing Kim and Ron speed off, Naruto was concerned when he saw a hovercraft following them. However, he then realized that he had no way of following after them, until he heard tires squealing, as Barkin drove the student driver car. Quickly running, Naruto jumped onto the roof of the car, and had to hang on when it began to swerve. Tapping the passenger side mirror, he saw the shocked faces everyone on board. Big Mike quickly lowered the window for Naruto, and he was just able to get himself inside. Follow them. Quickly speeding off, Naruto kept on eye on the hovercraft. It appeared to have lowered some sort of ray thing, though it seemed that whoever was using it couldn't control it well. Are you talking to yourself? Junior's voice distracted Naruto as he saw that Barkin was mumbling to himself. Never distract the driver. Barkin yelled while turning his head completely to look at Junior. Eyes on the road, Naruto yelled as he saw the gravitomic heading their way. Getting out of the car and onto its roof, Naruto was ready when the car began to float up. Sorry about the roof Mr. Barkin. Naruto yelled as he jumped as hard as he could leaving small dents in the roof. Grabbing the ray, Naruto began to turn it away from the car, and he was glad to see that it dropped the car back onto the road. Quickly swinging himself up, he landed on top of the hovercraft. Hello, you must be Dr. Drake. Naruto yelled as he surprised the villains. It's Dr. Draken. How have none of you heard of me? Draken yelled as he shook his fists in Naruto's direction. It's cause you aren't that big of a threat. Naruto replied with honesty. The laugh he got from Shago just made him smirk. Shago, make him pay. Draken screamed while pointing at Naruto, jumping at him with glowing green hands. Shago was unprepared for Naruto to duck under her and then push her with his back, causing her to fly off the hovercraft. Um, can we maybe talk about this? Draken offered nervously while slowly backing up in the little amount of space he had available. Sure. Just deactivate the tick on Kim and you can go. Naruto stated while staring straight into Draken's eyes. Wait, it's on her. Draken asked surprised. The glare he got from Naruto though quickly had him pushing buttons to deactivate the tick. Detonation sequence activated. Stated a computerized voice. Ah. Uh, Oh, Draken stated while slowly turning to look at Naruto, only to find that he was gone. We need the the most dangerous chemical known to modern man. Diablo saw stat. Ron requested of Ned. Grabbing one quickly, Ned threw it to Ron who was about to catch it. The hot sauce was blasted with green energy. Uh, 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 that tick isn't going to come off. Shago stated with a smirk before she was knocked unconscious by a knee to the back of the head by Naruto. Quickly grabbing another Diablo sauce packet. Naruto tore it open and spread it on his right hand. Carefully he grabbed the tick and ran outside, where he saw Draken still fiddling around with his controls. Throwing it at the hovercraft, the tick attached itself to the bottom of it. Hearing a ticking, Draken chose to jump from the hovercraft as it exploded, and he managed to grab onto the Bueno Nacho Taco. You think you're all that? 
but you're not. Draken yelled as he hung onto the taco as it spun around. The sounds of sirens filled the air, as SWAT arrived to arrest Draken and Shago. Who was he yelling that at? Kim asked as she and Ron walked out of Bueno Nacho. No idea. But Ron you know how to get this stuff off of my hand. It's starting to burn, Naruto stated with a grimace as he held up his hand where the salsa was slowly bubbling. Water, but you might want to start washing it off now, before it starts causing third-degree burns. Getting a white-eyed look from both Naruto and Kim for that he went on to explain. Yeah, Diablo sauce is actually being discontinued because it's caused a number of third and fourth degree burns. Ron stated while rubbing the back of his neck. Quickly running back inside, Naruto began to furiously scrub his hand with water. Outside however, Kim was busy accepting the fact that she still had to go to detention. Oh, Naruto complained as he hit his burned hand on the desk. Careful there, or you're going to aggravate your burn injury. Kim stated as she painted Big Mike's fingernails. Yeah, well the pain is nothing compared to how betrayed I feel. Naruto stated while staring at Big Mike with narrowed eyes. Naruto, your fingernails don't need nail polish. The natural shine and shape your nails are and are beyond perfect. It makes girls jealous that a boy has better nails than them. Kim said as she focused on putting sparkles on Big Mike's nails. Yeah, well everyone likes getting dolled up every once in a while Kim. Naruto stated while now glaring at Junior as he got his nails painted. I can't believe it. Possible has ruined the holy time known as detention. What is wrong with the world? Barkin screamed from his desk as Ron just stood off to the side smiling smugly. Mexico. Now tell me, who is the mightiest? Toru asked gloatingly. Give you a clue. Jade said from the plane door. Turning around Toru was able to see the small glow of the talisman activating before Jade jumped. He yeah. With a yell, Jade kicked Toru into the same house that he had knocked Jackie and El Toro against. Landing on her feet, Jade ran up to Jackie and asked, Can I keep it Jackie? No, came Jackie's quick reply. Oh, was Jade's response. September 15, 2003 Middleton. Ooh, green leather. Kim stated while staring at the club banana catalog. Kim, I've got some bad news. Wait interrupted as he appeared on the communicator. No kidding, I can't afford this jacket. Kim stated depressingly as she leaned into her beanbag chair. Yeah, your bank account is empty. You're broke. But that's not important right now. Wade replied to her. Of course it's important. Did you hack into my bank account? Kim grilled Wade for information before she gasped and asked. Have you been reading my diary? I tried to get into your diary. But Naruto put some kinda weird protections on it. I couldn't figure them out. And of course I hacked into your bank account. I hack into Ron's all the time. Wade stated before taking a sip from his drink. Naruto hacked into my computer too. Kim asked confused. Hmm. I don't think so. Your own personal computer has all kinds of protection on it that I can't crack. So it's more likely that when Naruto was upgrading your computer, he put those in. Wade responded. Frowning Kim tried to remember when Naruto had upgraded her computer. Wait Naruto upgraded my computer over two years ago. So Tha Kim was interrupted when Wade made a spit take. Are you telling me that your security is over two years old? Wade stated wide-eyed. I think so. Kim responded unsure before deciding that it'd be best to not say any more on that subject. But, um, what was that bad news you were talking about earlier? Oh yeah, Draken. Your arch foe has escaped from prison. Wade said when he remembered why he called in the first place. Since when is he my arch foe? Kim asked as she stood up. She needed to get Ron and meet with Naruto. So that they could track Draken down. Well, when he was in jail he was repeatedly heard saying that. That Kim Possible thinks she's all that. But she's not. Wade responded doing his best Draken impression. But Naruto was the one who did the foiling. So shouldn't he be the arch foe? Wait, does he even know Naruto's name? Kim responded as she waved goodbye to her parents. No idea. But does it really matter? Wade asked as he raised an eyebrow in confusion. Of course it matters. I don't want my own rogues gallery. Look for now. Classify him as Team Possible's arch foe. That way we all have equal responsibility. Kim stated as she walked towards Ron's house. Can do. Good luck on the mission, Wade said as he signed off. Ron, Draken is not my arch foe. Kim responded, annoyed at Ron's accusation. During the walk to Naruto's house, Ron had heard about how Kim stated that Draken was Team Possible's arch foe. He responded that Draken was Kim's arch foe. After all, all he did was run away. That's what he specialized in. He didn't foil criminals, he distracted. He knew his role. 
Then if he's not your arch foe then he must be Naruto's. Ron's flawless logic was skewered by Naruto's voice coming from a hidden speaker near his front door. Nope. Sorry Ron. According to the official hero supervillain rules of conduct, your arch foe is the first enemy you meet that continually gets in your way. Therefore that's both you and Kim Naruto stated while Kim gained a frown. Naruto you wrote that book and put it online. No one actually follows them. Kim stated with her hands on her hips. Shago. According to the official hero supervillain rules of conduct, your arch foe is the first enemy you meet that continually gets in your way. Therefore, if Kim Possible gets in my way again she is my arch foe. Draken explained to Shago as he looked through his printout of the official hero supervillain rules of conduct. You got that book off the internet, it's probably something some kid whipped up. Shago commented as she drove through the tundra. Shago, you can't just put official on any nilly-willy thing you want. If it has official in its title then it must be official. Draken stated while looking up from his book. Shago just rolled her eyes. Kim I could just buy you the jacket? Naruto stated as he heard about Kim's money issues. Naruto you already fun team possible. I can't in good conscience. Let you also buy me something just because I want it. Kim stated as she quickly shot down his idea. Why not KP? He funds my bueno nacho meals. Ron stated as he leaned back with his hands behind his head. Hearing bueno nacho, Rufus poked his head out of Ron's pocket, but quickly went back in when he realized that there wasn't any actual food. Ron, if Naruto didn't fund your bueno nacho meals, you'd put your whole family into bankruptcy. By the way, that makes you an enabler Naruto. Kim stated while crossing her arms and frowning at Naruto. A. There are worse things he could be doing. It's also partly why I make us all lunch. Gotta make sure that Ron actually eats something besides bueno nacho. And I'm not talking about the mystery meat they serve in the cafeteria. I still have flashbacks about that. Naruto stated while he accidentally flashbacked to when he found out what mystery meat was. Shuddering, Naruto suppressed the horrible memory with good ones. The other reason is as thanks for teaching me how to cook. I cannot tell you how often I used to eat instant ramen. I got sick of that crap. Now, I only buy the expensive kind. Though once in a blue moon. I get Ron to make me some from scratch. Naruto stated while getting a slightly dreamy look. Snapping her fingers, Kim was able to snap Naruto back to reality. Anyway, I'm not gonna let you buy me things. With that Kim closed her eyes, crossed her arms, and leaned back into her comfy seat. Frowning, Naruto tried to figure out why she didn't let him get her things. She knew he could afford it no problem. She was the only person who knew exactly how much money he made. Wade had an inkling and Ron couldn't really keep a secret so he wasn't told. However, she said he couldn't buy her things. She didn't say he couldn't give her things. Smirking at the plan that was forming in his head, Naruto knew what he was going to do. Alaska. Kim, Ron, you two should know that Draken and Shago are near the Trans-Alaska pipeline. There's a laser drill right next to the pipeline. If they're after the drill they might target the pipeline. If that thing gets damaged the ecological disaster will be catastrophic. Naruto spoke into his headset as he looked at a satellite picture taken of the area. Copy that. We'll make sure the pipeline stays safe. Though that means that Draken and Shago might get away. Kim stated into her helmet's microphone. You might have to let them go. Naruto replied back. Frowning, Kim just made a rocket board go faster. Behind her Ron drove his snowmobile. Taking his headset off, Naruto activated the ship's communication system. Coco, baby, I need a favor. Naruto stated with a smirk. Naruto, darling, for you I'll do anything. What can Coco do for you? Ugh, Naruto was right. Kim thought to herself as she drove Shago's snowmobile away from the pipeline and up a pile of snow. Driving off the ramp, Kim pushed the snowmobile away from herself and activated her rocket board. Flying away from the exploding snowmobile, Kim saw that Ron was pulling up next to the pipeline. Or at least he tried before the snowmobile stopped short. And he was sent flying and losing his pants in the process. Jumping down to help him stand back up, Kim saw that Ron had something in his hand. Ron, what's that? Kim pointed to his hand that contained the green thing. Huh. Ron stated as he looked down and saw he was clutching something. Oh, uh, I tried to grab Shago, and I ripped a piece of her jacket off. Whoops. Finished Ron while he laughed nervously. 
Oh, Shago is gonna be so mad. Kim stated with a ridiculously happy smirk. You might want to sit off the next Draken mission, Ron. Shago seems like the kind of person to hold a grudge. Naruto stated as he held the quite large piece of leather that Ron ripped off. It was mind-boggling how Ron had managed to rip off a piece of leather. Pulling at the leather slightly, Naruto felt how strong it was. Looking up at Ron, who was putting on some new pants. He wondered if his friend had some strange power over probability. Though he quickly discarded that idea because if Ron did have that sort of power, he would have abused it by now. So, the suspenders didn't work. Naruto asked as he set aside the leather. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. The loops and the seams opened and I went flying. I was just lucky you told me to wear this thermal underwear, or I'd be freezing. Ron stated as he patted his pants. Oh, by the way, can you get Rufus some clothes for missions like these? The poor guy was freezing outside. Ron stated as he pulled Rufus out of his own little hot tub. Sure, I'll knit him suit. Naruto stated sarcastically. Cool, that would mean so much to him. Ron stated with a smile. Uh-huh. Rufus said as he shook his head up and down. Seeing that it had flown over his head, Naruto figured that he now actually had to knit Rufus a snowsuit. Shrugging, he decided he did need something besides paperwork and machine work to get through the night. Why not knitting? Fleece is perfectly acceptable for cold climates. Shago doesn't know what she's talking about, Kim stated to herself while looking at her jacket in the mirror in the bathroom. Of course, she had left the door open so Naruto, Ron and Rufus raised an eyebrow at her and wondered what she was talking about. September 16, 2003. Ugh, I can't believe that all my parents were able to come up with was minimum wage. Kim stated depressed. Kim, with your skill set you could easily become a stunt double. Naruto stated as he ate his burrito. Hey, he's right KP. With all the stuff we do being a stunt double should be a cakewalk. Ron said as he and Rufus ate a Nako. The only problem I can see with it is that you're young. Naruto said after swallowing his food. Oh yeah, aren't stunt actors supposed to be in a union? Kim stated as she looked at Naruto and Ron with a raised eyebrow. Unions help protect workers from those trying to take advantage of them. Unfortunately, because you're so young they'd say no, and film directors wouldn't allow you to work for them either. Naruto stated as he finished his burrito. Then why did you bring it up in the first place? Kim asked Naruto incredulously. So that you keep your options open. You're thinking too small? You could go the Peter Parker route. Snap photos of yourself in action saving the world. I'm pretty sure that a lot of magazines would pay big bucks for that. Naruto said as he leaned back into his seat. I'm not gonna charge people to buy photos of me. Kim stated and frowning at Naruto. Hey, you think people would pay to buy photos of me? Ron stated while imagining all of the money he could possibly have. I'm sure that plenty of people would pay to have your photo, Ron. Kim stated while trying to smile. To her side, Naruto just shook his head in the negative. If you want money you can just work here in Bueno Nacho. With your outstanding knowledge of Bueno Nacho food, you'd climb up the ladder quickly. As a bonus you might be able to get your Nako on the menu. Naruto said as he saw how Ron's face fell when he had answered negatively to his question. Hmm, I don't know. You shouldn't work where you food. Ron said as he rubbed his chin. Seeing a chance, Kim went in for the kill. And here I thought you wanted to share the holiness that was the Nako with the people Ron. TSK, TSK. I guess the Nako lives and dies with you. The white-eyed look she got made her smirk. It looked like she was gonna have a work buddy. Kim, you've got to start wearing more hats backward. Naruto stated before taking a picture. And why is that? Kim asked as she adjusted the hat. Cause it makes you look cute. Naruto said before taking another picture. This time of her raising an eyebrow and smirking at him. I'll take it into consideration. Kim stated before walking off to start her job. Pulling out his cell phone, Naruto dialed in a number and waited until the phone was picked up. Sup Wade, any luck in finding the drill? Holding the door open for an elderly woman to walk through, Naruto began to make his way home. Nope, I can't find anything. I haven't been able to find anything through satellite imagery. However, since the drill is so large, I should be able to find it through any sort of strange seismic activity. I'll keep you and Kim posted. Nodding, Naruto replied, it's probably best to look for any suspicious seismic activity before anything else. But knowing you, you probably have a few monitors already set up with real-time activity, don't you? Hearing laughter, Naruto knew he was right. Anyway, it'd be best to call me first, and then we'll decide if we need to tell Kim. She and Ron are currently working, so Kim might not be able to answer you. 
All right then, I'll call later. Hearing Wade hang up, Naruto put his phone away and entered his house. September 18, 2003 Hmm, so strange seismic activity in Wisconsin. Naruto said as he looked at the real-time seismic activity on his monitor. Yep, it's nowhere near any known fault lines. Also, the epicenter is the world's biggest cheese wheel. Amazingly enough the entire building is made of cheese. Wade stated as he put up a picture for Naruto to see on his monitor. Hmm, it's large enough to hold the laser drill but we can't be sure. It could just be a previously unknown fault line. Naruto stated as he looked at the cheese building. Leaning back, Naruto caught sight of the Club Banana box he had received today. That made him remember that Shago had a jacket from Club Banana. Sitting up, Naruto began to bring up police reports of the area. Hmm, well what do you know? Wait, do you see that? Two recent break-ins at Club Banana, and each time what was taken was a green leather jacket. Naruto stated with a smirk. Wasn't Shago wearing a club banana jacket? Seeing Naruto's naughty continued, I don't think Shago is the type of person to buy her stuff. Wade finished with a smirk. Very true. But now what is Draken up to? Naruto questioned as he narrowed his eyes at the cheese building. Obviously he's going to drill into the Earth's mantle to bring up all of that molten magma. Wade stated confused as to why Naruto asking. Yeah, but what is he gonna do after that? Is he gonna try and submerge Wisconsin in lava? because if he is he picked a real stupid location. All of that cheese would melt long before he could pump the magma out. Naruto stated as he tried to think of what Draken was planning. I'm not good at emulating a villain's thought process, so I have no idea. But we both know that Draken is an evil genius. He already knows that pumping that magma out will melt the building, so it's probably something that we can't think of. Wade stated and Naruto agreed with. Draken might seem foolish, but he wasn't stupid. Okay, call Kim. I'll get the ship ready for launch. Nodding, Wade signed off. Ron's not with you, Naruto asked, surprised that Kim came to the hangar alone. He let the power get to his head. Kim stated angrily as she went into the changing area to put on her mission outfit. Power. What power? He's a drone. Naruto asked completely confused by what she meant. Apparently, corporate liked his Nako idea so much that he was promoted, and to make matters worse, I got my pay docked. Kim yelled out of the changing room. It's illegal to dock pay for minimum wage workers, Kim. And are you telling me that the big wigs upstairs liked his taco nacho hybrid? Naruto yelled back as he stood at the door of the plane. Adjusting her crop top as she left the changing area, Kim was still scowling and still angrily muttering about Ron. Also, Ron's angry because he thinks I'm jealous. Me. Jealous of his burrito wrapping ability. Huh. Kim yelled dismissively. Well, are you? Ron usually has the hardest time adjusting to anything new. But you usually get everything pretty easily. It'd be pretty easy to get jealous when the opposite is suddenly true. Naruto said as he leaned against the doorframe. Kim's angry scowl quickly turned into a contemplative one. Was I jealous of Ron? I mean, I don't want to be. It's good that he's found something that he enjoys and is good at. We both know Ron has a lot of trouble doing anything new. But he does get better with time. Usually. Sighing, Kim's shoulders dropped. Feeling Naruto put his arm around her, Kim leaned her head against his shoulder. Kim, jealousy happens whether or not you want it to. Ignoring it won't do anything. You have to accept it. Accept that you're jealous and break down why you are. Like for me. I get jealous that you and Ron can sleep every night. I hate the fact that I do get jealous, but I accept it. Then I figure out why I am jealous. That one is pretty easy. I can't stop thinking, and I'm constantly bombarded with thoughts whether I want them or not. So being able to attain even a few hours of rest is a godsend. From there I realize that there really isn't anything I can do about it for the moment and just let go and puff it's gone. It helps that I've done this like six times before. In fact, I don't think I've gotten jealous about that in at least three years. Naruto stated as he realized that he was in fact correct. The last time he got jealous was over four years ago. As Naruto stood staring at the ceiling in wonder at his ability to mature, Kim was busy thinking about why she got jealous. However, all that she could find was the fact that it was because Ron was excelling, and she wasn't. Well, of all things to get jealous about, and it's simply because he was better than me. Sighing, Kim vowed to herself to apologize to Ron. Turning to look at Naruto, she smiled when she saw that he was still in amazement over his maturity on the subject of jealousy. Naruto, let's go. Snapping out of his amazement, Naruto nodded. Wisconsin world's largest cheese wheel. So, it's actually a cheese building, Kim stated as she looked at her communicator. 
Yep, Naruto and I are pretty sure that Draken is using the laser drill to drill to the Earth's crust, but we're not sure what he's going to do after that. We both agree that he's not going to pump the magma out, because that'd melt the entire building. After all, an evil genius wouldn't do something that dumb. Wade said with a smirk. Nodding at their assessment, Kim got to work. Oh, my God. He's really that stupid. Kim, Naruto, and Wade all said at the same time. This was their response to Draken revealing their evil plan to them. Stupid. Would a stupid person know to use a cheese-covered building to hide the location of their stolen laser drill? Draken yelled when he heard Kim. No, a stupid person would use a cheese building to hide the location of their stolen laser drill. Kim responded angrily. Cheese building. What are you talking about? Draken asked as he heard she left out the word covered in her sentence. This place. It's all made of Wisconsin Swiss. Kim angrily gestured as much as she could with her hands, as they were placed in manacles. Ew, I love Wisconsin Swiss. Wait, then if I pump the magma out, Draken said as he began connecting the dots. This whole place is gonna melt with you inside. Kim stated smugly. Huh. So then this entire operation. Once again smugly interrupting him, was doomed from the start. Shag, roundhouse kick. Huh. Draken asked as he looked away from where Shago was operating the laser drill, only to receive a kick to the face. Why did you say roundhouse kick? Kim asked Naruto with a grin. I needed a distraction. Was the simple answer as Naruto pressed the button to free Kim from the manacles. Dropping down from where she was held Kim rubbed her wrists. Those things had been a bit too tight. How'd you get past all the other Kim's voice trailed off as she saw the unconscious body of a guard poking out of a hole in the wall. All right then, I'll keep Shago busy, you go to the drill. Kim said while pointing to the command center where Shago was busy looking at a display to notice what was happened below her. Got it. Naruto answered. Be careful. Both Naruto and Kim said at the same time. Jinx. Again they said at the same time. Double jinx Naruto was able to get out before Kim. Huh, I win. Now you owe me two sodas. Naruto said before running off to shut down the drill. Hey Dr. D the dry you. Shago yelled once she saw Kim. Jumping out of the drill control room, she chazzed after Kim, poking his head in through the door. Naruto saw that there wasn't anyone guarding the controls. Smirking, Naruto went inside. Looking at the controls, he realized that none of it actually had any sort of indication to what they did. However, these sorts of tools always had emergency shutoffs somewhere. Looking around, he noticed a big red button below the counter. Seeing no other choice, he pressed it. Listening, he could hear the laser drill beginning to slow, and then stop completely. Letting out a breath he'd been holding, Naruto looked out the window to see that Kim was still fighting Shago. About to go down to help, he saw Ron running straight at Shago. Fortunately, the shock of seeing him startled Shago enough that Kim was able to knock her out. Pulling out his phone, Naruto called Wade. When did you contact Ron? Shortly after you and Kim left, I saw that he was still at Bueno Nacho, so I told him that Kim was going to need his help. It didn't really take too much convincing, though he did have to bum a ride from one of our friends, Wade stated evenly, though Naruto was sure he had that smug smile on his face. Nice, have you contacted the authorities? Here, Naruto heard him scoff. We've been at this for how long? I think I have the procedure down to memory. Wade stated sounding almost insult that Naruto could insinuate that he hadn't already done so. Just making sure. Didn't mean to insult you. Hearing the phone cut off, Naruto was sure that Wade had taken some insult. He'd make it up to him later. Walking out of the control room, Naruto pulled out some handcuffs. Didn't want Draken or Shago getting away after all. September 19th, 2003. It appears you are correct, Ms. Possible. It is illegal to dock pay of minimum wage workers. I shall correct this immediately. Ned stated as he looked through the Colorado state laws. Thank you. Kim stated as she saw Ned walk towards to back to fix his mistake. However, she couldn't stop from staring at the green leather jacket Ned was wearing. So you're going to be paid for every Nako sold. Naruto asked Ron as Kim came back to their table. Yup. Five cents for every one. Ron stated with a smug smile. Hey you might make enough to be able to grand size your meals for the rest of the school year. Naruto said with a grin. That is the dream my friend. Ron stated as he leaned on the table. Well, I don't want that leather jacket anymore. Kim stated as she slumped forward. You saw Ned wearing it didn't you? Ron asked even though he already knew the answer. Nodding, Kim just began to draw circles on the table with her finger, though she was quickly distracted by a club banana box being put in front of her. Looking at Naruto with a raised eyebrow she frowned at him. 
Naruto, I already told you I don't want you to buy me things. I didn't. I called in a favor from someone I knew. He was more than happy to help. No money exchanged any hands, Naruto said with a smirk. Narrowing her eyes at his loophole, Kim's curiosity got the best of her, and she opened the box. Her gasp drew everyone's eyes to her. Inside was a white leather jacket in a similar style to the one she wanted, but near the collar in small neat black writing were the initials KP. On top of the jacket was a letter in a club banana envelope. Opening it up, Kim began to read to herself, hello and salutation. This jacket was handcrafted by me at the request of a dear friend. He told me about how you go around the world saving and helping people, and that you positively adore my designs. Such praise from him was unusual, so I did a little research myself. Imagine my surprise when he is actually downplaying your achievements. As such, I decided to not only grant his request, but to exceed them. My dear, what you now have in front of you will forever be your personal jacket. No other place in the world will ever attain this design, as it is now yours. I have made this with sturdy materials while also making it fashionable, so do not fear about damaging it. Much love, Coco Banana. For a moment after finishing the letter, Kim couldn't breathe. The next moment though, she tackled Naruto with a flying hug. She flew at him so quickly she knocked him out of his seat and onto the floor, where she began to hug him hard enough that he couldn't breathe. Thank you. Kim yelled before letting go and trying on her new jacket. Naruto only noticed when she let go as he could now breathe properly again. Once again he was reminded of Kim's strength. This time though was through a hug, so it could have been worse. Standing up, he noticed Kim looking herself over with her brand new jacket on. It seemed to go well with her current green top and blue pants, but he wanted to see it with her mission outfit on. Kim your jacket is so cute. Did you just buy it? Kim's mother asked as she saw her daughter walk in. It was a gift. Naruto called in a favor from the Coco Banana. It's a one-of-a-kind design made specifically for me. Squealing, Kim was jumping up and down as she explained to her mother how she got the jacket. How does Naruto know Coco Banana? That stopped Kim's jumping. How did Naruto know Coco Banana? I met Coco a few years ago. I was in Smarty Mart buying some stuff, and I literally ran into him. Naruto explained into his cell phone. When we fell, we dropped our phones. I grabbed his on accident and he grabbed mine. I apologized and then went back to buying my stuff. It actually wasn't until a few hours later that I got a bunch of calls from people who I didn't know that I realized that I had grabbed the wrong phone. From there I tracked my phone down, Coco had already left for Paris when I tracked my phone, so I had to go wait for him at his destination. More than anything I think he was surprised that I went all the way to Paris to give him back his phone, when a simple call would have been more than sufficient. From there we exchanged numbers and we've been friends ever since. Every once in a while he calls me asking weird questions. Like one time he asked if I tigers were orange with black stripes or black with orange stripes. Naruto said as he finished his explanation of how he and Coco were friends. Kim hearing about the weird question made a connection. One of Club Banana's most famous lines of merchandise had been themed around black with orange stripes. Had Naruto helped launch one of the most famous lines ever? That's a pretty normal story actually. I was expecting something grand and epic. Kim stated once she realized she hadn't said anything. No grand and epic tales from me, sorry. Naruto stated as he looked over some information on something he was working on. If it worked like how he wanted it to, he might have an infinite power source. It's been more or less a week right? Kim asked out of the blue. Quickly stopping his analysis of the data, Naruto tried to remember if it had indeed been a week. Actually it's been two. Naruto said as he finished remember he had last slept on the fifth. Seriously. Well you know what that means right? Kim stated with a smile. Yes. Naruto stated resigned to his fate. I'm the little spoon. Hey, you're bigger than me. I get to be the little one. Kim responded trying to win the argument. You stole my turn last time. I'm just catching up on my lost turn. Naruto finished with a smirk. If you're late you are going to be the big spoon. Kim said giving him a warning. I won't be. Dang, you're actually here on time. Kim stated as she opened the window for Naruto to sneak in. I told you I wouldn't be, Naruto said as he slowly closed the window. Getting into bed Kim waited until Naruto had settled himself in before wrapping her arms around him. While she enjoyed being the little spoon, she also enjoyed being the big spoon. Especially when Naruto would hold her hands like he was now. Smiling when she felt his heartbeat slow, Kim closed her eyes. September 29th, 2003. 
Middleton 3 a.m. Wade, repeat that again. I've been working non-stop for the past few days. My brain is a bit off right now, Naruto stated while looking up at Wade on his monitor. What have you been doing anyway? You put yourself on lockdown over a week ago. At most you just spend a day or two on lockdown. Wade asked while looking worried over Naruto's disheveled state. I just finished making a new energy source. A lot of it was just figuring out how to make sure it didn't kill me while working on it. But it was worth it because as of now I have infinite energy. Goodbye electricity bill? Naruto stated while leaning back and feeling smug. Seriously? How did you do it? Wade asked completely blown away. I'll send you the data. I'll make you one later and attach it to your systems. That way in case something happens to the power grid you'll still be operational. Naruto said as he relaxed into his chair. Any other possible applications besides energy production? Wade said as he saw that Naruto was a bit more willing than usual to talk about his inventions. It can be weaponized, if that's what you're asking. Except, we both know that Kim wouldn't allow it so I'm not even drawing up plans. Oh, that reminds me. It can be scaled up or down as needed, so I believe we have the power source for Project Uber. That way we don't have to skimp on any of the more energy-intensive features. Naruto said and he saw Wade's face light up. So that means we can actually equip it with force fields. Wade asked as he looked like a kid who was told that Christmas came early. Yep. I was actually in the middle of retrofitting the ship with one of the prototypes to see how it worked with the power source. Naruto said as he saw Wade gain a thoughtful expression. Cool. Wade said before he disconnected, only to reconnect a few seconds later. Sorry, we got distracted. So I forgot I was telling you what happened recently. Wade said as he brought up video footage of the Monkey Fist mission. Alright then. I told you that Kim and Ron were asked by Lord Monty Fisk to help him get an ancient monkey idol. What we didn't know is that Monty Fisk was actually gathering all of the idols in order to gain access to mystical monkey power. Wade said as he explained the circumstances around what happened next. Wow, he actually believes in magic. Naruto said as he shook his head at Monty Fisk's foolishness. Um, he was right. Wade said as he saw that Naruto had jumped to conclusions. Wade, I'm exhausted not gullible. Naruto said in a tone that Wade knew was bad. In response, Wade showed the video of Ron's mission with the Halo Kim. The entire time, Naruto could only stare at the monitor showing him something which he was sure was impossible. When the video ended, neither Naruto or Wade said anything. Fuck. Was all that Naruto said before he started banging his head on his desk. September 29th, 2003. All I was able to find was this picture. Wade told Kim and Ron as he showed them Private Dobbs photo ID. I guess it's a good thing I was looking into this too. Naruto said as he appeared in a corner of the screen. Private Dobbs had security clearance to access the neutralizer. That's what Draken is after. Naruto, where have you been? Kim asked angrily deciding to ignore the Draken threat for now. I've been working on some stuff. Naruto yawned off. You've missed an entire week of school. Kim said angrily while glaring at Naruto's completely unconcerned face. School isn't that important, and I don't really care about it. Why do you think I keep a B average? Naruto stated while yawning again. Naruto. School is was all that Naruto heard before he muted Kim's lecture. It was actually quite a sight to see her getting so worked up. At least it was before he noticed that Kim had stopped talking and was looking at him with very narrowed eyes. Unmuting her, Naruto asked, I'm sorry can you repeat that? Which only got him a glower of which he hadn't seen for years. Did you mute me just now? Kim asked while Ron, Rufus, and Wade all stayed quiet in the background. An angry Kim was a dangerous Kim. I'm not answering that, Naruto said as he felt that it'd be best to not say anything. Wade, hack into Naruto's systems and shut them down. Kim commanded of Wade only to receive a response she didn't want. Kim, if I couldn't hack into your computer, I don't think I'll be able to hack into Naruto's. Wade stated before shutting down his connection to the monitor. He didn't want to be anywhere near Kim and Naruto at the moment. This is not over, Kim said before slamming her locker shut and walking away angrily. What about the neutralizer? KP. Ron yelled after her before looking at Rufus who could only shrug in response. Colorado. Kim I don't want to have this conversation right now, Naruto said while riding his mule. The ship's cloaking had not responded well to the new energy system, and as such, they couldn't get near the lair without setting off alarms. Naruto you might be a super genius, but you have to take school seriously, Kim said from in front of him on her own mule. On his own mule in between them, Ron felt incredibly uncomfortable. From the moment they had reached the hangar, 
Both Kim and Naruto had been arguing. Well, Kim argued and Naruto just didn't care. Kim we are about to infiltrate Draken's hidden lair. Can we please keep our priorities straight? Naruto insisted as the conversation began to wear at him. I am keeping my priorities straight. We both know that Draken isn't a threat. Shago is, but with all three of us here, we'll be fine. However, your GPA won't be if you ditch school like this again. Kim said as they neared the entrance to the lair, which appeared to look like an abandoned shack in the middle of the Grand Canyon. Can we please talk about his later? Naruto asked through gritted teeth as he finally reached the end of his patience. Oh, believe me. We will. Kim replied, not at all intimidated by Naruto. Unfortunately, Ron was. He never liked it when either one of his friends got like this. Dismounting the mules, all three of them walked into the shack. However, Naruto was glaring at absolutely everything. Kim was looking annoyed, and Ron was freaking out about something in his pants. Calm down Ron, I'm sure it's just Rufus. Kim said as she quickly got annoyed by Ron's antics. It's not Rufus. Ron yelled as he jumped up onto a pipe and shook his leg. Out of his pants came a tarantula which calmly calmly walked outside, leaving Ron to sigh in relief before the pipe he was holding onto suddenly dropped, which revealed an elevator. Nice job Ron. Naruto stated actually impressed. Neither him or Kim would have thought of a hidden lever in this sort of place. Getting into the elevator, Ron enjoyed the elevator music, but Kim and Naruto didn't. Reaching the bottom floor, they sneakily made their way through the lair, until they saw a machine that they assumed was the brain switch machine. Brain switching isn't possible, Naruto whispered as he neared the machine. However, the day before Naruto thought that magic was impossible too, so why not suspend disbelief? Pulling out a black square, Naruto applied it to the machine, and smirked when he saw it begin to break apart into tiny little black dots that quickly disappeared. Quickly catching up to Ron and Kim, he saw that Kim was doing something with the communicator, and he heard some muffled yelling. Quickly grabbing the edge of the crate, Kim pulled it open. Inside was Draken, or at least his body. Kim possible. Private Dobbs yelled happily when he saw her. However, that turned into panic when he saw what was behind her. Look out. Rescue is ovu. Shago yelled before she jumped after Naruto. Taken by surprise, Naruto was unable to block the hits that sent him flying. Standing up and trying to get his bearings, he was unable to do anything when he saw Shago's fist punch him in the face and send him flying into the brain switch machine which knocked him unconscious. Ah, uh, payback's a pain, isn't it? Shago stated to the unconscious Naruto before she was kicked in the side by Kim. Unfortunately, Kim had been so focused on getting Shago away from Naruto that she was blasted from behind by a goon into the machine and her impact loosened the brain switch pipes. During all of this Ron was busy trying to escape with private Dobbs, only to accidentally pull a lever that activated the brain switch machine. With a shock, Naruto and Kim were brought back to consciousness only to feel something happening to them. Once the shock wore off, they noticed that they felt different. Looking around they saw what happened. Oh, crap. They both stated at the same time as they saw each other. Quickly realizing that they were still in danger, Naruto stood up only to feel off balance. Waving his arms to maintain balance, Naruto was able to stay standing. Grabbing Kim and pulling her up, he said come on, we have to go, but we have to switch back. Kim stated, but was unable to do anything from Naruto's freaky strength. Is my body really that much stronger than Naruto's? Kim thought to herself as she was pulled along and into the elevator where Ron and Private Dobbs were already waiting. Punching the button, Naruto was rewarded with the button denting a bit. Shaking his hand a bit, he was amazed that he felt no pain. Quickly getting out of the elevator, Naruto led Kim outside, as she still had problems adjusting to the height change. Spotting the mules, they quickly got on. Towards Middleton. All right, Kim, it seems you've gotten used to my body. Naruto stated as he looked at Kim walking much better than before. This is so weird, everything looks so small from up here. Kim stated as she looked at everything. Kim, I'm three inches taller than you. Naruto stated as he saw how she was looking at everything. You know, the jacket really does work quite well with the outfit. Kim said as she finally saw things from Naruto's perspective. Though her eyes started drifting as Naruto was leaning back into his chair a bit, and she noticed how his chest jutted out a bit. Her eyes quickly tracked down to her body's bare midriff. Tracing the curve of her abdominal muscles, she didn't hear Naruto snapping his fingers until he put them right in her face. Kim, eyes up here. Naruto stated with a smirk as he gestured to his eyes, though that quickly turned into a worried frown when he saw that Kim was freaking out. 
Kim, it's all right. You're inside my body and you have to deal with my hormones, just like I'm going to have deal with yours. I just hope that I don't go all gaga when I see Josh. I've heard that he's hot. Naruto stated while Kim imaged Naruto going gaga over Josh and giggled. At least with Naruto in my body I don't have to worry about anything. Kim thought as she tried to keep herself from ogling her body. Middleton Kim's house. This is just too weird. James stated as he looked between Kim, Naruto, and Private Dobbs. I can't possibly eat dinner while my daughter's arch nemesis sits right across from me. James, this is Private Dobbs. His brain was switched with Drakens in order for him to steal the neutralizer. Naruto stated as he picked through his meal. How do you know about the new dot whoops almost said it. Dobbs stated as stopped himself from blurting out what he guarded. Anyway. The same process was done to Kim and I, so for now we'll both be staying here. Sorry about imposing, Naruto said as he looked up from his meal. The looks he was receiving from Anne and James was strange. Then again, hearing their daughter speak like that out of nowhere would be strange to any parent. I'm a certified neurosurgeon, and I'm pretty sure that it's impossible to switch brains. Anne stated with an eyebrow raised wondering if Kim was just playing an elaborate practical joke. It is impossible to switch brains. But the machine was called the brain switch machine, so that's what I went with. What more than likely happened is that our minds were moved into the other's brain, so we didn't physically switch brains, but just our personalities, memories, and all of that good stuff. It's also possible that I'm completely off. I'm currently having the machine analyzed by some of my nanites, so I'll have an idea of how it actually works later, Naruto said before he realized that everyone was looking at him. Yep, that's Naruto, James stated while resuming his dinner, and could only shake her head. Hearing the communicator, Naruto pulled it out of his pocket. Sup, Wade, Naruto said and seeing the look on Wade's face, he could tell that he wasn't going to enjoy what came next. Hey Naruto, I've got some bad news, Wade said getting Kim to poke her head into view. Drakens abandoned his lair, and he was able to steal the neutralizer. Wade said as he saw the look on Kim's face. Well, the look on Naruto's body. So, we're stuck like this, Kim stated in panic. Naruto just rolled his eyes. Just calm down. Being stuck like this isn't the end of the world, Naruto said before Kim focused her eyes on him. I have the cheerleading regional tomorrow, Kim said in anger. That's not really all that problematic, Naruto began while thinking about all of the potential problems they were going to face. I thought you'd be more worried over the fact that we need to pose as each other for a while. Ugh, this also means I'm going to fall even farther behind on my work. Unless Naruto said as he looked at Wade. No, I'm not going to do your work. I have my own stuff to do. Wade said before Naruto began to invoke the puppy dog pout. Oh, that just isn't fair. Wade said before sighing and nodding his head. Thank you, Naruto said with his best Kim smile. Wade's response was to end the call. Is that what I look like when I do that? Kim asked everyone present, and she received nothing but nods. It's actually creepy that Naruto was able to replicate it so well. Ron said from his chair at the end of the table. She's used it on me so often, that I learned exactly how she corks her lips, and exactly how she moves her eyebrows. Naruto said without seeing the look that Kim sent him. Well, it could be worse. At least I know that with you in my body. Nothing weird is gonna happen. Kim stated before she saw that Naruto was frowning about something. What's wrong? Kim asked Naruto before he sighed and stopped messing with his food. Leaning back, he crossed his arms and looked up at the ceiling. I realize that my research is going to fall behind too. That's what you're concerned about. Kim asked unable to believe falling behind on his research was his biggest concern. It's important research, Naruto said as he picked up on Kim's tone. Anyway, why don't you two fill me in on the week I missed? God damn it, Ron, Naruto said as he and Ron sat in Kim's living room talking. James and Anne had already gone to sleep, the twins had hit their bedtime, and Private Dobbs had fallen asleep soon after eating. Apparently, he hadn't gotten much sleep since he had been kidnapped. Kim, after much encouraging and letting her know that he wouldn't hold anything she did in his body against her, was taking a shower. That had been an awkward conversation. Though, Naruto did wonder if Kim was more embarrassed over seeing his body naked, or because he was going to see her body naked. Of all things you could have said, you had to say the place reminded you of a villain's lair. Why did you say something like that? Naruto said as he looked at Ron while dragging his hand down his face. 
Hey, do you know how often we wind up in a villain's lair? If you had been there you would have thought the same thing. Ron said as he defended himself. You're probably right. Naruto stated with reluctance once he thought about it for a few moments. From what he had been told of the island, it sounded exactly like a villain's lair but with a more homey feel to it. So tell me how being popular was, Naruto said as he put his feet up on the table and spread his arms behind the couch. It was amazing. All the girls dug the new look, but once I went back to my look they all just ignored me. It's really annoying that people can be that shallow. Ron stated while crossing his arms and not noticing Naruto raising an eyebrow at his choice of words. Well, it's high school. A lot of people haven't developed the maturity to look past how someone looks. Naruto said as he saw a look on Ron's face. So what you're saying is, I should go for college girls. Ron said as he mistook Naruto's advice. Shaking his head, Naruto decided to cut this off before it developed. Ron, you're only 14. The average American lives to be about 70. With the way you eat, 60. That means you have 46 years left to find a girlfriend. So don't rush into things just because you think she's cute. Why do you always seem to know what to say? Ron asked in one of his rare moments of insight. When you don't sleep, you think about a lot of stuff. Also, Sleep deprivation can make you go through a variety of emotions. I can't tell you how often I fall into depression, or get so deliriously happy that almost anything sends me into a giggle fit. Usually by morning I'm out of whatever mood I fell into, but sometimes it lasts for a while longer, Naruto said as he tried to explain. Sometimes though, it can get pretty hard to just get up and do anything. Naruto said not noticing that Kim had just ducked back into the hallway. But then I think about what Kim would say if I just let something like a lack of motivation get in my way. Once I do that, I force myself to get up and just take things one step at a time. Though it helps greatly that I have friends like you and Kim to help pick me up. Naruto finished holding out his fist so that Ron would bump it. However, in typical Ron fashion, instead of bumping his fist, he went in for a hug. Even Rufus joined in by hugging his arm. Um, this would be a lot more meaningful if I was still in my body. Currently, I'm in Kim's and this just feels weird. Naruto said as he felt very awkward getting a hug from Ron. Hmm, that's right. All right then. First thing we're doing once we switch you two back is making sure we hug it out. Like men. Ron stated with pomp as he stood. Sure thing Ron. Just remember that I'm not a man present state notwithstanding. Kim said as she walked into the living room. She had changed out of the mission outfit into blue sweet pants and an orange t-shirt. Well, you hit like a man, so that's good enough. Ron said countering her claim. All right then, I'm gonna go take a shower. Hope you didn't use up all of the hot water, Naruto stated as he stood up. As Kim followed him with her eyes, they slowly went down to his hips and followed until they disappeared as he turned into the hall, quickly realizing what she was doing. Again, she turned to look at Ron who happened to have the smuggest grin. Okay P, you have got to get better at the stealth ogle. Ron said as he shook his head in mock disappointment. I don't want to get better at the stealth ogle. Kim stated indignantly. Though since she was in Naruto's body, it looked strange. Especially when she had those bags under her eyes. Kim, right now you're a red-blooded male. Just like all red-blooded males. You have instinct that can't be denied. Ron stated as he grabbed Kim by the shoulders. Naruto doesn't get like that. Kim stated only to get a snort from Ron. Naruto definitely gets like that. He just never says anything. The other day I caught him staring at Bonnie. Ron said matter of factually, completely ignoring the look that Kim was sending him. Bonnie why her? Kim asked completely confused as to why Naruto would look at her. Cause she's hot, duh, Ron said without a moment's thought. Hot, but mean. He looks, but he knows her personality. And that's a major turn off for him. Whoa hold the phone. Naruto has turn offs. Kim asked completely floored by the fact that Naruto actually had preferences. He always seemed so uninterested in anyone. KP everyone has preferences. Naruto's just happened to focus more on the beauty inside than the beauty outside. Ron stated easily. How come I didn't know this? Kim stated, actually feeling hurt that Naruto never confided in her about these sorts of things. Cause he doesn't want to let you know that he's in love with you. Ron stated without thinking, only to freeze at what he said. He's what? Kim asked quietly, completely in shock. Well, he hasn't actually said anything out loud. Ron said quickly realizing that he might have said something he shouldn't have. And just assuming from what I know about what he likes in girls. And what does he like in girls? Kim asked narrowing her eyes at him. Smart, kind, 
witty, and isn't afraid to speak her mind. Ron fired of F rapidly without a moment's thought. That's a really small list, Kim said as she scrutinized Ron. That's all he's realized that he likes. Ron disclosed in order to keep Kim from getting angry at him. Ron, with a list that small I'm the only girl he knows personally that fits. You're jumping to conclusions, Kim said as the shock left her body. Well like I said, I based it off what I knew. Ron said once he realized that Kim wasn't going to yell at him. Oh my god Kim was right. These things are uncomfortable. Naruto thought to himself as he felt the bra straps chafe against his skin. Screw it. Taking off it off, Naruto exhaled at the feeling of skin no longer being irritated. Quickly throwing on one of Kim's shirts, Naruto walked outside of the bathroom. Walking downstairs, Naruto noticed that the living room was empty. Walking back up, Naruto went to Kim's room and knocked on the door. Hearing a come in Naruto opened the door and saw that Kim was already laying in bed. I can't sleep. Kim stated looking up at the ceiling with wide eyes. Turning her head, Naruto realized how creepy he must look whenever he was exhausted. The thoughts just won't stop coming, and they don't even make sense. It's always there. Kim stated with tears threatening to spill out of her eyes. Getting into bed and holding her, Naruto felt her begin to relax, and he stroked her hair until she fell asleep. Sighing, Naruto knew that Kim was going to ask about this in the morning. September 30th, 2003. Hearing footsteps, Naruto bolted out of bed and hid under the bed as he heard knocking on the door. From under the bed, he heard Kim get out and opened the door to see Anne standing there. Holding still, Naruto didn't breath. He couldn't make out what Anne was saying as she was whispering, but he heard both her and Kim giggling. He began to breath again when he heard the door closing. Getting out from under the bed, he saw that Kim was looking at him with an expression he knew. Meant that they were going to have a conversation. Why didn't you tell me that's how it was for you all the time? Kim asked as she looked directly into Naruto's eyes. Naruto though just turned away and tried to gather his thoughts in order to make sure she didn't misunderstand. It's not like that all the time. It only happens when I exhaust myself like I did this past week. Most of the time it's just a bunch of annoying stray thoughts, which makes it difficult to focus on anything. However, making sure I focus on something helps keep those thoughts to a minimum, and it helps me actually get things done. I'm sure you can understand how exhausting it can be though just constantly focusing. Amazingly enough though, getting worried sick over you and Ron getting hurt on a mission is enough to completely distract my mind. Naruto said with a chuckle only to see that Kim wasn't smiling. Sighing, he continued, also, and I still don't know why but being near you helps calm my mind down. So don't worry about me feeling like that every time I don't sleep for a week. What you experienced was one of the worst ones I ever had, so I'm sorry I didn't realize that it didn't transfer over. Naruto finished before looking over to Kim and was surprised with a hug. Kim, don't worry. I've dealt with this for years, so I know how to minimize the effects. I'm just sorry you had to go through it, Naruto said only to feel Kim hug him tighter. Sighing, Naruto returned the hug and didn't say anything. And done. How was that? Naruto said as he finished going through Kim's cheer routine. That was incredible. Kim stated as she had only shown Naruto the routine once, and he had it down perfect. A lot of it was muscle memory, which means that the brain switch machine might have only moved certain memories with the mind transfer, instead of everything like I originally thought. Naruto said as he rubbed his chain. You might want to talk with mom about that one, she's the neurosurgeon. Kim stated as wasn't really sure what he meant by only certain memories. I will, but for now let's just get this day over with. I find it strange how much I like this breeze. Naruto said as he gestured to Kim's cheer letter uniform. Hey Kim, some random person said to Naruto as he walked down a hall. Waving back because that's what Kim would do, Naruto was surprised when people began to bombard him with questions. Kim, we need you to decide the font. The deadline is Monday Ms. Possible. You're ready for tutoring at the middle school next week. You are going to do something about your hair and makeup before the regionals right. Quickly seeing that he was being boxed in, Naruto let a loud, quiet. Seeing everyone had stopped talking all at once, he got to work. The school year has just started. We have more important things to worry about than picking a font for the yearbook. Like making sure we pictures of every event at school. Naruto said to the yearbook club, I told you the banners would be ready, so they'll be ready. But if you keep harassing me they won't be. Naruto said to the faculty member who had been speaking to him in a condescending tone. I said I would tutor the kids at the middle school. And I will, so don't worry. Naruto said to the other faculty member. Turning to Bonnie, Naruto gained a smug look. Bonnie, the one who needs to do something with their hair and makeup isn't me. 
Seeing that they were all finished bothering him, Naruto walked away, ignoring the shocked looks that were being sent his way. Naruto, dude where have you been? Quickly remembering that she was in Naruto's body, Kim turned to look at who was speaking. For a moment she froze up, but it quickly passed when she realized that she didn't have that funny feeling she usually had when she saw Josh. Well, you know me, Kim said trying to figure out if that was the right thing to say, but she sighed internally in relief when she saw that Josh was just nodding his head. That's true. Let me guess, you're not gonna tell me what you doing were you? Josh asked Kim with a raised eyebrow. You already know the answer to that. Kim responded getting comfortable emulating Naruto's mannerisms. Yeah, I do. But I thought that maybe just maybe you'd tell me this time. Josh said as he leaned against the lockers. Anyway, I came to warn you that Barkin is pissed. Josh said once he saw that Naruto wasn't going to tell him anything. And that's different from usual how. Kim asked raising an eyebrow. It's different from usual because all of that anger is aimed straight at you. Josh said laughing once he saw the wide-eyed look he got from Naruto. Oh man, I'll be sure to tell everyone at your funeral that you were a brave man. Josh managed to chuckle out as he left Kim alone. Looking at Josh in shock at being left alone to deal with Barkin, Kim banged her head against the lockers, not looking forward to that meeting. So Barkin yelled at you. Naruto asked as he waited for the rest of the squad to get ready. He yelled for 10 minutes straight. I didn't even know it was possible to do that. At first it was frightening. But as it went on it was difficult to keep from laughing, as I saw this little vein on his forehead just pulse like crazy. Kim admitted as she began to chuckle at the memory. Ah, I remember the forehead vein. I told him about it once and he gave me detention because of it. Naruto said as he saw the rest of the squad was ready for their turn. Good luck, Kim said with a thumbs up towards Naruto who only nodded in acknowledgement. I don't think I've ever been more nervous than right now. Kim thought to herself as she saw the squad performing perfectly. Hearing a beeping, Kim took out the communicator. Got him, Wade stated with a grin. Grinning back, she replied, good, but it'll have to wait a bit. The squad's performing right now and I really want to win. Really a timeshare? Kim asked Wade as they looked at the hideout Draken was using. Hey, even super villains have to be budget conscious. Ron replied, shaking his head. Naruto sneaking up to the back door, checked the handle and was rewarded with the door opening. Gesturing to them to go in, he followed in after them making sure to close the door behind him. Peeking from behind some gigantic cassette tapes, they saw Draken ranting about his plan. Okay, Dobbs, do you know how to disable the neutralizer? Naruto asked Dobbs as Kim and Ron kept a lookout. Nope, I just guarded the darn thing, Dobbs admitted quickly. Great, so that means we have to stop Draken no matter what. Naruto said before getting tackled out of the way by Kim, as their cover exploded. You won't stop me, Kim possible. Draken said as he pointed at Naruto. Smirking at them not being aware of what happened, Naruto and Kim began dodging out of the way of the henchmen's attacks, and Naruto was aware that Shago was following him. Ron just ran away. Quickly scaling the giant cassettes, Naruto and Shago began to trade blows. Ducking under a swipe, Naruto sent an uppercut that knocked Shago away. Jumping and landing on a henchman, Naruto began to take them out one by one, making sure that he wasn't hit by any of their weapons. Ripping one of the staves out of the hands of a henchman, Naruto began to smack the rest into unconsciousness with it. Finishing off the rest, Naruto heard Shago running towards him, spinning the staff around. He smacked it into Shago's ribs and sent her flying again. Turning to look where Kim was, he saw her taking down the henchmen that were after her. Running to help, Naruto saw Private Dobbs hit the giant self-destruct button for some inexplicable reason. Shago. Oh, apparently Draken had switched back into his body. We're leaving. The buffoon blew out the power. Seeing them walk away, Naruto was forced to let them go as they still needed the brain switch machine. Quickly running towards it, he saw Kim connecting the communicator's battery into the brain switch machine, but as he was reaching the machine, he saw a timer stuck on the side of it. Quickly realizing what it was, Naruto pulled Kim away and ran outside as Ron and Private Dobbs followed him. Hearing a small explosion, everyone turned to look back and saw the brain switch machine had been destroyed. However the base was still counting down. Jumping into a ditch, they covered their heads as they felt the base explode. Looking over the top of the ditch into the ruins of the timeshare, they saw the neutralizer was still standing. I may have forgotten to mention that the neutralizer is almost completely indestructible. Private Dobbs said as they the saw pristine condition the neutralizer was still in. 
Too bad the brain switch machine wasn't. Kim said glumly as they looked at the remains of the brain switch machine. I'll ask Wade to see if my nanites were able to finish gathering the schematics on the brain switch machine. If we have an idea on how it works, we'll be able to recreate it and get ourselves back to normal. Naruto said in order to try and cheer Kim up. Well, at least Draken wasn't able to get the neutralizer. That's got to count for something, Ron said, but all he received were shrugs from Kim and Naruto. We were able to get most of the info on the brain switch machine, so we should be able to rebuild it. Though it'll take around a week, give or take a day, Wade said as Kim, Naruto, and Ron were in Kim's living room again. We can probably cut that time in half if I help, Naruto said as he stood up and stretched. He was going to be exhausted, and Kim was gonna be absolutely sore when everything was over. This was a lose-lose situation, but thankfully the loses weren't that large. Oh, and Naruto. Wade spoke up seeing that Naruto was in the process of getting ready to go and start a marathon work session. Yeah, Naruto asked not really paying attention. It's those lawyer again, Wade said with resignation. Of all the fucking times Naruto whispered to himself completely ignoring the look that Kim and Ron sent him, as they had never heard him say that before. Are they saying that my designs are infringing upon their stupid patents again? Naruto asked already knowing the answer. Yep. They're saying you have to pay them royalties, or they'll go court. Wade said apparently used to this sort of thing. No damn court in the US would support them. They're just trying to get me to pay them. Naruto said in anger, sighing. He realized that as annoying as they were, they weren't the biggest problem at the moment. I'll deal with them later. Right now it's more important to get back into our rightful bodies. Naruto said as he put a hand on his hip. He usually didn't do that. But it felt natural at the moment. Kim, tell your mom and dad that you'll be missing for the next few days. That way they can call the school and let them know. Ron, we're gonna need you to make food runs, so that means you'll be missing school too. Naruto said as he began to imagine the way the next few days would play out. Oh, and you're gonna want a change of clothes when we switch our minds back, so you should pack some that you'll feel comfortable wearing. Naruto said to Kim as he knew that the moment they switched back, she'd feel the need to bathe and wear clean clothes. And now, it's off to work, Naruto said, as they all left Kim's house and headed towards his. How in the world do you have all of this set up, Naruto? Kim asked as she finally got to see the inside of Naruto's workshop. A whole lot of robots, Naruto said as they went underground in an elevator. Dude, this looks like a villain's lair. Ron said also in awe at seeing the workshop that was underneath Naruto's house. I know it does, and I can't really help that. You only have so many style choices when you have an underground workshop. Naruto admitted unashamed. So is this where you built the ship? Kim asked when she saw a door that was familiar. I built the pieces here and assembled it at the hangar. I don't have any way to transport a large amount of material at once. I'm currently trying to decide on whether to build a super large elevator or just connect the hangar and the workshop together. Naruto said as he was reminded of yet another project he needed to work on. So, how exactly are you gonna build the brain switch machine? Ron asked seeing that there were a bunch of parts all over the place. I have a small automated machine line that can construct all sorts of things if it has enough raw material, so I'm going to be using that for things like the more difficult parts, Naruto said before going to a small desk with a few computer monitors on it. Turning it on, he saw that Wade had already sent over the schematics of the machine. Looking it over, Naruto saw that most of the machine was actually centered around the center that had the two hoses attached. The legs were just metal parts attached to keep it raised off the ground. Sending the circuit board information to the machine line, he heard it start up and begin working. That would take a while. Looking at the hoses, Naruto saw that those would end up taking all of his time. They looked quite simple from the outside, but the inside was an entirely different matter. Sighing, he decided to get to work. October 1, 2003. It wasn't often that Kim found herself feeling completely useless. Whenever that happened she would do her best to make sure that it was a one-time situation regarding that one thing. Unfortunately, this wasn't like any of those other times. She couldn't just look up the information she was missing. She couldn't outthink her way out of this, or even fight her way out of it. All she could do was just sit and wait for Naruto to finish. Oh sure, she could hold something in place for him. But that was the most she could do. It was galling knowing that she couldn't help simply because she didn't have the skill or knowledge need to help. To make her feel worse, Ron was currently having the time of his life in another room with a large projector screen that Naruto had installed years ago by his own admission. Apparently, it was supposed to be for games and TV, for when Naruto got bored. 
but since he was always hanging out with Kim and Ron, the room was seldom used. Sighing, Kim slumped down her chair. Already over an entire day had passed since Naruto began to work, and parts were still being made. It also reminded Kim of how exhausted she was, and yet she couldn't sleep. Though, when she looked at Naruto, she saw that he wasn't slowing down in the least. He did take breaks as needed for the bathroom and food though, so that was something at least. Sighing again, Kim tried to think of something to do and yet couldn't find anything. She couldn't go too far away from Naruto, or else her mind became fuzzy, and it was difficult to concentrate on anything. She also didn't care too much for TV and video games either. Overall, she was having a real crummy time. October 3rd, 2003, 1 a.m. Lifting up the welding mask, Naruto saw that he was done. He had managed to cut down the amount of work required by making only the absolutely necessary parts. As such, the machine was very bare. He was also sure that it would only work once. After it was activated, it would burn out. Looking at the clock he noticed that it was very late. However, Kim was still awake reading a book. Walking over to her, he sat next to her and leaned his head on her shoulder which startled her. I just finished. That got a wide-eyed look from Kim. I thought it was supposed to take a few days. It's barely been over two. Kim asked completely taken by surprise. I only built the bare bones. Once we switch our minds back, it's going to burn itself out. We'll be completely safe. But the brain switch machine is gonna be unusable. Naruto said before he stood up with some effort. Pulling Kim up, they trudged their way to the machine. Kim had to admit that she was having second thoughts when she saw the machine. It wasn't anywhere near as elegant as Draken's was. It had wires sticking out. The circuit board was bare, and she was pretty sure that she could hear something sparking. Seeing Naruto put the hose on his head, she followed suit once she was sure it hadn't killed him. Stealing herself, she gave Naruto a thumbs up. Nodding, Naruto pressed a button, and they both felt a shock, and moments later, after they got over their disorientation, they saw that they were back in their bodies. Pumping a fist into the air, Kim yelled, We are back. A moment later though, she was stumbling as she felt absolutely exhausted. Grabbing her to make sure she didn't fall, Naruto helped her walk towards the bag with her clothes. Once she had that Naruto led her to the bathroom, so that she could shower. Making sure to stay outside the bathroom, in case she fell asleep. Naruto sat against the wall outside talking to Kim. How exhausted do you feel? I have never felt this exhausted in my life. How did you push through this? Kim said as she took a very quick shower. She would have taken a longer one, but she just wanted to sleep. Just focusing on getting us back to our own bodies. I learned to ignore exhaustion. Doesn't mean I don't feel it, just that I have to push through it whenever I'm working. When I stop working though, it hits me like a sledgehammer. And sometimes I just have to stop moving for a while. Naruto said as he explained how he was able to keep working. So that's why when you sat down you had to push yourself back up. Kim asked after a few moments. Yup. I actually couldn't move for a few moments. I was kinda worried I may have overdone it. But you're tough Kim. Naruto said as he heard the shower stop. In a few moments he heard the rustling of cloth, and then the door opened. Kim was wearing a midriff-bearing shirt and basketball shorts. Walking under her own power, she began to make her way to the bedrooms that Naruto had in the workshop. Slipping under the covers and just curling up, Kim fell asleep quickly, but not before she told Naruto something. Take a shower and then come and sleep. We're both exhausted. Smiling at her, Naruto went to take his own shower. He desperately needed one. Slipping under the covers, Kim shifted a bit but didn't wake. Putting his arm around her, Naruto fell asleep quickly. October 3, 2003, 8 a.m. Waking up, Kim snuggled deeper into Naruto's embrace. Feeling better than when she went to sleep, but still not great. Kim really did not want to get up. Thankfully, Naruto didn't seem to want to move either. Hey, I just remembered something. The other day when we were sleeping, I woke up because I heard your mom coming. When I was hiding you two were giggling about something. What was it? Smiling to herself, Kim answered in the most dismissive tone she could. Oh, that mom was just telling me that your hiding place isn't that great and that you need to try harder. Taking a moment to process what Kim just said, Naruto answered. So your mom knew about that one time, or has she known all this time? Smiling even more, Kim asked. What do you think? Sighing, Naruto decided to just ask Anne the next time he saw her. Well, the next time he saw her and James wasn't around, he did not need James trying to send him into a black hole. Feeling Kim falling back to sleep, Naruto followed. October 6, 2003. 
Ron, Naruto's birthday is on Friday. We have no plans. Kim said as she and Ron were in Bueno Nacho waiting for Naruto to get out of detention. I already told you Kim, the plan is to go to Moose World. Ron stated while looking at his burrito. Moose World is in California, we'd have to fly there, and I don't want to bother Naruto on his special day. Kim said as she slammed her drink down on the table. You know, I thought you'd be more concerned over this Bonnie thing. Ron said as he looked up at Kim. Bonnie is a constant problem, but she'd never put in enough effort to actually do anything. Kim said as she waved off that problem. Isn't that what you said about Draken last week? And didn't he go and almost blow us up? Ron asked with a raised eyebrow. Draken wouldn't have blown up his brain switch machine if Private Dobbs had kept his mouth shut. Kim ground out with grit teeth. Either way, you tend to underestimate people from time to time. Ron said before he heard a burp and saw that Rufus had eaten his burrito. First of all, those were all flukes, Kim said as she pointed her finger at Ron. And second of all, I don't underestimate anybody. I expect the same thing from them that I always do. They just happen to overcome my expectations is all. Kim finished with less heat than when she started. Okay, well what happens if Bonnie overcomes your expectations? You've got to admit that Bonnie is devious. Ron stated while leaning on the table. Devious or not, Bonnie isn't a hard worker. Why do you think I'm still captain? I know that I don't have as much time as Bonnie does to devote to the squad. But I know that if push comes to shove. Bonnie won't want all of the extra work that comes with being captain. Neither do any of the other girls on the squad. Kim said as she admitted to Ron that she knew that Bonnie had more time than her to devote to the team. I always wondered about that. Why don't the other girls want to be cheer squad captain? Ron asked as he put the now sleeping Rufus in his pocket. They don't want it cutting into their free time. Boyfriends, work, clubs, things like that. Kim said as she sipped from her soda. But you do all of those things too? Well, except the boyfriend part and let's face it that's not happening anytime soon. Ron said not noticing how Kim began to narrow her eyes at him. And pray tell, why I can't get a boyfriend. Kim said keeping her voice even and not letting her anger slip into it. Two reasons. Naruto and me. Guys just can't handle my rawness. Ron said while gesturing to himself and then adding as an afterthought. Oh and Naruto intimidates people. Wait what? Kim asked confused as to why Ron added that last part. Yup, my rawness is just too much for some people. I've tried to rein it in. But that's just not possible. Ron said as he misunderstood what Kim was asking. No, not that. Why are people intimidated by Naruto? He's one of the sweetest guys in the world. Kim said confidently. Yeah, but other people don't know that. Kim, Naruto's a quiet guy who constantly has bags under his eyes. And his face is almost always set in a perpetual frown. It gives off the wrong image. Ron said looking at Kim like she had grown a second head. Leaning back Kim, thought back and realized that Ron was right. Every time that she saw Naruto, he always had a frown on his face. Though it usually disappeared when they hung out. Quickly connecting the dots, she figured out that Naruto stopped frowning when near her. Because it quieted the constant thoughts plaguing his mind. As to the bags under his eyes. Not sleeping for weeks at a time would do that to anyone. Sighing, Kim began to sip her drink slowly. It was sad that Naruto was judged simply because he looked different. Her thoughts were derailed when Naruto dropped down next to her. So, why were you in detention? Kim asked knowing it was going to be interesting. Well, it all started when I said that I wasn't going to do the essay assigned. Naruto said as he got comfortable in his seat. And why weren't you going to do the essay? Kim asked knowing that Naruto usually had a good reason to not want to do something as simple as an essay. It was about Romeo and Juliet. Smacking her forehead, Kim knew that she should have seen this coming. Naruto's hatred of Romeo and Juliet was known to everyone. It was actually worrying how much he hated it. Why? You had no problem doing any of the other assignments about Romeo and Juliet. Kim asked while giving Naruto the stink eye. She wanted us to talk about how it's one of Shakespeare's greatest plays. Naruto said as he stuck his tongue out. At this Kim just smacked her head on the table and said, you could have just done the essay arguing against it. I'm sure your teacher wouldn't have minded. You know that's what I thought too. So I asked her about it. Guess what she said. If I did that she'd fail me because I was bad-mouthing her favorite play. Naruto said as he frowned at the teacher's inability to accept that the play was bad. Now that's just being unreasonable. Ron said as he returned from getting a burrito. I know. Unfortunately, I didn't really have any support from my class. 
so I was sent to detention for lack of respect. Naruto said using air quotes. That is harsh. Just be glad you only have her for this year. Kim said as she lifted her head from the table. That's true. But I'm just wondering if I'll have to deal with this for the next three years as well. Naruto said as he took Kim's drink. Elbowing Naruto in the ribs, Kim was rewarded with a hearty oof. Oh, by the way, tomorrow you're probably going to be told about the cheer competition that's being held Friday. Naruto said as they were walking out of Bueno Nacho. Wait, this Friday? Kim asked hoping she heard wrong. Nodding to her question, Naruto continued. Yeah, I heard Barkin talking to someone on the phone when I was leaving school about a competition the squad was invited to. Oh, thanks for the heads up, Kim managed to say without letting the panic she felt get out. Though the panic came back when a hole opened up immediately under her. Seeing Kim falling into the hole, Naruto leaped and managed to grab her arm and pull her out, before the hole sealed itself shut. Pushing herself off of Naruto, Kim looked to where the hole used to be, standing up and pulling Naruto up. She dusted herself off and looked to Ron, who was just as flabbergasted as them. Pulling out the communicator, she called Wade. Wade, I was almost swallowed by a hole that opened out of nowhere. Kim said as she saw Wade getting to work. Uh, Kim, there's nothing there. Wade said after a few minutes of work. That's not possible. I almost fell into a hole that appeared out of nowhere. Kim said as she stared at where the hole used to be. I don't know what to tell you Kim, I've scanned the area with the communicator sensors and I didn't pick anything up, Wade said apologetically, let's get out of here, if someone was trying to kidnap you, they'll try again, it's best to stay somewhere we know is safe, Naruto said as he led Kim away from Bueno Nacho, thanks for sleeping over, Kim said as she sat on her bed, it's no problem, Naruto said as he sat against her bed, after what happened earlier, Kim, Naruto, and Ron had all decided to stay the night with Kim, if someone was truly determined to kidnap Kim, then they'd do it when she was most vulnerable, hence when she was sleeping. Yeah, don't worry KP, with us three here, no bad guy is going to get through, Ron said from his position on the ground in his sleeping bag. Right alongside him, Rufus nodded in agreement. Now get to sleep, you'll need it to deal with Bonnie tomorrow, Naruto said with a grin as he saw Kim roll her eyes. Good night. Rolling over and throwing her blanket over herself, Kim went to sleep. Night Kim. Night Naruto. Night Rufus. Ron managed to yawn out in time before he fell asleep. Sleep tight, don't let the bedbugs bite. Naruto whispered with a grin once he heard all three of the other occupants snoring lightly. Closing his eyes, Naruto began to try and meditate. Due to Naruto's mind being how it was he could never truly master the art, but it allowed his mind a measure of rest that had been vital to his sanity when he had been younger. A nice side effect was that his other senses besides eyesight sharpened to a ridiculously high degree that was beyond normal. It was due to this that Naruto heard the window being jarred open. Still feigning sleep, Naruto waited until the intruder was almost directly on top of him. In an instant, Naruto launched himself from his position and jammed his left forearm into the intruder's throat, and with his right hand, he covered their mouth and nose. Slamming the intruder against the wall next to the open window was loud enough to wake everyone in the house. Waking up Kim went to turn on the lights, while Ron sat up with a confused expression on his face. Blinking her eyes to adjust to the light, she found Naruto holding someone against her wall. Seeing the guy's face purpling, she pulled Naruto off of him. The intruder quickly started gasping in large lungfuls of air, as his face started returning to its natural brown color. Rising on shaky legs, he opened his mouth to introduce himself before Kim's door was thrown open by her parents and the twins. Seeing her dad run into her room with a pipe he got from who knows where and her mom with a scalpel in her hand, made Kim's heart fill with joy. It happened again when she noticed that the twins had run in with one of their failed test rockets and were aiming it like a gun. Oh, you guys, Kim said as she hugged her family, noticeably confused, but happy she was safe they hugged her back. Uh, Kimmy, can you tell us what's going on? James asked confused as to why there was a uniformed man in her room. I can explain the doctor possible. The intruder said as he saw that he finally had a chance to speak. I am Will Do from Global Justice. The name instantly got reactions from everyone in the room. But Naruto's reaction was the completely opposite of everyone else. He began to glare at the global justice agent. You're from GJ? Kim asked in awe. Yes, and Ms. Possible the director would like to meet with you. Will stated while ignoring everyone else in the room. I'm there. Kim said quickly as she started to grab some clothes, so that she could meet the director of global justice. The entire time, Naruto was glaring at the agent. Said agent, 
did his best to ignore the very obvious antagonism that was directed at him. He didn't do that well. Hello Kim Possible I'm Drive, director the head of GJ. Betty director introduced herself to Kim. Please follow me. We have much to discuss. Betty stated as they followed her to what was obviously a conference room. Kim Possible, this is Sylvan Green. In the 60s he developed a top secret missile defense project. Betty said before Kim interrupted her. The Serenita guided missile tracking system. Kim said so that it wouldn't be explained to her. Shocked Betty asked. How did you get that information? Off the web. Kim said like it explained everything. It's also a horribly obsolete system. So whoever kidnapped him didn't do it for his weapons knowledge. Naruto spoke up, wanting to get out of the GJ base as soon as possible. Was that on the web too? Betty asked completely shocked as to how these children seemed to know as much as they did. No, but you called us here for a reason, and it obviously has to do with our expertise in finding people. Naruto stated with a tone that irked the GJ agents. Well more than Betty. You are correct? Kim what would you say to helping Agent do find Professor Green? Betty asked Kim. Right now really isn't a good time. I have a bunch of stuff that I need to do, and Kim would have continued if Will hadn't cut her off. Dr. Director, may I speak freely? Will asked in a controlled tone. Granted, this is an insult. I am a highly trained professional. She's an amateur, Will said with anger in his voice. Though at the end it sounded more like whining to Naruto. If you are such a highly trained professional, why was it that I was able to take you out in a single move? Furthermore, a professional wouldn't question their superior officer when they were given more help. Do you want to know what this tells me? Naruto asked with a smirk. Kim, who had just been about to accept so that she could prove that she was better than the so-called professional, raised an eyebrow and wondered where Naruto was going with this. This tells me that you might be highly trained, but you're still green. You have few, if any missions completed under your belt in this mission if it can even be called that, isn't really just about finding Professor Green. It's about making sure that you get the experience you need without getting you killed. Naruto finished before looking Betty directly into her eye. Isn't that right, Betty? The sigh that came out let Naruto know that he was right. Yes, you are correct. Agent Du has incredible potential, but his inexperience is his biggest weakness. Betty admitted and she continued while ignoring the shocked look on Will's face. I would usually have a more senior agent accompany agent do. However, I have come to realize that GJ specializes far too much, and a broader set of skills are necessary. Betty said before looking at Kim again. Kim, will you please show him what you know? Betty asked truthfully. So, you want me to babysit him? Kim asked still a bit angry at Will for calling her an amateur and at Betty for trying to use her. In a way, yes. Betty said as she knew that she was now on thin ice with these two. Fine. But I'm charging you my standard babysitting fee. Kim said as she stood up and walked towards Naruto who was leaning against the wall. Very well. You shall be paid for your time. Thank you Kim Possible. Betty said before Naruto and Kim were escorted out of the room and out of the GJ base. So, why were you so angry at GJ? Kim asked once they were dropped off at her home. A little over four years ago, when GJ was just starting. I was commissioned to design their standard vehicles. Because this was from a brand new agency I decided to cut them some slack and not have them pay me immediately. That was a mistake, Naruto said as his eyes gained a far off look. Once I completed the designs, I sent them to GJ and I waited for my payment. After a week and not having received it, I contacted them. Guess what they said? Naruto said as he looked at Kim. They decided not to pay me. They were still going to use my designs, but they weren't going to pay me for them. I told them that I would get my payment, but they said that no one would believe me, because GJ was a secret off the books organization. Sighing, Naruto's shoulders sagged a bit before they straightened out again. Unfortunately, they were right. No matter what avenue I went through, I would get the same response. GJ doesn't exist. It got worse though, Naruto said once he saw Kim's concerned eyes. Some GJ agents contacted me and told me that if I kept pursuing this, my emancipation would be revoked and I would be taken care of if necessary. Naruto finished while glaring at the ground. I thought GJ did a lot of good. Kim said completely shocked that the image she had of global justice was so wrong. They do do a lot of good. But they are a secret government agency that does not answer to anyone. They have no liability, and as such they can get away with a lot of crap others can't. That's not even going into how high the mortality rate is for being a GJ agent. Naruto said as he saw that Kim was struggling with truth. Kim you have to know exactly what you're getting into. And I hope that you never join GJ. 
because they would throw you to your death if it meant that it got the job done. Naruto stated truthfully while Kim gained a thoughtful look. To tell you the truth, I don't know if I want to always be saving the world. Kim said uncertainly, I like being able to help people. That's what I actually like. This world saving business. This was all an accident. Kim said while Naruto held her hand. He already knew all of this, but Kim just needed someone to listen right now. It makes me wonder if I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life. Am I going to be saving the world when I'm 50? 60? I just don't know. Kim said while looking at Naruto, taking this as his cue. He spoke the thing is Kim. If you hadn't started saving the world, would you have become the person you are now? Answer me honestly. Could you allow yourself to just stand back while the world was put in danger? Already knowing the answer Kim replied. I couldn't. I couldn't just sit back and let the world be taken over by some megalomaniac if I could stop them. Still, I don't want to always be saving the world. I'd like a break now and then. Kim, what makes you think you're alone? At this Kim looked at Naruto strangely. Kim you're known the world over as the teen hero who saves the world. Do you really think that you won't inspire others? Kim, the reason why Wade joined Team Possible was because he was inspired by you. He's an incredibly smart kid, and he saw that in helping you he could help the world. Naruto said surprising Kim. She had thought it was because it gave him something to do. Looking at Naruto she asked, what about you? What are your reasons? For some reason, Kim felt her heart speed up a bit when he looked at her in a way that he hadn't before. Kim, you're my best friend. Lifting up, their conjoined hands, Naruto continued. If you wanted to take over the world, I'd be there with you. You can't ever get rid of me. Smiling and feeling much better than before, Kim asked. What did you mean by saying that I'm not alone? Seeing that she wasn't gloomy anymore, Naruto answered. Kim, ever since we started Team Possible. We've been getting countless requests from people asking to join. Kim, people want to help and they're more than willing. But you just need to accept it. Wait, if they've been asking since we started. That was two years ago though. Kim asked completely shocked at what was kept from her. Yeah, but if we had accepted all of the requests we would have been overwhelmed managing all of them. Instead what Wade and I did was tell them to start small. To volunteer and work around their local communities and that things would progress from there. From what we've seen it's actually been for the best because there are groups of people cropping up all over the world who help other people. And they all say they got their inspiration from you. Naruto finished as he enjoyed the shocked look that appeared on her face. For a while Kim just sat there trying to comprehend what Naruto had said. There were other teams out there helping save the world. Are you telling me that there are other teams out there saving the world? Kim asked wondering why she had never heard of them. No, Naruto said shaking his head. They can't actually do that because they don't have the resources, but they help out at the community level. Things like volunteer work. They want to be able to help people like you do, but they do it closer to their home than we do. Oh, was all that Kim could get out, as she still had trouble processing all of the new information. Come on, you need sleep, Naruto said as he led Kim to her room and they saw that Ron was sleeping in his sleeping bag. Getting into bed Kim dragged Naruto down with her when she saw that he wasn't going to sleep. Making herself comfortable, she ignored Naruto's whining about how that hurt shoulder. October 7, 2003 I still find it weird that your parents knew all along that I was sleeping over from time to time, Naruto said as he walked out of the possible home with Kim and Ron. Well it kinda makes sense though, you couldn't have been all that stealthy when you were younger, Ron said as he made sure that Rufus was secure in his pocket. Still, they kept that charade up for so long, it really makes me wonder what goes through your parents' heads, Naruto said as he looked back at the possible home. Just be glad that my dad didn't send you into a black hole like he threatened. Kim said as she led them toward school. You know after what happened last night, I'm more scared of your mom. Did you see the way she was twirling that scalpel? That takes a lot of skill. Naruto said as he recalled Anne absentmindedly twirling her scalpel. I wonder if I could get her to teach me that. Kim said aloud as they arrived to school. The looks that Naruto and Ron sent her went unnoticed as she walked into school. It's weird that Bonnie didn't show up for practice today after she talked so big. Kim informed Ron as Naruto was being silent for some strange reason. I'm telling you KP, she's planning something. Ron said as he saw that Kim was still not taking Bonnie seriously. Ms. Possible are you ready to assist me in my investigation? Agent Du asked as he saw Team Possible come out of the school. Didn't we go over this yesterday? Kim asked already irked by Will's presence. 
I do not believe that Dr. Director was being truthful. More than likely she was stroking your ego when she saw that you would not cooperate otherwise, Will said with complete confidence. Looking at each other team possible wondered if it was truly possible for someone to be so delusional. Sighing Kim was already beginning to regret agreeing to the mission. Let's just get started, Kim said before she was interrupted by Bonnie. Overhearing what Bonnie was telling Kim, Naruto began to wonder how much chocolate he could give away if he was truly motivated. Possible home. Why is there a golf ball fragment in the wall? Naruto asked once he saw the kidnapper's entry point. Many retired people golf. Will stated with a raised eyebrow. He didn't see why it was important. Yeah, but the fragment is in the wall from the outside. Kim said once she realized why Naruto pointed it out. If the golf ball had been inside the house, it would have been stuck in the other wall, Naruto said as he stared at the fragment. How is that important to the investigation? We'll ask losing patience. We don't know. It could be important, or it could be completely meaningless. Kim said as she detected another trace element. Wait is Professor Green involved in any online discussion groups? Kim asked wondering about the hyperactic acid she found. Oh big time. He's in groups about gardening botany, and experimental fertilizers. His lawn has actually won the blue grass ribbon three years in a row, Wade said before he was cut off by Will. This is pointless. It's obvious Professor Green was taken for his weapons expertise. Will said, before everyone else, including Rufus, rolled their eyes. I told you, his knowledge is obsolete. You could get more advanced information in a library than from him. Naruto said trying to keep the frustration he was feeling from affecting his mood. I knew this would be a waste of time. Will said before standing up and as he was preparing to leave, he was stopped by Kim. I haven't even told you about the other trace element that I detected on the scene. Kim said smugly knowing that Will wouldn't ignore it. What was it? Will asked wondering if she was bluffing. Hyperactic acid, an experimental fertilizer that can't be bought in stores. It's black market only, Kim said looking at Naruto and Ron. Nodding, Naruto already knew who they were going to be meeting. Ron, though, didn't. Ah, <sighs> so we need to visit the world's headquarters for black market gardening supplies. Pausing at hearing what he just said, he asked, where is that exactly? Egypt. If it's illegal, they sell it here or they can sell you the information on where to get it, Kim said as she gestured to the unassuming building. Kim, we don't need sellers. We need buyers. We've got to move this merchandise. Bonnie is gonna overtake you and you'll be in big trouble. Ron said waving around chocolate bars. Taking two from Ron, Naruto started eating one. Boom, two sold. Naruto stated enjoying the wafer chocolate bar. Booyah. Kim, now we just have to get the other eight sold. Ron said before Kim just walked inside ignoring him. That's Big Daddy Brotherson. No matter where a deal is being made, he has his fingers in it somehow. Kim sighed while gesturing to Brotherson. Whoa, he's got some big fingers. Ron said looking at Brotherson's giant size. Move aside amateurs. Will said pushing Team Possible out of the way. At first Naruto was glaring at him, but that glare turned into a smirk when he said, I'm gonna enjoy watching him play thud. A snort came out of Kim before she could stop it and the embarrassed look she gained made Naruto and Ron laugh. Naruto's laugh though turned into a guffaw when he heard a thud outside. Ignoring Naruto, Kim walked up to Brotherson. As you can hear, my friend enjoys thud too. Then it appears your friend has excellent taste, miss. Brotherson said as he watched Kim sit down. He usually does. However, I didn't come to make small talk. I need to know who's been buying hyperactic acid. Kim requested with a smile. Gaining a frown, Brotherson replied. Miss, we only have one rule, and that's client confidentiality. Taking a chocolate bar from her pocket, Kim put it under Brotherson's nose. The widening of his eyes let her know that she had him. Pulling it away, she saw him try and trail after it. Is that milk chocolate? Brotherson asked with hope in his voice. With chewy nougat, Kim replied with a sly smirk. Gulping, Brotherson quickly caved. His name is Duff Killigan. Getting the name, Kim handed over the candy. Standing up she saw that Naruto was waiting for her. But when she passed him, he walked towards Brotherson. Raising an eyebrow in curiosity, she decided to trust he wouldn't do anything illegal. Big Daddy Brotherson, so nice to meet you. I need some information, Naruto said with a smirk as he pulled out his second candy bar. Running outside after hearing the explosion, Naruto was greeted with the sight of a smoking hole in the ground. Looking around, he caught sight of Kim walking away from around the building. Running up to her he asked, are you alright? Looking her over she didn't seem to be hurt, but she was covered in a bit of dust. 
Yeah, we just got attacked by a rogue golfer. Looking at her head, Naruto didn't see anything wrong with it. So he asked, rogue golfer? Yeah, Duff Killigan. He's been banned from every golf course in the world for excessive displays of temper. He uses exploding golf balls, Kim said as she walked towards their ship. Looking behind them towards the hole in the ground, he shook his head and asked, What about Ron? He volunteered to keep Will busy. Kim answered as she neared their ship. Poor Ron. Naruto said as he could only imagine how boring it would be for him. Climbing inside their ship, Naruto put the course towards Middleton. Middleton. Sitting in the gym trying to kill time, Naruto was privy to the new cheer that Bonnie had cooked up, and he had to admit that it could rival the cheers that Kim had come up with. Of course, this just strengthened the idea that if Bonnie stopped being so irritating that she and Kim could be really good friends. Of course that was as likely to happen as hell freezing over, but it didn't make it any less true. Seeing Kim get angry Naruto wondered what Bonnie had just said to get her so riled up just now. However, a beeping made Naruto turn his attention away from the cheer squad to the communicator. Seeing a map pop up, with a dot labeled hideout, Naruto stood up and walked down the bleachers to Kim. Putting his hand on her shoulder, he drew her attention to the communicator. Nodding, she took the communicator and left to get changed into her mission outfit from earlier. Walking outside the gym, Naruto saw Ron and Will standing outside. Though his sight was quickly captured by the hover jet floating above them, taking the design in, Naruto realized that it was the exact same design from four years ago. However, he wasn't sure about the interior of the jet. He'd have to download the schematics from the ship itself. Thankfully, Kim had chosen that moment to come out. Kim, can I borrow the communicator? Raising an eyebrow at his odd request, she gave it to him. Activating the keyboard function he got to work, quickly punching through all defenses the ship had, he downloaded the schematics and froze. The schematics were unchanged. Erasing them, he handed the communicator to the talking Kim. Looking up at the ship, Naruto couldn't help but feel anger, as well as sadness at how many people the faulty design had killed. Sighing, he dragged his hand down his face. Hearing that Will wanted to board the jet, he interrupted. No one is riding in that death trap. The stares of confusion made him elaborate. The ship design has a critical flaw in it. The way it was made to handle stress makes it vulnerable to a whole host of things. Impossible. This jet was made by the greatest scientific minds of GJ. Will stated with confidence. Naruto's slow head shake made him feel like he was being mocked. Ask Betty where the jet is from and see what she says. For now, we'll take our ship, Naruto said before heading to the cloaked ship. Approaching the ship, a cable dropped down, and Naruto grabbed it before being pulled up. Going to the controls, he heard two more people coming up and from the footsteps. It sounded like Kim and Ron. Hearing a fourth person coming up, Naruto smirked. In putting the coordinates, the ship took off. Killigan's Island. Smacking his forehead, he sighed at Will's inexperience. Setting the ship above the quicksand, he lowered down the cable for them the group to grab it. Kim was the first one up, though she made her disgust at having quicksand in her pants, known quickly. Quickly going into the back to see if there were any backup clothes. She found some and went into the bathroom to change. Ron was next, but he seemed to handle the sand better than Kim. Next up was Professor Green, and Naruto pointed him to the back where there were some towels. Finally, Will was the last one up. He wiped off the excess sand as well as he could, and sat down in one of the seats available. So, any idea where Killigan is going? Naruto asked the three in the room before Kim answered him as she exited the bathroom. Japan. Nodding, he went back to the controls and inputted the coordinates. Killigan had left not that long ago, so he didn't have much of a head start, and with the ship's speed, they might even arrive before him. Japan. Wait, you used golf clubs to fight? Naruto asked incredulously. Yeah, but I'll tell you the rest later. Kim said as she saw they had reached their destination. Hovering over the city, they saw that parts of it had already been covered with overgrown grass. As the grass spread, they saw a man wearing a kilt that was throwing around seeds which in turn spread the grass. Grabbing a cable and jumping out, Kim was the first to land followed by Will and then Ron. Naruto prepared to go down before he got an idea. Hey professor, can your formula be modified to work with any kind of plant? Turning in shock at seeing Killigan jumping at her, Kim was not prepared to dodge. Luckily Naruto jumped and spin-kicked Killigan out of the way into a wall. Hearing a loud thud, Naruto saw that he had knocked Killigan out. Sending Kim a cocky smirk, he was rewarded with a scoff and a smile. Seeing Kim sending Will away also made Naruto feel better. Though he wondered about the look that Will sent him, 
but he decided to just ignore it. At the moment though, he saw that Kim gained a thoughtful expression. If he had to guess it was probably about Bonnie and the captaincy. At that thought, his mind started forming a plan. October 8, 2003 Middleton. Before we vote on who'll be captain, there's some stuff I need to talk about with Bonnie. So excuse you's for a minute. Kim said as she led Bonnie away from the rest of the cheer squad. Don't try to convince me Kim. I'm going to be captain. Bonnie said the moment Kim turned to her. And if the rest of the squad wants you to be captain, I'd vote for you too. Except I don't think you're taking everything into account. Bonnie, I'm going to just assume that this is the hardest you've ever worked for anything right. Kim asked even though she already knew the answer. Yeah, it is. Bonnie admitted unsure on why Kim was asking her. Well, get ready to work 10 times harder. Being captain means being constantly on top of everything. You have to make sure the squad is ready for competitions, continue coming up with new routines, and making sure to stay on top of the competition. Organ Kim continued, while Bonnie's face continued to get more and more horror-stricken. Raising her hands, she yelled, Stop. I don't want the captaincy. If she had to do all of that she'd never have a social life. What about the vote? Kim asked making sure to feign concern. There will be no vote, Bonnie said addressing the rest of the squad. Seeing Bonnie storm out of the gym, Kim smirked. Naruto's plan worked. All right girls, while the new uniform are cute, Bonnie didn't get permission from the school to buy them. As such, we can't actually wear them until the school administration gives the okay, which means we have to switch back to the old uniforms, Kim said while pulling at her skirt. The collective all was what Kim had expected. I know, believe me, I want to keep them too but we can't. As such, we can cancel practice for today. However, we are meeting tomorrow, so make sure to come ready and be prepared as we have a competition on Friday. With that everyone left leaving Kim alone before Naruto poked his head in from the gym door. Walking in, he took out a camera and quickly snapped a picture of Kim. Seeing her raised eyebrow, he put the camera away. So, I'm guessing that the plan worked. Naruto asked as he saw that Kim had an air of satisfaction around her. Yep. Kim said as she gave him a thumbs up. So are you done for the day? Cause Ron is waiting for at Bueno Nacho. Naruto asked as he wasn't sure if Kim had anything else planned. Yeah, I'm done. Just let me get changed. I don't really want to run around in my cheerleading outfit. Kim said as she went to the locker rooms to change. Inside the room, Kim took out her communicator and contacted Wade. Wade, Naruto's birthday is in two days. We don't have anything. Kim whispered harshly. I know. The only thing we have going for us is that Naruto forgets his own birthday, so he won't be expecting it. Wade said as he dragged his hand through his hair. Ugh, with everything that happened in the last few days we got nothing done. I can't believe I'm actually thinking about Ron's suggestion of going to Moose World. Kim said as she banged her head against her locker lightly. I'll keep thinking about this. Contact me if you think of anything alright Wade. Kim asked and she got a thumbs up in return. Turning off the communicator, Kim started changing. At the same time as Kim's conversation, call me, beat me. If you flipping open his cell phone to answer the call, Naruto was surprised when he heard the caller's voice. Mr. Yuzumaki, what did you mean when you told Agent Du to ask me about the hover jets? Betty's voice asked in a professional tone. You're the director, Betty. I thought you'd know everything that was happening in your agency. Naruto replied wondering why she was asking him this. Mr. Yuzumaki, when GJ was just founded I was not in charge of everything. I was in charge of recruitment. However, I have looked into the records of our science division to try and find the source of our vehicle designs. Do you know what I found? Her tone made it difficult for Naruto to know whether she was angry or amused. Not really. I don't make it a habit of hacking into secret government agencies as that would cause me all kinds of trouble. Naruto said as he thought back and wondered if they noticed that he hacked into Will's hover jet. I didn't find anything. There were no records of where the design came from. As a result of that I had our engineers look into the design flaw you spoke of to Agent Du, and they found it. This leads me to believe that either you know where the designs came from or, and I hope that I am wrong, you yourself created these designs, and they were stolen from you. Betty's truthfulness raised Naruto's opinion of her quite a bit. You're right, I created those designs when I was commissioned to do so. I didn't ask for my payment up front because the agency was new. Unfortunately, I was told that trying to get my payment would result in my emancipation being revoked, and if necessary, I'd be taken care of. As he finished, Naruto was sure that he heard a small gasp from the phone. Mr. Yuzumaki, do you still have the original contract? The sudden question made Naruto wonder where this was going. Yeah, 
An agent will be at your home to pick it up. That got Naruto looking at his phone and wondering what the hell was going on. I won't be home for a while, Naruto said now concerned that they knew exactly where he lived. That's perfectly alright. It's waited four years. It can wait a few more hours. After that the phone call ended. Looking at his cell phone in confusion, Naruto was startled when Kim tapped his shoulder. Ready? She asked. Putting away his phone, he nodded. Handing over a copy of the contract, the GJ agent saluted him, half-heartedly sending one back. He was surprised when the agent got into a normal car drove away. Seeing him drive off, Naruto scratched his head in confusion. However, seeing that there was nothing he could do about it, he just went inside his home. Heading straight towards his workshop, Naruto looked towards the wireframe suit he had in a sealed container. Stripping off his clothing, he opened the container and put on the suit. Feeling it activate, Naruto put his clothes back on. Walking around, he couldn't feel the suit hinder him in any sort of way. Deciding to test how it enhanced his strength, he went into a room full of broken equipment. Lifting up a heavy crate, Naruto was pleased that it was effortless. However, when he tried to life up a simple wrench, he wrecked it. Frowning, he tried with a screwdriver and got similar results. Sighing, Naruto saw that it still required a bit more calibration before it was ready. October 9, 2003 Closing her locker, Kim sighed. Even after hours of trying to come up with an idea for Naruto's birthday, nothing panned out. To make matters worse, Naruto didn't come to school today. Ron was still suggesting Moo's world, and Kim was beginning to think that it may be the only choice. Wade hadn't come up with anything either, and the cheer competition was going to last from Friday night until Saturday morning. This left only the morning and the day for Kim and Ron to celebrate Naruto's birthday. That is, if he showed up. Hearing a beeping, she pulled out her communicator. Hey Wade, what's the sitch? Kim asked tiredly. Hey Kim, you don't actually have anyone needing help, but I got a call from Naruto. Apparently. He was testing something and it's been problematic. He won't go back to school until he's sure that it's working properly. Wade said as he wondered what Naruto was testing. Well, at least he's not staying up for too long. Kim said thinking back to the hell she experienced when she was in Naruto's body. Yeah, but that means he might also miss his own birthday. Wade said finding the problem with just letting Naruto work. It's not like we have much of a plan anyway. All I can think of is having a movie night at his house with all of us there. Kim said while leaning against her locker, Naruto enjoys more intimate and private parties than large flashy ones. Wade said trying to cheer Kim up. I know, but he always gives us such great gifts. And it doesn't feel right to just do something so simple for him. I know that he'd enjoy it but it feels like it's not enough. Kim said as she thought back to all of the wonderful things that Naruto had gotten for her. Yep. Wade nodded as he remembered his own gifts. You know what? Let's just do the movie thing on Saturday. He'll enjoy it, and Ron and I could use it to wind down from the competition. Kim said as she finally made up her mind. Sure, but what movie? Wade's innocent question made Kim freeze, as she now had to choose a movie. Sighing, she wondered if she could get Ron to choose one before realizing that he'd choose something that was mindlessly violent. Trying and failing to control his strength again after the adjustments he had already made, Naruto wondered if there was a larger problem with the suit than just using too much strength. At a stray thought though, he realized that maybe he didn't need to configure the suit into a permanent configuration. Maybe all he needed was a control module of some sort that changed the configuration as needed. Trying to take his clothes off, they ripped off. Holding rags now, he threw them away before taking the suit off carefully. Once free of the suit, he quickly grabbed some spare pants, before getting ready to work on the control module. That would configure the suit as needed. October 10th, 2003. Okay, we have the movie, and now we just need to go to wish Naruto a happy birthday. Kim said as she spoke with Ron. Cool, Rufus and I will provide the food. Ron said as Rufus stooped atop his head. Bueno Nacho. Kim asked already knowing the obvious answer. Of course. Ron said as Rufus nodded from atop his head. Now, if only Naruto had actually come to school. Kim said as they walked towards her classroom. Yeah, but Naruto can be as stubborn as you. Ron said not noticing the glare that Kim sent his way. Rufus did though, and he quickly ran to the safety of his pocket. Soldering in one final piece, Naruto stepped away from his bench and put his tools away. Taking off his gloves and goggles, Naruto looked at the crude device. It'd work for what he needed it to and that's what mattered. He'd improve it later. Looking towards the wireframe suit, he sighed as he now had to attach the module to the suit, 
and make sure that it didn't conflict with anything. That was going to take a while. Go mad dogs. Go go mad dogs. Could be heard all around Kim as she sat dejected in her seat. Naruto hadn't accepted any calls, and she hadn't been able to wish him a happy birthday. Behind her Ron was chanting with the rest of the squad, though that quickly changed when he put on his mad dog mask. Ducking under the phone, Kim was able to avoid the slobber unlike the rest of her squad. Kim, he's doing it again. Hearing Bonnie whining about Ron just made Kim roll her eyes. She already knew that there was no calming down Ron. But she tried anyway. Ron, can you maybe just put the mad dog back in the cage? KP, you already know that you can't restrain the mad dog. Ron said as Rufus raised his thumb and said, Yeah, I know. But can you at least hold back until we at least until the competition? Kim said as she could feel the rest of the squad staring at the back of her head. KP, ill wait a minute. This road, no. No, no. Quickly grabbing the communicator, Ron asked Wade, I need a GPS lock on our position. Now, the wild-eyed look that Ron sent him made Wade agree to it quickly. Got it. It quickly appeared on the communicator's screen. And then Ron knew without a doubt where they were heading. Camp Wanweep. Ah. Ron's loud yell was so sudden that it startled Barkin into swerving a bit. Everyone inside screamed for a moment before Barkin was able to regain control, and he glared at Ron with rancor. Stoppable. What is the matter with you? Barkin barked out while keeping an eye on the road. Whatever you do, don't stop. Don't stop for hitchhikers. Don't stop for little children. And don't stop even if it's Santa. Ron yelled from the back of the bus as he tried his best to keep from freaking out. You're just filled with problems aren't you stoppable? Barkin said to himself as he began to ignore Ron. Naruto. I got to send a message to Naruto. Ron said as he tried to send a message with the communicator. But it wasn't working. The evil is spreading, Ron whispered in horror, before the bus began to swerve. You are not wiping out on Steve Barkin's watch. Understand me, bus, Barkin yelled as he tried to keep the bus from tipping over. Succeeding, he asked, is anyone in any pain? Me, Ron said as he desperately didn't want to be anywhere near Camp Wanweep. Seeing Barkin get off the bus, Ron desperately hoped that the bus hadn't had any sort of problem. Unfortunately, that hope was dashed when Barkin returned and told them, We've got two flats, better call for help. Pulling out their cell phones, the squad tried calling anyone for help before they realized that nothing was getting through. Even Kim's communicator wasn't working. Stoppable, why were you freaking out earlier? Barkin asked as Ron usually had a reason for going into screaming fits. It's Camp Wanweep. It's evil. I spent a summer here and it was horrible. Ron said as he had a flashback of his time at Camp Wanweep. Then you know the lay of the land, Barkin asked trying to get Ron to say something useful to him. Every rock, every tree, every bloodthirsty tick. It haunts me, Ron said with white eyes. Good, is there a phone? Barkin asked finally getting something. I remember there being a payphone. Ron said as he remembered the countless calls he made to his mother to get him out of Camp Wanweep. All right then, lead the way. Barkin said as he gestured for Ron to lead them. No way am I, wait, did you say, lead the way? Ron asked for clarification. Completely shocked that Barkin had actually said what he had said. Yes, now lead. Barkin said trying to get Ron to lead them to the phone. Booyah, this is Ron Stoppable's time to shine. Ron said eagerly. Kim just face palmed. There we go. The control module is working perfectly. Though, I'll need to change the design. Having to actually set a physical strength is annoying. Naruto said to himself as he tested the working suit. It wasn't any more near ready for what he and Wade needed it to be. But the sole fact that he got the strength enhancement working like they needed it was amazing. It also solidified his idea that the strength enhancement would be controlled through a computer in the suit. However, the computer would need to be able to tell when it was needed, so maybe he could put in a neural interface system. Naruto wondered as he powered down and removed the suit. Walking towards his desk, he saw that he had been called many times. Looking through the contact information, he saw that a lot of it was from Kim and Wade. Ron called a few times too, but not to the extent that Kim had. As he looked through the numbers he saw one he wasn't expecting. It was the same number that Betty used to contact him. Seeing if a message was left, he played it back. Mr. Yuzumaki, it seems that a great disservice has been done to you in the past by my agency. As a result, it seems you deserve compensation. The original payment for your designs has been paid in full. The contract is now complete, as we could not possibly force you to keep up the other clauses in your contract. Also, I think you'd like to know that the original agent that stole your designs is currently in custody. It seems that he'd been stealing not only from GJ, 
but also people like yourself. Hopefully this can at least somewhat repair the bridge that had been burned all those years ago. If you need something, GJ is more than happy to help. The call ended after that and Naruto just sat in his seat trying to take it all in. After a moment he looked up his banking information to see if it was true. Looking at the number on screen, he froze. It was more money than he made in a year. With this much capital, he could finally put many of his plans into action. However, another thought entered his mind. He might be able to expand his own personal workshop to be able to include the more dangerous experiments that he couldn't work on. That led his mind to start producing ideas faster than he could comprehend them which made him have to calm down and focus on just one thing. First and foremost, he needed to expand his workshop. He still had the robots he built from years ago to help, and if he worked a bit he could double the workforce. That would help cut down on time. Second, he needed to expand his company. He currently had four factories, and they were already working at peak capacity. Adding more factories or even expanding the ones he had would be very beneficial. It'd also increase profits which would be great for everyone involved. Thankfully, he owned his company, so he didn't need to consult anyone on what he was doing. However, before Naruto could get any farther into his plans, he heard a specific alarm sound. For a moment he actually couldn't remember why set that alarm, before a notification popped up on screen. The communicator's signal had been lost. Frowning at that, Naruto began to look for the communicator's last known GPS lock. Bringing it up on screen, Naruto froze when he saw it was near the vicinity of Camp Wanweep. Sighing, Naruto went towards the ship. Ron and Camp Wanweep were just bad combinations. Camp Wanweep. Flying above the camp, Naruto saw that there was a lot of damage done to the cabin houses, especially Cabin 13. Though, once he focused a spotlight on it, he saw the cheer squad was down there. Grabbing one of Kim's mission belts and slinging it around his bare torso, Naruto stepped onto a cable and descended down. Naruto. Hearing Kim's yell, he ran towards the wreckage. However, he was not ready to see all of the cheer squad and Barkin covered in some strange muck. Grabbing a laser pen, he set about Kim. Once she was free he handed her another pen, and they got to work freeing everyone else. So, anyone want to tell me what the hell happened? Naruto said as he was freeing Tara. There's this guy named Gil, who mutated and now calls himself Gil who lured us here because he wanted to get revenge on Ron. Kim explained as she freed Bonnie. Wait, Gil. Gil Moss. Naruto asked in shock at hearing a name he hadn't heard in years. Yeah, how do you know him? Kim asked confused as to how Naruto knew of Gil. When Ron was here, Gil made his life hell. Every time he could, he would get as many people as possible to just bully Ron. Naruto explained as he finished freeing Terra. Moving on to Barkin, he saw the gills forming, and quickly made the connection that the muck was toxic enough to cause extreme cellular mutations in ours. Kim called the cops and tell them to bring a biohazard unit to Camp Wanweep. They'll know what to do from there. We can't. Gil's using some equipment from telecommunications camp to jam signals. Kim said as she finally finished freeing Bonnie. The communicator can connect to the ship and make sure that it gets through. Naruto said as he finished freeing Barkin. Just then Ron came running in with a smile on his face. It turned into a large grin when he saw that Naruto and Kim were freeing everyone. You guys, I took care of Gil. Ron said getting smiles out of Kim, Naruto, and Tara. Bonnie looked like she had just eaten something that disagreed with her. Good, now, help us get everyone free. Naruto said handing him a laser pen. October 11, 2003. Hey, with everything going on I never got to ask. Why are you shirtless? Ron asked as they saw the biohazard unit decontaminate Barkin. Uh, Naruto said looking down and noticing that he was in fact shirtless. He had completely forgotten that he had only put on pants. I was a bit busy working on something. And I forgot I didn't have a shirt on. Naruto said not noticing that Ron's yell had attracted everyone's attention to them. A few of the cheer squad appreciated the view. But Kim was just shaking her head. Anyway, do you all need a ride? The ship can reach Middleton is about 20 minutes. Naruto said as he gestured behind himself. What ship? Bonnie asked in a derisive tone. Pulling a small control from his pocket, he pressed a button, and in the sky a large ship appeared. It was colored black and with a purple underbelly. On the side of the ship was the stylized KP monogram that the world had come to know meant Kim possible. Seeing the ship appear in the sky made everyone's jaw drop. Naruto just smirked. So, who wants a ride? With that cables dropped down from the ship and Kim, Naruto, and Ron walked towards them. The rest of the cheer squad followed soon after as did Barkin. 
Going towards the controls, Naruto tuned out Kim telling the cheer squad where the bathroom and other amenities were at. Quickly setting the course towards Middleton, Naruto turned back towards the cheer squad and found them speaking animatedly about the ship. So, what happened? Naruto asked Kim and Ron. Middleton. Well, Gil was completely obsessed. Naruto said once he heard the whole story from Kim and Ron. Yeah, by the way, how did you know about Gil? Kim asked wanting to fill her curiosity. Oh, I was making sure that Ron survived the summer. I was bringing him all kinds of things like food, itching cream when he had that rash, chimp repellent, things like that. I wanted to kidnap him, but he said no. Naruto finished while looking pointedly at Ron. Wait, you wanted to kidnap him? Kim asked completely shocked as to why Naruto would do that. Yeah, that place was atrocious. The toxicity level in that lake was horrible. Why do you think it was shut down after that summer? I made a call about the lake and boom, the entire place was considered hazardous. Naruto said as he set the ship down in the hangar. And I am glad that place is gone. Ron said while pumping his arm up. Smirking and shaking her head, Kim remembered that she and Ron still had something important to do. Looking at Ron, she nudged her head towards Naruto. Ron only gained a confused look before his face brightened up, and he nodded. So, today we'll be having a movie night. Kim told Naruto as he opened the ship's door. Cool, I'll go to your house later then. Naruto said as he began shutting down the ship. No, because we'll be having it at your house. Kim stated while walking towards the exit. Raising an eyebrow at what she said, Naruto decided to just shrug. He needed a break anyway. Okay, we have every single item one could want from Bueno Nacho. Naruto said as he looked at all of the food that Ron and Rufus brought in. And we have something special. Kim said as she walked in backwards hiding what she was carrying. Turning it around she presented the cake. Fifteen candles decorated the top of the cake, with the words happy birthday written in cursive frosting. Ron, I thought your birthday was in August. Naruto's question made Kim want to face Palm, but she couldn't as she was carrying a cake with lit candles. No, it's yours Naruto. Looking at Naruto, Kim could see him trying and making the connection that his birthday had been just the day before. Happy birthday Naruto, Kim said as she smiled at him. Once everyone had sat down to watch the movie, Ron and Rufus quickly fell asleep. Not far behind them Kim and Naruto fell asleep as well. The movie went unwatched as the three friends slept on the couch. October 30th, 2003. Okay, so on October 13th to October 15th, Kim and Ron dealt with Senor Senior Senior and Senor Senior Junior. Naruto said out loud as he filled in an entry in the Team Possible mission logs. Senor Senior Senior tried to freeze the Billionaires Club because they kicked him out for being a villain. Kim and Ron stopped them. Interesting note number one. Kim got completely caught up in the animology fad. It was funny for a bit, but it quickly wore on my nerves. Interesting note number two. The animology quiz told me that I am a purple antelope. I am, apparently, the world's most perfect man. Naruto spoke out loud as the computer typed everything he said. Let's see after that was, ah, uh, the stolen robot singers from J.P. Birimore's Pizza Partitorium. God how I hate that place. The date for this mission occurred from October 20th to October 22nd dot dot. Once again the seniors were behind this one, and once again I missed them, twice in a two-week period. It's like fate is making it so that I never meet them. The plan was to use the robot's advanced technology to hypnotize people and make them do the first command they hear. Note to self, start including sunglasses in mission clothes. Kim and Ron once again stopped them. However, Kim was replaced by J.P. Birimore as the soccer coach of her brother's team. Stretching after finishing that entry, Naruto opened up another one. On October 23rd, an ancient talisman was stolen from a museum in Middleton. The talisman allowed the wearer to become possessed by the spirit of Anubis. Kim was able to retrieve the talisman with the help of Ron. Unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to study the talisman. I am making inquiries into getting access to it, but I am doubtful anything will happen. Interesting note number one. During this time, Kim made a new friend Monique. I've met her and I can say that she's a real nice person. I'm glad that she's joined our little circle of friends. And I know that Kim is glad to have another girl to speak to. I'll make subtle suggestions about whether or not she'd like to join Team Possible. However, given her lack of any sort of physical training, she'd be given a less action-oriented role. She has an eye for fashion, so maybe she'd like to design any future mission clothes we may need. Of course, I could just hire her as a consultant. But I don't know if she'd accept it. Well, if she accepts I'll let her know that I could pay her if she wanted. Rubbing his neck, Naruto continued. On October 27th, 
Draken stole a toy factory. This is actually the only mission I was available for. The toy factory was an advanced production line that was transformed into a giant robot. We managed to not only stop Draken and Shago, but also retrieve the factory almost completely intact. Interesting and OTE number one. Draken and Shago finally learned my name. Unfortunately, they don't seem to remember Ron's, so I don't know if they'll actually remember mine. Interesting and OTE number two. Kim was thinking about asking Josh to the dance on October 31st, but Monique told her that she was getting permission to have a party at her house. As such, Monique asked Josh if his band could play. Josh gave a yes, but only if Monique could get permission from her parents. As such, Kim is waiting to see if the party is a go. If it is, she'll go to the party. If it's not, then she'll ask Josh to the dance. To Kim, it's a win-win. Stretching and standing up, Naruto prepared to go rest a bit before his cell phone went off. Grabbing it quickly, he answered. Hello, Naruto. I was able to track down Draken and Shago. They're apparently meeting with a seller for something called the Centurion Project. I'm not sure what the Centurion Project is, but if Draken is willing to buy it, then it must be dangerous, Wade said as he explained the situation. Sighing, Naruto spoke. Go tell Kim, I'll prep the ship. Are you alright? You sound worn out? Wade asked worriedly. Naruto almost never let himself get this worn out. Realizing that Wade was getting worried, he replied, I'm fine. Just haven't slept in a while. Also, I've been a bit stressed out with expanding the company. Ah, okay. Just make sure to rest once the mission's over. Wade finished before ending the call. Blowing out air, Naruto went towards the hangar. Egypt. You know, you really shouldn't steal technology when you have no idea on how to use it. It'd just end disastrously for you. Naruto said as he leaned against a wall of the cloak and dagger. Kim possible. Draken and Killigan yelled out in surprise. Blondie. Shago yelled out once she caught sight of Naruto. Don't forget us. Naruto said from where he grinned at the villains. Actually, if you want to forget about me that's just fine. Ron said once he thought about how recognizable he wanted to be to villains. You know her. Killigan asked in surprise that Draken knew Kim. Know her? Hate her. Shago. Attack. Draken yelled before Shago jumped off his head and launched herself at both Naruto and Kim. Jumping away from Kim, Naruto ran straight towards Draken and Killigan. Seeing him coming. Killigan took out his golf club and swung it towards Naruto. Spinning and grabbing the golf club, Naruto used his momentum to swing Killigan straight into Draken. Sending them flying, Naruto saw the Centurion project get thrown into the air. Jumping after it, Naruto put his arm through the ring. However, once it shrank down down onto his wrist, Naruto realized that he should have taken his own advice about technology. He didn't know how to use. Exploding golf ball. Ron yelled out as he threw a plate at Killigan saving Naruto from an unseen attack. The ball bounced around until it hit the roof. Exploding and damaging the structural integrity of the building, the roof began to crumble. She's coming down. Killigan yelled as he observed the roof as it crumbled around him. That can't be good. Shago. Draken yelled out as he prepared to evacuate. However, Shago's flying body knocked him and Killigan down. Running out of the cloak and dagger, they heard the building come down around them. Stopping once they cleared the wreckage, Naruto said, Nice throw Kim, and thanks for the save Ron. Wiping her forehead, Kim responded, No problem. I'm just glad that you were able to get the Centurion Project away from there. What exactly is the Centurion Project? Ron asked as he looked at the metal strap. Pulling at it, Naruto realized that he might be in more trouble than he realized. I'm not sure what it is, but I think I'll be taking school off tomorrow if I can't figure it out. You already missed a lot of school the last few weeks. Are you sure you should risk it? Kim asked concerned. She knew he hadn't been sleeping the last few weeks, and he'd been under a lot of stress. Add to the fact that he'd been denied the chance to actually study magic, and it was a wonder that he hadn't cracked yet. Yeah, I think I'll be okay. It isn't that big of a problem. It's just an annoyance. Naruto said as he stared at the manacle. Well, if you need help, you know who to call. Kim said as she winked at Naruto. Ghostbusters. Ron yelled before a confused look appeared on his face. Wait, did you say who you gonna call? Laughing, Naruto just slapped Ron's back and pushed him towards the ship. October 31st, 2003, Middleton 2 a.m. Pulling at the band once more, Naruto once again saw that it wasn't going to come off. Yelling in frustration, Naruto was unprepared for the band to suddenly change shape. Instead of it being just a solid metal band, it now had a green light and the band now took up more of his forearm. 
Curious, Naruto yelled again, seeing nothing happening. He concluded that the yelling hadn't actually done anything. Maybe it was the frustration he felt. Before he could continue his investigation, a beeping went off. Recognizing it as a message alert, he looked at his email. However, just from the sender he could feel his heart rate speed up. This increase in stress made the band transform again into a gauntlet. Looking at it and then at his email, he realized that stress caused the Centurion project to activate. Smacking his forehead for not realizing that the Centurion project was made for military personnel, Naruto decided that everything else could wait. The Centurion project was just calling his name. Activating every scanner he had at his disposal, he scanned the gauntlet. The results he received made him giddy. Bueno Nacho 3.30 p.m. Wait, you still go trick-or-treating? Monique asked not believing what she heard. Of course, it's a tradition. Well, that and the costume contests we used to go to. Ron said as he thought back to the contests they used to attend. Costume contests. Monique asked as that seemed a bit more normal. We got banned for life from any and all costume contests in Middleton, Upperton, and Lowerton. Kim said as she crossed her arms and glared straight ahead at an empty seat. How do you get banned from a costume contest? Monique asked confused as to how such a thing can happen. Naruto. Kim and Ron said at the same time. What did he do? Monique asked completely flabbergasted as to how Naruto got them banned. He always went overboard with his costumes. Kim said while still glaring at the empty seat. One year, he went as a velociraptor. Ron said remembering that particular evening. That doesn't sound so bad. Monique said as she still didn't understand. Naruto made his costume very lifelike. Kim said as she finally stopped glaring at the empty seat. That kinda sounds awesome. How would that get you a lifetime ban? Monique asked as she imagined Naruto wearing a velociraptor costume. He made it so lifelike that the teeth and claws were very much real. He also went running around trying to bite people. A lot of parents didn't like it when their kids began crying because of the scary dinosaur running around trying to eat them. Kim said as she remembered how embarrassed she was when they got kicked out. Wow, that sounds like a fun night. Monique said as she imagined a velociraptor chasing kids around and making them cry. No. It was embarrassing. Kim said as she looked at Monique in shock. It was pretty cool. You know up until we got banned. Ron said as he agreed with Monique. Wait, does Naruto still go trick-or-treating with you guys too? Monique asked getting back to the beginning of the conversation. Yeah, but he doesn't go in costume anymore. He was always more into the dressing up aspect than actually getting candy. So being banned from the contests made him stop dressing up. Kim said as she explained Naruto's role in their tradition. Oh, now I want to see him in costume. Monique said as she now wanted to see him dressing up. Oh god, I could only imagine what he could do now when compared to years ago. Kim said as she dragged a hand through her hair. 4 p.m. These are a lot more advanced than even my own. Naruto said as he observed the nanobits he extracted from the Centurion project. Where did they even get technology like this? Naruto thought to himself as he stared at the schematics his scanners created for him. An extremely advanced neural interface self-replicating, and the ability to transform energy into matter. This is far more advanced than anything on Earth. Naruto murmured to himself as he thought about the current level of technology on Earth. Who could have created this, and why haven't I heard about them? Naruto said as he tried to think about who could have even created something like this. Unfortunately, no one he knew of could have built it. Wade could probably build something like this in a few years. Justine Flanner is intelligent enough, but she's a particle physicist not an engineer. I'm close, but I still need a few breakthroughs to even be able to start with this. Naruto thought as he turned to look at the code he was compiling for his own version of the Centurion project. Lucky for me, the software programmer wasn't anywhere near the level required to program this. Naruto thought to himself with a grin as he had been able to hack the Centurion project easily. By doing so, he now had complete control over the Centurion project. The nanotechnology of the Centurion project was beyond his own. However, this didn't mean he didn't find ways to improve it. Once he understood how the nanotechnology exceeded his own, he found ways to improve it. This led to Naruto having the Centurion project begin creating its successor. It was a slow process as the Centurion project wasn't just replicating itself. It was actually creating something. However, Naruto was sure that it would be finished in a matter of hours. 5 p.m. Well, that sucks. Guess it's a guy's night Rufus. Ron said as he looked at Rufus. Wahoo. Guy's night. Rufus said as he lifted his arms into the air. 
I'll call Naruto to see where he wants to meet up. Ron said as he began dialing Naruto's cell phone. Hearing his phone ring, Naruto picked it up without looking at the phone he grabbed. You better have a good reason you're calling or you're fired. Uh, Naruto, it's me Ron. Looking away from the computer screen, he looked at the phone he grabbed. It was his personal phone. Whoops, sorry Ron. I thought it was my other phone. What's up? Naruto said as he got back to looking over the progress of his armband. Where do you want to meet to go trick-or-treating? Ron said as he fell back onto his bed. Trick-or-treating. Oh, that's right. It's Halloween today. Meet you and Kim at Bueno Nacho in like two hours. Naruto said as he set an alarm to warn him 20 minutes before the meeting time. No problem. But it's just going to be a guy's night today. Kim's going to the hospital's haunted house. Ron said as he rubbed Rufus's head. Kim's going to the haunted house. A, it gives her time to spend with her family. Naruto said as he shrugged. Yeah, but it's not going to be the same. Ron said as he complained about the change. What you mean you're going to miss the disapproving looks that Kim sent your way? Naruto said with a grin. Yes. Wait, what disapproving looks? I thought Kim enjoyed trick-or-treating. Ron asked as he sat up shocked. Nope. She thinks that we're too old for it. Also, you know how easy it is to embarrass Kim. Do you remember last year when a little girl called Kim ma'am? Her face got so red. Naruto chuckled as he remembered that particular incident. Now that you mention it. No. Ron yelled into the phone. Oh, well now you do. Naruto responded with nonchalance. Anyway, I'll finish this up and I'll head over. See you. Hearing Ron say his goodbye, he hung up his phone. How did I forget it was Halloween? Sucks that I can't compete anymore. Naruto thought to himself as he saw the armband growing little by little. It was about halfway done, and Naruto hoped that he would get to test it when it finished. However, a little thought wormed its way into his head. It was Halloween. It had been about six years since he had dressed up for Halloween. Why not dress up again? Except, he didn't have much time. What could he make quickly that would be up to his usual standards? While staring at the band, another stray thought entered his head. This thought made Naruto grin. 7 p.m. Looking around, Ron couldn't find Naruto, and he was beginning to get anxious. However, hearing a strange sound made him start looking around. However, he was not prepared to see what he did. Covered in blue armor, Naruto walked towards him. However, the armor was very reminiscent of a certain video game hero. You dressed up as Megaman. Megaman X actually. It's the first video game that I played. So I decided to dress up as him. Naruto said as he raised his arm and clenched his white armor covered hand. Didn't really do much for your height though. Ron commented seeing that at most Naruto gained an inch in height. X isn't really that tall. Besides, I look amazing. Naruto said while crossing his arms. You look awesome, but we really should go. We're gonna fall behind schedule if we don't hurry. Ron said as he started walking towards the first house on his list. Shaking his head, Naruto followed behind him. 9 p.m. Enjoying her time at Monique's party, Kim was currently getting something to drink. When her communicator went off, freezing for a moment, Kim sighed and answered it. What's the sitch, Wade? Draken and Shago are at the hospital's haunted house. They're demanding you hand over the Centurion project to them. Wade explained as he took off his Halloween mask. But I don't have the Centurion project. Naruto does. Kim explained while desperately trying to find a way to stay at the party. Yeah, but Draken isn't really good at remembering names. Plus, you are the leader of Team Possible. It's your responsibility. Wade said as he crossed his arms and stared at Kim. Hanging her head, Kim accepted that she'd have to cut the fun short. Fine, but if I'm getting my fun cut short, so are Naruto and Ron. I'll call them right now. Good luck explaining to your parents that you weren't trick-or-treating. Wade said as he saw that Kim had forgotten about that. I am so dead. Kim said as she put away her communicator. 9.05 p.m. All right then, we'll be there in a bit. Ron's just about done on this block anyway. Naruto said as he kept his hand on where his ear would be if he wasn't wearing his helmet. Oh, and you might want to record what happens there cause I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Naruto said with a certain tone that made Wade pause. Shrugging, he decided to follow through with Naruto's advice. Dropping his hand, he saw Ron walking back with a large heavy sack full of candy. Well, we've got to go and save the hospital's haunted house. Ah oh man, I still had another block to go. Ron said as he slouched depressed. Sorry, 
But Draken and Shago are terrorizing the haunted house. We should be thankful that Killigan isn't here, Naruto said before he heard a beeping. Looking down, he only had a moment to realize that he shouldn't jinx himself. Shoving Ron away, Naruto took the full brunt of the explosion. Naruto. Ron cried out once he managed to stand up. However, before he could despair, he saw through the smoke that Naruto was perfectly fine. Well now, that's some mighty fine armor you have there boy. I'm guessing that's the Centurion Project. Killigan asked as he leaned against his putter. Actually it's not. I got that thing off my wrist a while ago. This Naruto said as he swung his right arm forward as his hand began to glow, is my improvement. Once the glowing subsided, Naruto's hand has transformed into a cannon. Seeing the telltale sign of a weapon getting ready to discharge, Killigan rolled out of the way, tracking him. Naruto adjusted his aim and fired. The glowing gold projectile hit its mark and sent Killigan spinning away. Waiting for Killigan to stand back up, Naruto kept his buster ready. Dude, that was awesome. But, uh, isn't that thing dangerous? Ron asked while pointing at Naruto's buster hand. It's actually mostly kinetic energy and a small mass with a low density. So, what happens is because the shot is so small it breaks on contact and transfers all of its kinetic energy into the object it hit. So no, it's not really dangerous unless I increase the mass. Naruto said before turning to look at Ron and seeing he didn't understand, he reiterated his response with an analogy. It's kinda like a water balloon. The balloon is the shell, and the kinetic energy is the water. When it hits Killigan, the balloon breaks and transfers all of the water onto Killigan. Except instead of the water just making him wet, it sends him flying. Seeing the look of understanding on Ron's face, he nodded before refocusing on Killigan who wasn't walking well. In fact he looked like he was dizzy. Oh, I think I'm gonna be sick, Killigan said before retching up and then tipping over. That was unexpected. Naruto said as he lowered his arm cannon and transformed it back to normal. Are you sure that you didn't make him sick? Ron asked as he started poking Killigan with a stick. I think I hit him when he was in midair, and it just sent him spinning. I didn't mean to. But hey we took him down pretty easily, Naruto said as he shrugged, grabbing Killigan's arms and putting them behind him. Naruto's hands began to glow. From the glow, white threads began to wind themselves around Killigan's wrists. Once the glow died down, it was revealed that Killigan was now handcuffed. Dude, that is awesome. Ron said as Rufus nodded his head in agreement. Smirking, Naruto lifted him over his shoulder and began to make his way towards the haunted house. 9.20 p.m. Give me the Centurion Project Kim Possible. Draken yelled while pointing at her. Still dressed in her pink princess outfit, Kim just glared at him while she put her hands on her hips. Draken I don't have the Centurion Project. Naruto does. Told yo. Shago said while looking at her gloves and wondering if she needed to file them again. Well I can't be bothered to remember that buffoon's name. Draken yelled as he turned to look at Shago. Wrong blonde. The one with the birthmarks on his face. The one with actual combat skill. The one who scared you. Shago said as she smiled smugly. Oh, that one. Well, it doesn't matter. If we attack you, he's bound to show up. Draken said with a manic grin. But he was interrupted by a voice. You know, he's not wrong. But I really think he's underestimating exactly how effective we are when all three of us are here. Naruto said as he dropped Killigan off with the police who were remaining behind. Huh, what did I tell you? I said he'd come and why is he wearing that? Draken said as he cocked his head to the side. It's Halloween. It's a tradition to dress up. Though, with the way you look, you don't really need one. Then again, the whole point of Halloween is to be someone you're not. So I guess you failed just like you failed out of college. Naruto said as he crossed his arms and stood next to Kim. While Ron just rummaged through his candy bag. Hey, I dropped out of college. There is a difference. Draken yelled before Shago's snorting interrupted him. What's the difference? You left a little earlier than if you had stayed. Shago said while laughing. Everyone around them also chuckled a bit. Shago. Don't mock me in front of my nemesis. Now, Shago. Attack. Draken yelled before he was pushed to the side as Shago ran by. I got her, Naruto said to Kim before he took off in a burst of speed. Seeing Shago ready her hands with plasma, Naruto ran and grappled his hands with hers. Oh, so you don't want that pretty costume of yours to get damaged. Too bad for you. I just need physical contact to cause pain. Shago said with a cocky smirk before the plasma in her hand started eating through the armor on Naruto's hands. Grunting at the heat he felt beginning to burn his hands, Naruto still managed to form a grin. Seeing the grin threw Shago off. What? What's so funny? 
Do you take me for an idiot? I've seen how strong you are. I've also seen how dangerous your plasma can be. That's why I wore the armor, Naruto said before his entire body glowed. Once the glow died down, Naruto was no longer wearing blue armor. It had been replaced with a green and black armor that was reminiscent of Shago's own outfit. This armor of mine is very adaptable. Tensing his hands. They began to emit the same green plasma that Shago's did. Seeing the shocked look on her face, Naruto released a burst of plasma from his entire body that sent her flying away from. Seeing her get up slowly, Naruto was ready for her to attack him, but he wasn't ready to see her absolutely furious. You know, I got over the whole knocking me unconscious thing after I knocked you unconscious, but stealing my powers is not something I can get over. Shago said with so much rage that even Draken stepped away from her. From her entire body, wisps of green plasma began to dissolve into the air. But Naruto wasn't focused on any of that. He was focused on her eyes. Shago's eyes were always green. But what Naruto was looking at was not normal. The entirety of her eyes were green. From the sclera to her pupil it had all turned green. Looking into them filled Naruto with a sense of doom. I'm going to kill you, was all that Shago whispered before she took off like a bullet. Raising his arms to block Shago's punch, Naruto felt excruciating pain in them. A single punch was enough to not only damage the outer shell of his armor, but also damage his own arms. Ducking under her claw swipe, Naruto reverted to his normal armor and fired a shot at Shago. It managed to hit her and send her far from Naruto, but he immediately saw the difference in skill between Shago and Killigan. Shago took the momentum and let it send her flying. She tucked and rolled through the air before landing, and she skidded a bit as the momentum died down. Running at Naruto once again, Shago was able to get inside Naruto's guard, and she slashed him from his rip hip to his left shoulder. Luckily for Naruto, the armor on his torso was thick enough to prevent most of the damage to it, but his hip and part of his stomach weren't as lucky. Gritting his teeth to fight through the pain, Naruto was able to get another shot in at Shago but this time he charged the projectile with more power. This time Shago was unable to control the momentum, and it sent her tumbling to the air, and she crashed into the hospital's wall. Grasping his hip with his left hand, Naruto felt the armor beginning to heal itself and staunch his bleeding. Looking at his hip, he saw that some blood had managed to run down his leg, but thankfully his armor was keeping his blood loss to a minimum. Lifting his head, Naruto was keeping an eye on Shago. However, at the moment she seemed to be contemplating something. A moment later, her entire body was engulfed in her green plasma. Realizing that her entire body was now dangerous to the touch, Naruto transformed his left hand into a cannon as well. Using her own powers against her would probably be safer but for all I know that might cause her to become even more enraged. I'm going to have to risk using only my cannons and make sure that I don't cause any collateral damage. Naruto thought to himself, while charging up his cannons, taking off even faster than before. Shago closed the distance between herself and Naruto very quickly. Thankfully for Naruto, he had time to prepare his cannons, so he was able to lift them and fire them the moment Shago got within a safe firing distance. Unfortunately, Shago's plasma-covered form took both shots and continued through them easily. Naruto only had time to widen his own eyes, before Shago body-checked him. Being body-checked by Shago would hurt normally, but being body-checked while her form was covered in her own plasma was far more agonizing. Naruto felt some of his own ribs break from the impact alone. But his pain wasn't over as Shago continued running until they collided with a parked car. The crash destroyed the car's frame and left Naruto indented so far into the vehicle he actually couldn't get out. Lifting his head up, Naruto saw the dark look Shago sent him, and as she lifted her hand to kill him, he swung both cannons together to reveal that he had been charging up another shot. Seeing her eyes widen, Naruto released the energy stored. The kickback from the cannon pushed both Naruto and the car away from Shago who was sent flying with such ferocity that she broke through every wall she hit. Once her momentum died down, she tumbled over a few times before she stopped completely unconscious from the successive crashes and the sudden change in velocity. Looking through the holes that Shago made, Naruto let his arms drop when he saw that she wasn't getting back up. Trying to take a deep breath, Naruto began to cough as he felt his ribs hurting his lungs. Coughing up a bit of blood, he felt his vision beginning to swim, and only barely heard Kim screaming his name. November 3, 2003 AM PM. Opening his eyes, Naruto saw that he was in a hospital bed. Blinking in order to clear his vision up, he noticed that he had a tube in his mouth. Breathing in, he also noticed that it led down his trachea, 
which meant it went into his lungs. Feeling his memory come back, he realized that the tube was there probably from the injuries he took while fighting Shago. Though, he didn't think they were bad enough that he needed help breathing. Hearing a small snore, Naruto turned his head and saw that Kim and Ron were sleeping in chairs next to his bed, feeling a small smile form. He finally noticed that his arms were also in casts, raising an eyebrow at them. He remembered that Shago punched his arms hard enough to damage the armor he had been wearing, and probably crack a few bones in his forearms. Feeling his mind clearing, he assumed he was also on painkillers. It would be the only way to explain how he wasn't in horrible pain. Looking around, he saw a small remote. Pressing a button, he was rewarded with an increase of morphine. Feeling the drug coursing through his body, Naruto decided not to touch that button again, unless it was an emergency. Pressing another, the bed lowered a bit, which made Naruto quietly scream in pain. Quickly pressing another button put the bed back to the height it started with and Naruto decided to not press any more buttons. The morphine could get him addicted, and shifting the bed seemed to cause him pain. Therefore, he theorized that his ribs were in horrible condition. Sighing, Naruto realized he didn't really have anything to do as he didn't wish to wake him or Ron. It is just looking at them let him know they hadn't been getting the proper rest either. Sighing, he decided to stop fighting the morphine, and just let it lull him to sleep. Middleton Hospital, November 3, 2003, 6 a.m. Snapping his eyes open at hearing footsteps, Naruto prepared to move before he remembered he was still in the hospital. Seeing a nurse walk in, Naruto raised an eyebrow as the nurse was checking all of the monitors first and him last. Finally looking at him, Naruto was rewarded with a jump as the nurse tried to calm himself down. Waiting patiently, Naruto was rewarded with the nurse walking towards him and started asking him questions he couldn't really answer. Not because he didn't know the answers, but because he had a tube in his throat. Seeing how he was shaking though, Naruto assumed this guy was new. Sighing, he waited in annoyed silence. As the nurse seemed to realize that he couldn't answer any questions, I'll just call your doctor. Nodding as much as he could, Naruto saw the nurse walk out while paging his doctor. Looking at Kim and Ron, he saw that they were still sleeping. That told him how much they had worn themselves out looking after him. Looking down at his arm, Naruto wished he had something to do. A moment later, he wondered what happened to his armor. Looking around, he didn't see it. However, it was more than likely that it was still on his wrist. Concentrating, he was rewarded with a small metal cable coming out of his cast and down his right index finger. Smirking, he retracted it. He then had the cable travel up his arm and down his chest. From there he had it spread all over his chest and towards his ribs. From there he began having the cables gather information about his ribs. Making another cable travel up his arm, he instead had this one travel up his neck. Spreading from there, it created a neural helmet, so that Naruto could better control his cables. Having a visor form over his eyes, he looked at the information he was receiving. Eyes widening in alarm, he saw that he had eight broken ribs and his sternum had been fractured as well. To make things worse, some were broken in more than a single place. He also saw that he recently had surgery. It made sense if he had that many broken ribs. Shago was really trying to kill me. If it had been anyone else, she would have, but why hasn't she fought like this before? Shago fights against Kim often, and it doesn't make sense that she wouldn't use everything she had against her. Naruto thought to himself while staring at his information. His eyes widened in shock as his mind began to formulate a theory. What if she can't? What if her power draws from a reserve that isn't infinite? Is it possible that her power regenerates over time, and as such she has to conserve the amount of power she uses at once? That would explain why she doesn't do that sort of thing often. If she wasted that much plasma against me, how long will it take her to regenerate it? Her regeneration rate might not be that great if she hasn't used it against us until I infuriated her. Closing his eyes, Naruto realized he had no real way to test this, aside from asking Shago directly, and he was sure that he was currently Shago's least favorite person in the world. Opening his eyes again, he decided to focus on how to fix himself. He couldn't afford to be out of commission for months, and then have to go through rehabilitation. Thinking it over, he realized he didn't have anything that could help except for his nanomachines. Retracting all the cables except for his neural helmet, Naruto had his. I still need to come up with a name for this thing. Wristband inject some nanomachines into his bloodstream. He had a few machines attach themselves to the bones in his arms. The rest he allowed to flow throughout his body and had them attach to themselves to injury sites as needed. A few even attached themselves to his lungs and heart. Closing his eyes and focusing. 
He had the machines in his injury sites begin multiplying and spreading over the injuries. The bones in his arms had bridges created over his brakes to prevent them from moving. His ribs were also wrapped up, but in such a way that it allowed them their flexibility. A few of his ribs were also missing pieces, so he had the nanomachines fill in those places. His sternum was also bridged over to help it heal. His hip and part of his stomach had suffered severe lacerations, but the nanomachines dissolved his stitches and covered it in a patch that kept the skin together, while allowing it the normal freedom of movement. The incision made to operate on his ribs was also covered by the same shimmering material as his hip was. Looking at his visor, he saw that all of his injury sites had been taken care of. Sitting up carefully, he was rewarded with no pain. Smirking at his improvisation, Naruto carefully pulled the tube from his throat. It felt incredibly weird, and he definitely didn't want to ever go through it again. Rotating his jaw, he began ripping out all of the stuff that was in him. Naruto didn't care for the alarms that went off. However, once people began running in and they woke up Kim and Ron he got angry. Hey, people were trying to sleep. Naruto said angrily while everyone was staring at him. Running a cable down his index finger, he turned it into a sharp blade. Putting it against his left arm's cast, he sliced it all the way up to his wrist. Ripping the cast off his arm. He transferred the metal blade to his left hand and cut the cast. Ripping that one off, Naruto flexed his arms and felt no pain. He was about to retract his neural helmet when he realized that he couldn't find his clothes. What happened to my clothes? They had to be cut off as they didn't want to aggravate any of your injuries, Kim said once she found her voice. However, she couldn't stop staring at Naruto. TCH sighing, Naruto realized he was completely relying upon his wristband. More cables spread from his hand, and from there his legs began getting covered. Once they finished covering him, Naruto was wearing the lower half of his armor from Halloween. Looking at them, he made a quick adjustment. The armor transformed into a more cloth-like arrangement. They were still metal, but it didn't look as awkward. Retracting his neural helmet, Naruto looked at everyone and asked, now, how do I get discharged? 7.30 a.m. How are you completely fine? Ron asked while looking at the metallic colored patch that he could see on Naruto's chest and above his waistband. I'll tell you later. Right now, I just want to get out of here. Naruto said as he finished signing his discharge papers. Next to him Kim was still staring at Naruto. She hadn't said a word since she explained what happened to his clothes. It was starting to freak Naruto out. Walking out of the hospital, Naruto was unprepared for the media circus waiting for him. Getting swarmed by all of the reporters, Naruto started getting angry. However, he knew how the media could spin things, so he kept his mouth shut. Whenever he heard a question sent towards him, he replied with no comment. Things were made worse when Naruto realized that he had to walk towards his home. The entire way there, they were hounded by the media. Kim and Ron did their best to keep them away. But at best, they could only get momentary relief. Finally reaching his home, Naruto realized he didn't have his key. Sighing, he ended up having to use his DNA scanner to get in. Unfortunately, the entire thing was captured on camera. So Naruto realized he would have to install a new system. Letting Kim and Ron enter, he closed the door behind them, typing in a code in a hidden keypad. The windows darkened and the outside of the house gained an electrical fence. It was enough to repel the reporters but it didn't really do anything besides make them give him some space. Leaning against the door, Naruto sighed in relief. So, what was up with that? Naruto asked as he pushed himself off the door and began to make his way towards his workshop. Well, I don't know if you noticed, but when you were fighting Shago there were news helicopters in the sky recording everything. Kim said as she followed and looked Naruto over and seeing him standing. No problem was a stark difference to when she saw him before. Dude, everything thinks you're a hero. You should have seen the crowd that formed outside the hospital after you were taken inside. Ron said as he got into the elevator. That's just great. I go out for Halloween in costume once in years, and I end up in the hospital. Naruto said as he dragged a hand down his face. Naruto, you almost died. Kim said once she finally got over the shock of Naruto just standing and walking with no problem. Yeah, I had a flailed chest. I got lucky I was so close to the hospital or I would have died. I'm guessing you were the one who shut down the armor. Naruto said looking at Kim who just nodded. By the way, 
How are you walking around no problem? Ron asked seeing that Kim was still busy processing that her best friend almost died. This thing, Naruto said tapping the metal wristband on his wrist. I made it from what I learned about the Centurion project. It has a bunch of small machines that can be configured into almost any shape. I just injected a few into my body and had them go to my injuries. For my arms, I had the nanomachines bridge over the cracks. This prevents them from shifting and it acts like a cast without the actual cast around my arms. My ribs were more complicated because they suffered a lot more damage. My ribs were broken and had fragments missing. So I had the nanomachines fill in the missing parts and bridge over the broken sections. The only problem I had was that my ribs needed to be flexible so that I could breath, but I was able to take care of it. Overall, it works for something I improvised in the moment but I'm going to have my mainframe come up with a better alternative. I'm sure there was something I didn't take into account, and while I don't feel pain now, I might later. Naruto finished explaining as the elevator finally reached his workshop. Before he could step out, Kim hugged him gently. Hugging her back, he rubbed her back as she sobbed. Shago almost killed you. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Usually when she fights you, she doesn't fight with that kind of ferocity. I have an idea of why she doesn't do that all the time though. Naruto said as Kim got her breathing under control. What do you mean? Kim asked as she wiped her tears. I'm guessing that she can't fight like she did all that often. If she had, we would have been dead a long time ago. When she fights you, she doesn't use as much plasma as she did when she fought me. I'm theorizing that it's because she has a limit to how much plasma she can use. Using too much might injure her using too much too quickly could tire her out, or even that she could actually run out of plasma. Remember every time she fought you, she only cloaked her hands with her plasma. When she fought me, she covered her entire body with it. When she tackled me into the car, she had a very large plasma aura around herself. I need to review the video to see if I can spot anything that might tell me more. But that's what I've been able to figure out, Naruto said as he reached his computer and sat down. Extending a cable from his wristband, he had it transform into a data port. And Wade thought that having a system that wasn't compatible with USBs was a bad idea. Naruto thought to himself as his wristband was capable of interfacing with any data port. Note to self, create wristbands for Kim and Ron, oh and Rufus too. Naruto said out loud startling Kim and Ron. A soft ping let Naruto know that a node had been created. Wait, you're gonna make some for us. Ron asked Giddy to having a super wristband. Yeah. But you're gonna have to wait a bit while I make sure that there aren't any bugs with this. Naruto said taping his wristband. It's been working pretty well so far, right? Kim asked now worried about what sorts of bugs his wristband may have. Yeah, but I didn't really put it through too many tests. A lot of what I did was stuff the Centurion project could already do. So I didn't want to mess with that too much. The bone thing, I came up with that and that's why I needed my helmet out. I needed more control than I could get from the wristband by itself, Naruto said before he set his computer to begin running models on his body. That was something that Naruto had been proud about when he programmed his wristband. Due to how small the nanomachines were they could be injected into a person's body and gather information about it. From having his nanomachines injected into his body, they were able to scan his bones, size, density, ligament connections, muscle connections, and even their structure. From there his mainframe constructed a model of his body, and began running tests on it to see the best possible method to help his bones heal, and to keep him in working order. Overall, it was an incredible life-saving technology that Naruto was going to make sure reached the public quickly, but modified in such a way that it couldn't be weaponized. Disconnecting his wristband, he turned to look at Kim and Ron, and noticed that they had bags under their eyes. How about you two go get some rest? I'm not going to be going anywhere until this thing finishes. Besides I need to catch up on all of the work I missed. Ron agreed easily enough as he knew that Naruto wouldn't do anything reckless. Kim on the other hand, didn't look like she was going to leave. However, a look from Naruto got her to relax a bit. Go, take the hangar exit. It'll be a slightly longer walk but you should be able to avoid the camera crews. Nodding, Ron and Kim started walking towards the exit. Kim, however, turned back quickly to hug Naruto. This time it was one of her super strong hugs. Grimacing at the pain, Naruto hugged her back. The hug hurt a lot, but if it put Kim in a better mood, then it was worth it. Pulling back, he started shooing her toward the exit. Smiling, she went to catch up with Ron. Seeing them off, Naruto sighed as he realized he was more than likely going to have a lot of work to catch up to. Going to a smaller computer terminal, 
he started it up and began to look through all of his correspondence. Just looking at the massive amount of messages made Naruto want to put it off. However, doing so would just make it pile up, biting the bullet. He opened up the oldest messages first. Before replying to anything though, he looked at them all. The oldest were all about work, but as he moved past Halloween, they started becoming more personal. A lot of them were wondering about how he was doing. A few were asking about the armor he wore. The newest though was about the military becoming interested in his armor, sighing he began writing back. Those asking about his health were told he was doing fine. The ones asking about his armor were told it was a personal project that would probably never be released. The military was told that he would never sell them the armor and that any attempts to attain it through less savory means would result in unfortunate things happening with their systems. Going through his work emails let Naruto know that the expansion of his company was going well. They were under budget, and it might even finish early, thanks to the extra robots he made during the weeks he was absent from Team Possible. The hiring process wasn't going anywhere near as smoothly. The kinds of people that Naruto wanted employed were those that were incredibly passionate about it. It was the main reason his company had survived for so long without any large sources of capital. The scientists working for him invented incredible things. But Naruto was the one who figured out how to introduce them to either the public or private sectors. It was a win-win situation. The scientists were given the freedom to create, within ethical limits, and he managed to modify the inventions as needed, so that they could be sold. The drawback though was that the inventions didn't always carry a linear direction. One of his scientists had managed to create a special form of glass that was resistant to cracking and shattering. Her next invention was a new toilet that used 50% less water. It was an incredible invention, but it wasn't something he could put to use right away. A problem unrelated to his workforce was that his company ended up creating a slew of products that couldn't be immediately marketed. It made for an amazing pool of information to draw from, but it didn't help his company's profits. Luckily, every year their profits increased from the year before, so they weren't in any danger of folding over. Stretching, Naruto was glad that none of his scientists currently had any problems with each other. He knew it wouldn't last forever but having to solve issues like that was something he was dreading. Leaning back, he felt like he was forgetting something incredibly important. Eyes snapping open, he made a call. On one of his screens Wade popped up, but he didn't look happy. It's 9 a.m. It took you over an hour to call me and tell me that you're up and about Kim called me when you were signing your release forms. Gulping at seeing Wade truly pissed, Naruto quickly sent him some information. What? Don't you have anything to say for what's this? Whoa. Was all that Wade said as he began to review the information he sent. How in the world did you make this? Wade asked once he finished reviewing the information. I learned a lot of it from the Centurion project. Oh shit, I still need to return that. Naruto said as he began to look for where he placed the Centurion project. Swinging his head left and right, he spotted it still inside one of his scanners. Sighing, he pulled it out and placed it inside a box. He could not afford to have a secret government lab getting angry with him. Placing the box aside, he continued, As I was saying I learned a lot of it from the Centurion project, but I was able to improve upon it. As a result, I was able to make this. Naruto said as he held up his right wrist showing the metal band. It's also the reason why I'm not in the hospital right now. I had the wristband patch me up which explains the shiny metal on my chest right now. Naruto said as he gestured toward the metallic patch on his chest. Wristband. Wait asked of all things. I haven't come up with a good name yet. I'm not all that knowledgeable about ancient militaries. Besides I don't want this thing being associated with soldiers, since we don't work for any military in the world. We help people who ask for it. Naruto said as he looked at his wristband. That's true. Well, I'm going to look this over and see what I can come up with. Wade said before he caught Naruto's smirk. I knew you'd want to personalize your own. That's why I wasn't planning on building one for you. I'm gonna build one for Ron, Kim, and Rufus. But I'd need your input on those. Naruto said as Wade nodded and disconnected. Breathing a sigh of relief, Naruto was glad he had been able to distract Wade from his anger with the information he gave. Leaning into his chair, Naruto began to look up information on what he missed when he was in the hospital. He was going to be in for quite a surprise. 10 a.m. Slamming a fist on his desk, Naruto shook in rage. Some way, somehow, the press had managed to learn that he was the head of a multi-million dollar company. The possible circumstances by how they managed to get that information made him furious. Someone in his company had broken the confidentiality agreement in their contracts. It was leaked to the press by GJ. 
or even that someone in the press managed to break into one of his factories and steal information from him. However, at the moment it didn't matter. He was going to have to deal with the fallout of this situation. It also meant that the anonymity he enjoyed at school was gone as well. Taking a deep breath and releasing it, he began to make plans on how to deal with this. He also had to deal with his newfound fame. The fight with Shago had made him a public figure. To make things even worse, they had dug up information about his history. They had managed to find out that he was an orphan who emancipated himself. This alone would have made the news, but throw in the fact that he was an orphan who had started with nothing, and then built up a multi-million dollar company. It was the rags-to-riches story of the decade, and Naruto hated every bit of it. He didn't like the attention. It was one of the big reasons why Team Possible wasn't named Team Yuzumaki like Kim had suggested when they started. He was the team sponsor, backup, and co-tech support. He didn't want to be the face of Team Possible. It seemed that he might start having to take a more hands-off approach to keep Team Possible from being affected too much. It sucked, but it was better than having people tracking them all over the world when they went on missions. Then again, Knowing Kim she might just smack him for thinking that. Shacking his head he decided to deal with it later. The most pressing issue was talking to the media and getting this thing to blow over. Oh god, this means I need to have a press conference. Naruto thought despairingly, sliding down his chair. Naruto wondered if it may have been better if he had stayed in a coma. 12.30 p.m. Ugh, I feel like shit. Shago thought to herself as she woke up. Pushing herself off her bed, she saw that she was wearing handcuffs. Apparently she'd been arrested. Drawing upon her plasma, Shago realized that she was running dangerously low on it. Keeping her breathing calm, Shago tried to remember why when it came back to her in a flash. Blondie. She almost killed Blondie. Banging her head against the wall, Shago knew that she would be charged with attempted murder, and that was definitely something she didn't want. Walking up to the bars in her cell, she yelled out, Hey guard, where's my one phone call? 3 p.m. Kimmy, I see you're looking much better. Anne stated as she saw her daughter looking much better after some good sleep and a shower. I feel a lot better. Kim said as she rubbed her eyes. That's good, because your father needs to speak to you. Anne trilled out as she left the house to go pick up Jim and Tim. What was that about? Kim questioned as her mother rarely did those sorts of things. Shrugging, she went towards the kitchen where her dad was sitting. Kimmy Cub. We need to talk, James said with a tone that told Kim she couldn't get out of it. 3.15 p.m. You want me to do what Draken yelled into the phone after hearing Shago's request. Look Dr. D, believe me when I say that I really don't want to do this either. But if I don't, I'm gonna begin drawing the wrong kind of attention. Shago said as she spoke into the phone and made sure the guard nearby wasn't eavesdropping. What kind of attention? Draken asked not understanding why he needed to do this. I'll explain everything later. But right now I need you to do this, Shago said as she could feel her temper rising. You know Shago, I like to believe where Kaido was all that Shago heard before she hung the phone up. Letting the guard escort her back to her cell, she hoped that what she just did, wouldn't come back to bite her. 3.20 p.m. And then I realized that even if I said that you couldn't go around fighting villains and saving the world, you'd go and do it anyway. James said as he paced up and down the kitchen while Kim looked on amused. The talk with her dad was interesting. She had feared that he would have tried to stop her from going out to save the world, but instead she found out her parents talked it over and realized that she'd go and do it anyway. As such, all we ask is that you keep us up to date on your missions, and that if you ever think that you're in over your head you back out of it. James said as he put his hands on Kim's shoulders. Hugging her dad, Kim agreed to the stipulations. 3.30 p.m. Connecting his wristband to his mainframe, Naruto downloaded the new design to hold his bones together. Once it finished, Naruto activated his neural helmet and began to replace the makeshift system with the newly designed one. He did it slowly so as to not aggravate his injuries. Once he finished, he stood up and moved his body to test it out. Thankfully it seemed that everything had gone well. Hearing his cell phone ring, Naruto answered. What's up? Hey, we got a hit on the site. But you're not gonna believe who it's from. Wade said in disbelief. Scrunching his face up in confusion, Naruto pulled up the website and looked at it. His eyes widened when he saw who it was from. 4 p.m. Walking down the hallway, Naruto was flanked by two guards. Approaching a door, one of the guards opened it and let Naruto through. Behind him, the door was closed and locked. 
Putting his hand on the door, Naruto had a bunch of his nanomachines cover the window and the door, and project a false image. Once that was done, Naruto walked toward the only occupied cell. Standing before it, Naruto looked inside. Sitting down on the bench, Shago looked back. However, Naruto instantly caught a few clues that she wasn't at 100%. Her skin was pale and she looked exhausted. This did little to take away from how dangerous she was though. If anything it made her that much more dangerous because she would be willing to go through more drastic measures. You know, when I made the call to Dr. D, I didn't expect an almost immediate response. Shago commented with a smirk. What? Did you want to see pretty little Almi that badly? Shago taunted, though she did gain a confused expression a moment later. Wait, didn't I break a few of your ribs? How are you standing? With a smirk Naruto didn't answer her question. So, why did you want to meet? Naruto said as he leaned against the bars. Well here Shago did something that Naruto was sure she didn't do often. She looked embarrassed. I wanted to apologize for almost killing you. My temper got the best of me, and as a result it almost killed you. So, sorry. Shago said with an embarrassed smile. Looking at her in disbelief, Naruto pushed himself off the bars and turned around. Slapping his cheek lightly, he turned back and she was still smiling. You one of the most badass criminals in the world. Wants to apologize for almost killing me. Naruto asked in disbelief. Oh, you think I'm badass? You're so sweet. Shago said with an almost flattered tone. Why? You're not like Draken. You think things through. So tell me why. Naruto said not believing her to be genuine. It's cause I don't want the attempted murder charge on my record. In my line of work, your record brings in your employers and believe me when I say that I don't want to work for those kinds of people. I'm a crook, a thief, and a mercenary. I'm not an assassin. I don't want to kill people. If I'm fighting someone and they happen to die, that's different. Things like that happen. However, I'm not going after them to just kill them. Believe it or not, but I'm not the kind of person who enjoys that. I like a good fight, and I can't have that if I'm constantly killing the people who give it to me. Shago said in complete seriousness. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. But you do know that I'm not the one who filed the murder charge against you, right? Naruto asked completely serious. What? If you didn't then who? Shago asked surprised that he wasn't the one who did it. The police. You do know that because you were trying to kill me in front of so many witnesses. Many of them police, they're the only ones who can remove the charges. Well, that's only if a prosecuting attorney hasn't picked up the case yet, which they shouldn't have, because I never gave them the right to do that. Naruto said as he wondered why he hadn't been contacted yet by his legal team. Oh, yeah, I'm not that knowledgeable about the law besides the fact that I break them. Shago said before she leaned onto the bars and looked at Naruto with a flirty smile. So, think you can convince them to drop the charges for me. Are you propositioning me? Naruto asked completely in disbelief as he took a step back. You? What? No. God that's disgusting. You're like 10 years younger than me. Shago said while recoiling in disgust. I was trying to use my feminine wiles to get you to agree. Most teenage boys can't control themselves when a beautiful woman flirts with them. Unless are you gay? Cause if you are, I know a guy who's just your type. Shago said while getting excited about the prospect of playing matchmaker. He's big, buff, and kinda corny, and he can get on your nerves pretty easily. But if you can deal with that he'd be the perfect boyfriend. Shago said with a smirk while enjoying the look Naruto sent her. Dragging his hand down his face Naruto said while not rising to her bait. God, if this is what Draken has to deal with all the time, I can't believe he hasn't fired you. Hey, Draken is lucky that I'm sticking with him. If it wasn't for me. Do you know how often he'd screw up his own plan? All the time. Sometimes I wonder why I don't try taking over the world. I know I could do a better job than him. Shago said while venting. That's something I can't figure out. Naruto said, while leaning his arms against the bars. You are obviously more capable than Draken, and while you aren't a genius like him, you're intelligent. You could get a lot farther than he has if you put your mind to it. So why don't you? Naruto asked while leaning close to the bars. Do you have any idea how much work that entails? I'd never get to rest, and I'd always have to make sure things were running smoothly, and then make backup plans for when something goes wrong. Ugh, I'd rather be a sidekick and just relax, while Dr. D does all of the heavy work. Shago said dismissively answering Naruto's question. 
I can honestly say, I wasn't expecting that. Naruto responded with while blinking owlishly. Yeah, well I'm full of surprises, Shago said with a grin. Sitting back onto her bench, she crossed her legs and put her cuffed hands onto her knee. So, about convincing the coppers to drop the charges, Shago said as she waited for Naruto to give her a reply. To tell you the truth, I don't see why I should. Whether or not you get inconvenience doesn't matter to me. Naruto said as he pushed himself off the bars again. Yeah, well if you don't, the next time we fight something might just happen to your precious Kimmy. Shago said nonchalantly while inspecting her nails. Really? I don't do this and you start threatening my friends. Do you have any idea how this is supposed to work? You are supposed to offer me something, and I decide on whether or not to accept. Naruto said in completely disbelief at what Shago just said. Yeah, I know how to play the game. But the thing is, that only works if I believe that you'd get back at me for it. However, we both know that you won't. After all, your kind would never get their hands dirty. Shago said with a manic grin as she felt that she had Naruto trapped. Looking at Shago, Naruto knew his next course of action. Throwing his right arm forward in an instant, Naruto sent a bunch of metal cables at Shago. Completely unprepared for it, Shago was caught up in the cables. Wrapping a few cables around her chest throat, arms, and legs, Naruto lifted her into the air. Having the cables begin constricting, Shago began choking and gasping for air. Don't think for even a moment that I won't kill you, Naruto said with a completely calm voice while glaring at Shago. Shago could only choke and gasp as she stared straight into Naruto's eyes. You seem to believe that just because Kim is my best friend that I won't get my hands dirty. You know nothing about me. The other day, the armor I was wearing was more than powerful enough to atomize you. The only reason I didn't is because Kim wouldn't want me to. If in the future something happens to either of them and I learn that you were partly responsible, I will torture you. Naruto said as two more cables sped towards Shago, but these didn't constrict anything. Instead they stopped near her eyes and in plain view they became sharp drills. I will make it my purpose in life to torture you, and I will make sure you live a very long life. Naruto said as the drills began spinning, and they crept closer to Shago's eyes, and seeing her eyes widen in fear. Let him know that she now knew that she was very wrong about him. Pulling the cables back, Naruto let Shago drop. Gasping and coughing for air, Shago put a hand to her throat and massaged it. Looking up at Naruto, Shago realized she had made a grave mistake about him. Lucky for you, if I let every little thing said about Team Possible get to me, there'd be a mountain of corpses. Also, you don't have to worry about me coming after you. Unless you hurt someone I care about. Naruto said as he saw Shago shakily stand up. You've got darkness in you, Shago said as she looked up with a grin. She would never in her life have thought that someone like him was the partner of Miss Goody Two Shoes. It made her wonder, what would have happened if someone besides Kim Possible had gotten to him first? The possibilities excited her. Dark and light are words that people came up with. What you mean is that I have a willingness to cause harm, Naruto said while glaring at the smirking Shago. Whatever you say, I know what I saw, Shago said as she continued smirking. Smirking, Naruto began walking towards the door. Wait, what about the charges? Shago said once she realized that she hadn't gotten a response. Knocking on the door, Naruto turned back to look at Shago with a grin. Hearing the door open, Naruto walked through it while commanding the nanomachines on the door to spread themselves around the room. He was going to be keeping tabs on Shago. Seeing the door shut, Shago said a single word once she comprehended the situation she put herself in. Fuck. 5 p.m. You did what Kim yelled in disbelief. I got Shago's attempted murder charge removed. Naruto repeated himself while sitting down to eat at the possible home. Why would you do that? She almost killed you. She would have succeeded if you hadn't been wearing your armor. Kim yelled while trying and failing to understand Naruto's logic. Oh big time. But I do have a reason for this. Naruto said while drinking from his water. Around them the possible family. Plus Ron were just staring at Naruto and Kim. They weren't touching their food, and they just wanted to see how this played out. Oh, and what reason is that? Kim asked condescendingly while crossing her arms and glaring. I bugged her. I injected some of my nanomachines into her bloodstream, and now no matter where she goes, I'll be able to pinpoint her exact location. Also, I had a nice conversation with her. Well, it was nice for most of it. Naruto said as he conceded that the conversation he had with Shago was mostly cordial except for the threats they both sent to each other. Oh really? I'm supposed to believe that just because you bugged her, 
you're letting her off the hook. If it was that simple Ron would never get in trouble after we chipped him. Kim said while gesturing to Ron. Wait, you did what Ron said before lifting his shirt and looking himself all over for the bug. Calm down Ron, I disabled it after I found out about it. Though for payback I had Kim chipped. Naruto said while letting that secret out of the bag. What? When did you chip me? Kim said completely shocked that it was turned back at her. I didn't, I'm just messing with you. But you do worry me about your lack of ethics. I'm the one who's supposed to be reminded about what's ethical, not you. Naruto said as he gestured with his spoon. Shaking her head, Kim went straight back to glaring at Naruto. That still doesn't explain why you let her off the hook. If it had been anyone else, you'd make sure they got tried to the full extent of the law. Unless oh my god, you have a crush on Shago. Choking on his food, Naruto pounded his chest, which turned out to be a mistake, as it made his injuries flare up. Falling to the floor with pain, Naruto was Heimlich by Anne until he could breath again. Gasping for air, Naruto looked at Kim with shock while she in turn just looked freaked out, that she made him choke. What? Naruto rasped out while getting air back into his lungs. I do not have a crush on Shago. She's evil and tried to kill. The hell is the matter with you? Well, those just aren't good enough reasons. You usually have such solid reasoning. Kim said once she understood that he was genuinely shocked that she even suggested that. It is solid reasoning just not for you. If the charge had been kept she would have been busted out a lot sooner. Without it, she's not going to be busted out for a while. After all, they're not going to seek the death penalty without that attempted murder charge. Besides, I don't want her death on my conscience. Plus, by bugging her I can now gather information about the plasma her body generates. Naruto said as he resumed eating. However, around him everyone was surprised by how much he had thought ahead. Kim hadn't even considered the possibility that Shago might be executed. If it had been her, Kim was sure she wouldn't be able to let Shago be executed. Well, now that that's settled, Naruto, how's work treating you? James asked partly because he wanted to move the conversation along, and partly because he was genuinely interested. Pretty well considering the fact that we're currently doing some major expansions. The money I got from GJ was very helpful in that. Naruto said as he looked at James. GJ, isn't that global justice? I thought you and them weren't on good terms. Anne asked as she got into the conversation. We aren't friends if that's what you're asking. But they extended an olive branch. And I decided that it'd be best to take it, rather than spurn it. Naruto explained which got a small smile from Anne. Whoa, hold the phone. How much money we talking about here? Ron asked while waving his spoon. Rufus just took the chance to start eating Ron's food. Hmm, I don't feel comfortable saying exactly how much, but let's say it's payment from a multi-year government contract. James should have a good estimate from just that. Naruto said offhandedly while James froze while he was trying to take a bite out of his food. Honey, are you alright? Anne asked concerned when James didn't move after a few moments. I'm fine, just... Let me take this in, James said as he leaned back into his seat. Around him everyone, save Naruto, looked at each other in concern. And I believe that from James' reaction that we shouldn't speak about this anymore. So, how's school been? And question, while changing the topic to something hopefully less coma-inducing. It was awesome. Our teacher left in the middle of class, and we didn't get a substitute until hours later. Jim said before Tim took over. We got the class to start a riot, and while that was happening we snuck into the school's lab. Tim started and Jim picked up. There we started building a nuclear fusion engine, but it exploded. Tim finished as they both let out embarrassed smiles, putting her head in her hands, and could just imagine the calls she was gonna get tomorrow. You know, I'm glad that Wade's as responsible as he is, or Middleton would never have survived. Naruto said as he finished hearing Jim and Tim. Beside him Kim and Ron nodded their heads in agreement. Why is that by the way? He's ten just like the tweebs, and yet he's so much more mature. Kim said as she imagined her life if her brothers were more mature. Oh, that's kinda my fault. When he was younger, like five or six, he tried hacking into my systems. Back then I didn't know who he was, so when I tracked him down, I went to visit him. Imagine my surprise that this little kid was almost able to get past my security. Anyway, long story short, I hired Wade. From there I was able to get him the things he needed, but only so long as he could be responsible with them. Naruto said before Jim and Tim made sounds of protest. Why did you help Wade, but not us? Tim asked angrily. Yeah, you've known us almost our entire lives, but this kid comes along and you just give him stuff. Jim asked just as angry as Tim. 
That's because when I met Wade he was a five-year-old kid who was bored. I gave him something to do and from there he learned to be responsible. You too, on the other hand, are bored 10-year-olds who don't care about being responsible for the things you make. How often have you broken or destroyed something in the house because of a runaway experiment? If I let you two have access to the kinds of materials that Wade has access to, you'd blow up half the state, Naruto said before he saw the dejected looks on their face. However, this doesn't mean that I'm not willing to help. You just have to be more responsible. If you ever want to test something just ask, and I'll let you do it over at my house where I have the space needed for large-scale experiments with little risk to other people. Hey, if you impress me enough, I might even let you work with Wade and I on some things. Naruto said with a smile at how excited they got. You are so going to regret this, Kim said as she leaned over and whispered into Naruto's ear. God I hope not, he whispered back. November 4, 2003 3 p.m. Walking out of school, Naruto was bombarded with flashing cameras. Ignoring them, he started walking towards his house. He really needed to get away from everyone. School turned out to like he had expected it to be. He went from ignored loner to the most popular student in a single day. The amount of people trying to be friends with him for his money had been startling. Though calling Bonnie a gold digger had been incredibly satisfying. Thankfully, Kim and Ron had been there to keep the worst of them away. Unfortunately, Ron disappeared quickly after Amelia started flirting with him. Kim had managed to stay with him whenever she could, but they often had different classes, so they didn't see much of each other. Hopefully all of this would blow over soon after the press conference later that day. San Francisco, Section 13, 4.55 p.m. Move it or lose it, Jade yelled out as she ran past some agents who were carrying paperwork, quickly turning a corner. Jade continued running hoping that she wasn't missing the news conference. Seeing her door open, she quickly slid between Jackie's legs as he was currently leaving, throwing her backpack into the wall. She jumped into a chair and quickly turned on the television. Switching channels until she saw the news channel, she turned up the volume. Behind her, Jackie scratched his head as he didn't know why Jade completely ignored him. To our viewers who are just tuning in, we are at the press conference of the decade. As you can see behind me attendance is through the roof. We are minutes away from meeting the sole proprietor of Infinitech Incorporated. The young entrepreneur has gained fame from the brutal fight that was captured on live TV on Halloween night. From the information that we have gathered over the past few days tells us that the criminal that Mr. Yuzumaki fought is an international criminal called Shago. The news reporter stated while Jade watched on. Behind her, Jackie decided to watch to see what captured Jade's attention so well. Shago is a criminal with warrants for her arrest in over 22 different countries. Her crimes include assault, theft, breaking and entering, conspiring to take over the world, and jaywalking. What we have learned about Mr. Yuzumaki is that he's an orphan who emancipated himself at the young age of five. By six he had created Infinitech Incorporated. Some of the inventions credited to Infinitech Incorporated are an incredibly durable glass that is to be installed in all future space aircraft, military body armor that has saved the lives of over 1,000 soldiers, and a new water-saving toilet that uses 50% less water. All of these inventions are incredible by themselves. But it seems that Infinitech is preparing to do far more. During the last month, Infinitech factories in the United States have doubled. This increase in production can only mean that Infinitech is in it for the long haul. Putting a hand to their ear, the newscaster paused for a moment. I have just received word that Mr. Yuzumaki is going to be here in a matter of moments. However, an interesting bit of information I received is that he is apparently walking under his own power. Since Friday there have been rumors that he had been injured when he fought Shago. Turning to look behind themselves the newscaster spotted Naruto. Ah, uh, Mr. Yuzumaki has just arrived. The cameraman zoomed in on Naruto, and Jade let out a small sigh. Looking at his niece with a raised eyebrow, Jackie went back to watching the news broadcast. Welcome to the first ever Infinitech news conference. As the media has dug up, I am Naruto Yuzumaki. I could go on and on about the goals and visions about Infinitech, but I get the feeling that you care more about what happened on Friday. Naruto said, getting a chuckle from the audience. Gaining a smirk, Naruto accidentally set the seeds for his future fan club. Well, I think it'd be best to explain what happened. On Friday, I was trick-or-treating with my friend Ron. Here a hand was raised so Naruto pointed towards the reporter. Don't you think that you're a bit old to be trick-or-treating? The reporter asked with a slightly condescending tone. 
If I had listened to that sort of advice I would never have gotten my company off the ground, Naruto said with a smile, as the reporter paled a bit as they realized they asked something stupid. While we were finishing up, Draken and Shago had arrived at the hospital, I received a notice about it from my friend Wade, and after dealing with a quick problem, Ron and I went towards the hospital, Naruto said as he looked over the crowd. Quite a few reporters were recording everything he said with hand-held recorders, and a few others were only writing things down. Now usually, whenever Team Possible deals with supervillains, Kim is the one who does most of the fighting. Here another hand was raised, getting the feeling this would be a recurring thing, he decided to answer them as they came. Why does Ms. Possible do most of the fighting? From the tone of the question, Naruto believed that the reporter was honestly curious. If we rank Team Possible's combat ability in order of greatest to least, Kim would always be at the top. Ron and I are about equal in skill, but Kim is not only more skilled, she is also physically stronger than us. Naruto said as he saw that many in the audience were shocked to hear that. Anyway, once we arrived at the hospital, Shago and I began fighting. The armor that I wore was supposed to be an equalizer, but I did not know that Shago was much more capable than Team Possible's previous encounters seemed to indicate. Luckily, everything was finished before anyone was seriously hurt. Naruto said as the reporters began to raise their hands to ask questions. Pointing to a reporter in the back, Naruto hoped that it was something about Infinitech, and not about what happened Friday. He was wrong on both counts. Why exactly are you a part of Team Possible? With the resources at your disposal, you don't have to endanger your life to help people. This was a question that took him by surprise for a moment before he replied. As you all are aware, I am an orphan. I do not know who my mother and father are, and I do not care to know. As such, the people I am closest to are my friends. There is nothing in this world that would keep me from helping them. When Team Possible was first formed it wasn't about saving the world. It was about helping Kim make some extra pocket change. However, when Kim got a call for help, we went and helped. That has always been Team Possible's reason. People ask for help and we give it. It doesn't matter if the call is from the other side of the world. It doesn't matter if we have to go in the middle of the night. It doesn't even matter if it means breaking the law. We do what we do because people ask for help. We will never charge people for our services, because we believe in helping out another human being. Naruto said with such passion that the people in the conference room could only stare in awe. First it started slowly, but it quickly gained momentum, and soon after the entire room was clapping. Smiling at the applause, Naruto raised a hand to quiet them down. Thank you for the applause. But remember there is a reason why it's called Team Possible, and not Team Yuzumaki. Naruto said with a smirk just knowing that Kim was watching, and that she'd be blushing up a storm. Middleton, Possible home same time. With a red face, Kim could only stare at the TV screen, while the tweebs were behind her making kissing sounds. Next to her daughter, Anne could only try to hide her smile at seeing how Kim reacted to such a statement. She hadn't known it before. But Naruto was quite the smooth talker. Turning to look at James, she saw the frown on his face. Apparently, he was seeing the same thing she was and he didn't like it. Giggling to herself, she turned to look back at the TV. Continuing with the press conference after his little speech became a much less formal affair. Apparently, Naruto's charisma was so great that the media had fallen for him hard. No, at this time I do not have a girlfriend. I do not believe that I will be getting one in the near future as I am currently focusing on expanding my company and starting to make many of our products available for anyone to buy. Naruto said as he leaned against the podium in front of him. Pointing at another reporter, Naruto continued answering questions for the entirety of the press conference until the allotted time for the conference had run out. Thank you all for coming, but we have run out of time. If you have any more questions you all know where to contact me. With that Naruto stepped backwards and grabbed a cable that had been hidden from sight. Pulling it, the cable began to pull him up into the sky. Everyone on the ground looked up and gasped as they saw a ship that quickly disappeared from view. Well, it seems that Mr. Yuzumaki has a flair for the dramatic. With that Jade turned off the TV and stretched. But behind her, Jackie spoke up causing her to jump into the air in fright. Jade, why were you in such a hurry to see that? Coming down from the scare, Jade proceeded to answer. Jackie. Have you even seen the fight? It was Mondo Coolio. Jade exclaimed while reaching for her laptop. Booting it up, she quickly found the video of the fight and showed it to Jackie. At first Jackie was interested, but as the video finished, 
He had a horrified look on his face. Jade, please promise me that you'll never do anything like that. Uh, Jade said as she tried to figure out a way to get out of it, before she thought of something. Oh, Jackie, did you know that the snake was a revered animal in ancient Egypt? Confused at the sudden change in topic, it took Jackie a moment to catch up to what Jade said. Hmm. The snake is part of the Chinese zodiac. Uncle and I will look into it. In the meantime, care to explain why you were so late today? The embarrassed look on her face was enough to tell Jackie that she had probably gotten detention. Again. November 26, 2003 New York Museum 12 p.m. Looking at the display holding the snake talisman, Naruto had a few thoughts going through his head, but the one that would just not leave his head was, how is that snake still so green? It's hundreds of years old, but the snake is still so vibrant. Naruto's thoughts weren't always genius ideas. However, it was a good question. Old objects lost their color when they weren't taken care of. This talisman had apparently been found in an old cave in the Amazon. All of that humidity wouldn't have been good for it, but it was in pristine condition. In fact, looking at it from a certain angle you could see the talisman actually shine. Patting himself on the back for bringing a leather jacket. No one saw the cable extending from his wristband to the tip of his finger, tapping the stand the talisman was on. Naruto had the cable separate from his wristband and sneak into the security system. He had some of the nanomachines separate and attach themselves onto the talisman itself. He was going to be running a few scans with the nanomachines to see if he could pick anything up. Feeling his cell phone vibrate, he saw that Kim was calling him. Walking outside the museum, Naruto noticed a man wearing a fedora and a spy camera. Taking note of the guy's face, he answered his phone. What's up? Naruto, please tell me you're going to be here for Thanksgiving. Kim asked while hiding in her room from Larry. Kim, I'd love to go to your house for Thanksgiving. But remember how your Nana glared at me last year. Naruto said remembering that incredibly awkward dinner. What? Nuo, she doesn't hate you. She just doesn't know you. Kim said trying to get him to come over. Kim, whenever I tried to talk to her, she just stared at me. You know how difficult it is to make me uncomfortable. She just looked at me for a bit, and I just wanted to run. She scares me, Naruto said as he walked towards his hotel. Please, I don't want to spend this entire vacation with Larry. I love my family, but I can only take so much. Kim begged over the phone. Sighing, he replied. I'll do my best to ignore how uncomfortable your Nana makes me. I'll be there. Yes. Kim screamed into the phone before she covered her mouth. Not breathing for a few seconds, she heard footsteps coming up the stairs. I'll call you back later. Hearing her hang up, Naruto could only shake his head at her antics. Arriving at his hotel, Naruto realized that he'd have to speed up his plans a bit. He'd originally planned to stay in New York for a few days. While taking subtle scans of the talisman, he wasn't entirely sure that the talisman was magic. But the Anubis talisman had been magic, and it had been on display in Middleton. Why couldn't the same sort of thing happen again? Going to his room required Naruto to take a few flights of stairs. But it gave him time to think, and he didn't want to be near people in a crowded elevator. As he reached his floor, Naruto took out his key card and opened his door. Once inside, he took off his jacket and placed it on the couch. Stretching a bit, Naruto softly thumped his chest and was relieved that he only felt the slightest bit of pain. During the month, his chest had healed quite well. Thankfully, they hadn't received any missions that required them to actively fight people. It appeared that after Shago was arrested, Team Possible's rogue gallery was a bit hesitant to throw down. It wasn't hard to see why. Shago was one of the most dangerous criminals in the world. If she was arrested so easily then why did they think they'd fare any better? However, Team Possible took this vacation in stride. It meant that they could rest a bit and relax. Though for Naruto it meant that he had that much more time to work on the wristband, which he had begun to affectionately call his Omniband. Unfortunately, neither Kim or Ron liked the name, but they couldn't really come up with anything better. Sitting down into an armchair, Naruto booted up his new laptop. Like all of his technology, he had built it to his specifications. However, he hadn't built it using his standard methods and materials. He had used the nanomachines he created from the Centurion project to create this laptop. As a result, its capabilities were actually better than his mainframe. As a result, Naruto decided to upgrade his systems once he got home. At the moment though, he had the laptop communicating with the nanomachines he had left on the talisman. The machines were scanning the talisman for any sort of energy discharge. Naruto had no idea what magic really was. But if it followed the laws of the universe then magic was a form of energy, 
and it should be picked up using the appropriate scanners. As such, he was using such a broad range of scanning methods that he had to filter out all of the outside noise that he was picking up. It was going to be a long and tedious process though. So caught up in his work, Naruto completely forgot about the man who was wearing a spy camera. November 27, 2003 Thanksgiving Day 4 a.m. Hearing a beeping, Naruto looked up from his laptop. It was his cell phone. Opening it, he looked at the small screen and noticed it was a message about the site. Loading it up, Naruto looked at the request for help. It was from the New York police. His curiosity peaked, Naruto began to look more into it. The message was short, but it was a request for help about retrieving two items of value that had been stolen from the New York Museum. The pink puma, a pink-colored diamond, and the snake talisman. Smirking, he let the police know that he'd be there soon. Police Station 5 a.m. Sitting down, Naruto looked at the glass divider and waited for Jackie-chan to be brought out. He had decided to wear his mission clothes as this was a team possible mission. But he had switched out the three-quarter sleeve black turtleneck for a full-sleeve version in order to hide the omniband. However, he decided to inform Kim and Ron later on in the day about it and not wake them up at 3 a.m. Pulling out a small data pad, this one had been a gift from Wade. He looked at the information he had gathered about Jackie Chan, an archaeologist who often worked for nearby universities helping them with their archaeological digs. He was single and lived with his uncle at a shop called Uncle's Rare Finds in San Francisco. Overall, not someone who'd get involved in crime, but it's possible he was desperate for money. Unfortunately, that idea fell apart because the snake talisman was also stolen. Taking into account the ways the items were stolen, also showed that it wasn't just a single thief. A little Statue of Liberty to take the place of the snake talisman, and a device that was custom made for the puma to fit right into showed very different styles. One showed planning, and the other told him that it was an impulse. Now, he just had to figure out which one was Jackie Chan, cunning master thief, or just a kleptomaniac. Hearing the door open, Naruto put away the data pad and crossed his arms. In a moment a man sat in the chair across from him. Looking at him, Naruto took in the details that the photo he had couldn't truly capture. He was a bit taller than average, he had broad shoulders. The definition on his arms showed Naruto that he exercised, but it was the way that he moved that told him that he had martial arts training. His hair was a bit messy but considering he was in jail, it could be excused. The man's face showed signs of Asian heritage. However, all of that was secondary to the fear, guilt, and worry he had showing on his face. This was not the face of a master thief. It was the face of a man who got into something that he was not expecting. From that Naruto realized that Jackie Chan had not stolen the pink puma, which meant that he stole the snake talisman. Now, he wondered why. Hello Mr. Jackie Chan, I'm Naruto Uzumaki. I was called in to help the police find the items that were stolen from the New York Museum. However, from looking at you, I can already tell that you didn't steal the pink puma. Naruto said which got a surprised and hopeful look on Jackie's face. Naruto's next words crushed that hope. As a result of that, it tells me that you stole the snake talisman. You are not a master criminal and as such you didn't plan the theft of the pink puma using a custom-made device that would fit the pink puma perfectly. However, you do have the martial arts training required to move fast enough to switch the snake talisman, with a miniature model of the Statue of Liberty. So my questions to you are who's the other thief? Where is the snake talisman, and why were you after it in the first place? Naruto asked as he leaned on his elbows on the desk. Jackie for the most part couldn't really get over the fact that in under a minute, this child had completely broken down what happened the night before. Ah, how? What? How did you do that? Jackie asked once he got his voice back. From how you just stumbled over your own words, you just reinforced my theory. Now tell me, what happened? Naruto asked completely serious. Thinking it over, Jackie realized that in good conscience, he couldn't let a child get into danger that he was in. As such, he just kept his mouth shut and crossed his arms. Seeing the posture that Jackie had just taken, Naruto understood that he wouldn't be getting anything. However, Naruto was crafty, creating a cable similar to the one he attached to the snake talisman. Naruto had it slip through the glass and attach itself to Jackie. Jackie hadn't noticed the cable attach itself to his pants. Standing up, Naruto left the room. He could now track Jackie as needed, and now he was off to track down the snake talisman. 8 a.m. New York. 6 a.m. Middleton. Morning sleepyhead. Naruto joked into his cell phone. 
MMM, morning. You don't usually call this early. Kim replied still drowsy from her sleep. Ah, well that's cause it's already 8 a.m. over here in New York. Anyway, last night we got a hit on the site. It was from the New York police. Naruto said as he heard Kim getting up. Don't worry, I'm already on it. It's just a simple robbery from the New York Museum. So don't go and get ready for a mission. If everything goes well, I should be done pretty soon. And I'll be back home in time for dinner. Naruto said quickly in order to keep Kim from trying to get in on the mission. Oh, well just be careful and hurry up. We always watch the parade together, and this year you will too. Kim threatened with some seriousness. I should be able to make it back before the parade ends. Naruto said back completely sure that he'd be back before noon. Alright then, I'll see you later. Kim replied before ending the call. Smiling and shaking his head, Naruto put his phone into his pocket. Next he activated the Omniband's visor. With that he was able to see what his cameras inside were picking up. Like everything else from the Omniband, Naruto had installed the cameras using super small cables. Looking at the live feed, Naruto saw movement coming from the front door. In walked a woman who was about the same height as him. She had brown skin and black hair, she had a lithe body, and from her movements, he noticed that she had martial arts skills as well. In her hands, Naruto saw that she had today's newspaper. The headline was about Jackie Chan having stolen the pink puma. Hearing her call Jackie Babyface, let Naruto know that she was involved somehow. Her pulling the snake talisman out of a bag at her side, let him know that she was the other thief. However, Naruto couldn't hide his shock when the talisman made her disappear. Though when a mirror began floating up, he realized that the talisman had only turned her invisible. Quickly shifting one of the cameras to look at infrared, he saw her turn invisible again. Unlike last time though, Naruto could still see her in the infrared. It seemed that the talisman made her invisible to visible light, but not infrared. That would come in handy. Naruto began to frown when he saw her answer her phone. Kicking himself for not bugging it, Naruto could only hear one side of the conversation. It was apparently a meetup of some sort. Seeing her hang up the phone, he was surprised when she picked it up again and spoke into it. Listening in, he heard her asking if a counterfeit could be made in the next hour. Hearing her say she'd bring it right over, Naruto tracked her leaving the apartment. Pulling up a map and checking her position, he decided to wait. He didn't know who else was involved in this theft, and stopping her now might mean not being able to retrieve the puma. Rusty Bridge 9.30 AM Isn't it kinda cliché to meet under a rusty bridge? Naruto asked himself as he observed the meeting taking place below. The woman, now known as Viper, had broken Jackie out of jail. But instead of returning to her apartment, she went towards a meeting place that had been arranged an hour and a half ago. What surprised Naruto was that instead of meeting another criminal, Jackie and Viper met a little girl. The girl was dressed in what appeared to be a dark blue trench coat and fedora. Either the girl watched far too many movies, or she didn't know that she wasn't supposed to stand out when having a meeting of this sort. An interesting thing he noticed was Jackie's reaction to her. He knew her and apparently they were related. Maybe a daughter. Though if that was true, then Jackie was a horribly irresponsible guardian. Good thing Kim wasn't here or she'd have ripped him a new one. Tuning in to listen to the conversation below, he heard the girl, called Jade, ask Viper if she brought the goods. However, Jackie complained that what they were doing was a felony, but it seemed that he wanted the talisman enough to break the law. Seeing Jade and Viper exchange items, Naruto noticed immediately that the talisman was a fake. It was a well-made fake considering that whoever made it only had an hour. But to anyone who'd spent a significant amount of time looking at it could tell it was fake. However, now he knew that Jackie had wanted the snake talisman for its magic. Which meant that he had knowledge that Naruto was desperately seeking. Luckily, Naruto had him tagged so he could track him down easy enough. Turning his attention towards Viper, he saw her disappear. Activating his visor, he set it to infrared and captured her running. Looking back at Jackie and Jade, he saw that they realized that the talisman was a fake. Deactivating his visor, Naruto decided to meet Viper at her apartment. He could arrest her there and get back the stolen items. As much as Naruto wanted to swing around like Spider-Man, it would draw attention he didn't need. Plus with it being Thanksgiving, there were cameras all over the place. Making his way as stealthily as he could, Naruto went into an alley and fired off a grappling hook from his omniband and pulled himself up. Once on the roof, Naruto activated his visor again and looked inside the apartment. His eyes widened in surprise when he saw a blonde man in a green suit making himself what appeared to be tea. 
Running the man's face through government databases, Naruto learned that the man was called Valmont, and he was a criminal who led the organization known as the Dark Hand. Looking at all of the man's crimes, Naruto began to wonder if he should call for backup. It was taken out of his hands when Viper arrived. Hearing Valmont ask for the talisman, let Naruto know that this man also knew about the magic in the talisman. Getting annoyed that apparently everyone but him knew about magic, he was shocked when he saw ninjas come out of shadows. Though he quickly saw that these ninjas had blue skin and red eyes. He narrowed his eyes when he saw Valmont take out some weird object, but he raised an eyebrow when he saw it glowing. Seeing Valmont pointing forward, he realized that the object could track the talisman. Seeing Viper turn invisible and then seeing the window open, let Naruto know that she had escaped. Leaning over the side of the building, Naruto saw Valmont use the tracker to point towards Viper's direction. Jumping over the side of the building, Naruto landed in front of Valmont and the ninjas. Grabbing the tracker from Valmont's hand, he threw himself onto the ledge of the building towards where Viper was. Quickly covering the tracker with some nanomachines, Naruto threw it back at the ninjas who were following him. The ninjas fumbled with grabbing it, and a few fell off the side of the ledge. Looking at them as they fell, Naruto saw the ninjas explode into shadows. Deciding to stop being shocked at all of the magic he was seeing, Naruto activated his visor and tracked Viper down. Jumping, he kicked Viper in the back. Seeing the talisman being thrown into the air, Naruto jumped after it. However, instead of landing on the street, he landed on the Marlin Moose Parade Balloon. Diving after the talisman, Naruto grabbed it and put it in one of the many pockets in his belt. Behind him, a lot of the ninjas jumped after him, and so did Viper. Turning to look back at them, Naruto deactivated his visor and got into a fighting stance. It was four against one, and he still needed to retrieve the puma which Viper had in her back pocket. As one each of the ninjas jumped at him, but before Naruto could do anything, Jackie swung the balloon around which made Naruto stumble, and the ninjas fall off the balloon. Looking back at Viper, he saw that she had fallen over. Getting up, Naruto started walking towards her before Jackie climbed up the balloon and got in his way. Hand over the talisman. I don't have it. He does. Viper said pointing towards Naruto. Hand it over. Jackie said while putting his arm out. First of all, you don't ever tell me what to do. Second of all, you're both criminals. Thirdly, you're both under arrest. Now come quietly, or you'll both be getting an ass kicking. Naruto said before he heard a hia. From behind him, twisting around, he grabbed the leg that tried kicking him in the back. Lifting Jade up into the air, Naruto raised an eyebrow at her. Jade gave out an embarrassed smile before she gasped. You're Naruto Yuzumaki. You kicked butt during the fight on Halloween. Yup. Now can you please tell me why you're trying to attack me? I understand them, Naruto said pointing to Viper and Jackie. They're criminals, but you're just a little girl. What, is Jackie your dad? Dropping Jade. She bounced a bit until she got onto her feet. Crossing her arms she answered, Jackie's not my dad. He's my uncle. Turning to look at Jackie, Naruto let out the first thing he thought of, you are horribly irresponsible. Putting his hands in his hair and messing it up even further to get rid of some frustration. Jackie spoke. The talisman is magic. It could be very dangerous. I'm trying to keep it safe from the Dark Hand, an organization that is going after the talismans. Wait, there's more than one. Naruto asked confused, as he wondered what was so special about all of these talismans, which seemed to be of a different variety than the Anubis talisman. I'll explain later, but if we don't hurry there'll be more Shadokan Jackie trailed off as he noticed that they weren't alone anymore. Turning his back to Jackie, Jade, and Viper, Naruto touched his belt and had his nanomachine seal each of the pouches shut and reinforce the belt, so that removal was impossible without his authorization. Pushing Jade behind him, Naruto saw they were using the tracker to pinpoint who had the talisman, and they settled on him. Seeing them all jump at him, Naruto jumped as well and used the balloon to send him above the Shadokan. Landing on the back of one, Naruto did a split kick that knocked two off the balloon. Ducking under a kick, Naruto tackled one of the ninjas to get out of the encirclement. Creating a steel staff from his omniband, Naruto twirled it around as he smacked any ninja that tried jumping at him. Once they realized that jumping at him wouldn't work, a few pulled out chains and tried to tie up the staff. Naruto, however, let them wrap the staff up and he would then swing those unfortunate enough to still be holding the chains. Behind the crowd of Shadokan focusing solely on him, Naruto saw that Jackie and Viper were preoccupied by their own groups of shadow ninjas. Having the Omniband break the staff back down into energy, he then created Oktanfas. These he used to get in close and smack the ninjas around and off the balloon. As he was fighting, 
he noticed that one of the ninjas had broken off from the group. Keeping an eye on him, Naruto's eyes widened when he saw shiny metal stars in the ninja's hands. Hoping he was wrong, Naruto saw the ninja throw them. He blocked the ones that would have hit him, but he was unable to keep two from piercing the balloon. Hearing the whine of air flowing out of a balloon, Naruto threw himself down and held on for dear life. A moment later, the balloon started flying out of control. Any of the remaining Shidokan had fallen off the balloon, and only Naruto. Jade, Jackie, and Viper remained. However, Naruto's hold on the balloon wasn't great as he was still holding onto the tanfa, breaking the one in his right hand down. He held onto the one in his left hand with his mouth. It hurt his mouth, but he was able to hold on until they crashed into the Statue of Liberty. Breathing heavily, Naruto broke down the tanfa in his mouth. Looking up, Naruto saw that he was far away from everyone else. Shooting a grappling hook into the air, it wrapped around the top of the torch and Naruto pulled himself up. Standing on top of the torch, Naruto looked at the three others there. Now, as I was saying earlier, you two are under arrest. You, Naruto said pointing at Jade, shouldn't follow his example. He's a terrible role model. Also, the Puma please, Naruto said extending his hand out to Viper. She looked ready to run for it before she realized that she had nowhere to go. Pulling the pink Puma out of her back pocket, Naruto opened up one of his pouches and put it in there, sealing it back up. He pulled out his data pad from another one of his pouches and called his ship. In a few seconds, it had decloaked and it had lowered down cables for everyone. Grabbing one, Naruto looked at the criminals and one child and asked, Well, what are you waiting for? With that they all grabbed a cable and the ship pulled them up. 10.30 a.m. Here's the pink puma and the snake talisman officer. Returned safe and sound, Naruto said handing over the objects in question. You know, I was convinced to ask for Team Possible's help by a rookie. I didn't believe for a second that you were actually capable of doing what you claimed. But damn if I'm not eating my words. The police chief explained as he held the stolen items in question. It's what we do, Naruto said shrugging. He didn't take offense to what was said as Team Possible had gone through it several times before. Looking at the squad cars, he saw Jackie and Viper were handcuffed in the back seat. Jade was being spoken to by another officer. However, Naruto began frowning when he saw a black van pull up. Out of the driver's seat stepped out a bald white man, wearing a red turtleneck and a black trench coat. Seeing the man approach the squad car holding Jackie and Viper, he flashed some sort of badge and spoke a bit for a moment before the squad car was opened, and Jackie was let go. After that Jackie went and grabbed Jade. From there the bald man approached the police chief. They spoke for a few moments before the chief handed over the snake talisman. Narrowing his eyes, Naruto decided not to interfere. He had the feeling that he'd be meeting these people again. Besides, he had a promise to keep to a friend. Middleton, 9.30 a.m. Adjusting his shirt once more, Naruto knocked on the possible home's front door. Hearing running, Naruto was unprepared to be tackled by Kim the moment she opened the door. Getting the air knocked out of him, he looked up and saw that Kim was glaring at him. Trying to figure why this would happen, she quickly pulled him up and pushed him inside. After that Kim pointed at the TV. Looking at it, he saw that they were playing clips of what happened an hour ago. Now realizing why she was angry, he decided to explain. The mission was supposed to be simple. Things kinda escalated during the last leg of it though. I would have called you if I had known that things would have turned out like this. Sighing Kim spoke. You're already on thin ice with Nana. I don't want things to get worse. Kim said as she rubbed her arm in worry. I don't think things can possibly get worse between your Nana and I, Naruto said as he rubbed the back of his head. Well, she is a possible. We can do anything, Kim said trying to lighten the mood. That made Naruto laugh, and he hugged Kim to express his thanks. Laughing with Naruto, Kim put her arm around his and led him around the house to greet everyone. 5 p.m. Sitting across from Nana, Naruto could only wonder what she was going to say. Naruto wasn't really sure why. But ever since they had met Nana and Naruto just never got along well. Amazingly enough, it wasn't because Naruto was being his usual self. He tried being respectful, but it just got him nothing but a stony glare. After that, Naruto stopped trying that and acted like he normally would. This got him the same stony glare. It seemed that Nana was just hellbent on hating him. It made everyone uncomfortable. So whenever Naruto stayed for Thanksgiving, they were kept as far apart as possible. This year though, 
Nana had told everyone that she needed to speak to Naruto alone. That scared Naruto down to his very core. He had done research on Nana possible, and he knew exactly how dangerous she was. As a result, Naruto was doing his very best to keep calm and hear what she had to say. Though for the last few minutes she was simply drinking from her glass of wine, and Naruto was drinking water. Naruto could hear everyone outside the door, but he couldn't understand what was being said. A moment later though, the muffled voices disappeared. Finally, I thought they'd never leave. Looking at her, Naruto realized that the reason she didn't speak was because she could hear them eavesdropping. Now, Naruto, what do you think my opinion of you is? Nana asked as she sipped from her cup. Well, ever since we've met you've done nothing but glare at me. From that I can kinda infer that you don't like me. I'd say hate. But Kim wouldn't like it if I said that. Naruto answered honestly. Naruto always tried telling the truth even if it was hurtful. Well, you're wrong. I don't hate or dislike you. In fact, I believe you are a very nice young man. And you have a very bright future ahead of you. Nana responded without hesitation. Hearing that coming from Nana shocked Naruto so much that he couldn't come up with anything to say for a few moments. Once he came back though, he asked, Then why have you glared at me every time we meet? You remind me so much of my dear departed husband, and that's why I don't want you anywhere near my granddaughter, Nana said in a stern tone. Kimberly is a young girl whose accomplishments include saving the world on an almost monthly basis. With someone like you supporting her, she'd always strive to do better, and that could lead to her getting hurt. Nana said with such sincerity that Naruto believed it instantly. However, it did show Naruto something. So it goes both ways. Naruto said once he processed what Nana said. Excuse me. Nana asked confused as to what he was talking about. Both you and Kim clearly don't understand each other. You seem to think that I'm pushing Kim to go out and save the world. The truth is, I really wish she didn't. I worry about her getting hurt every time we get a mission. I worry that one day she'll need my help, and I won't be able to do anything. I worry about her every day. However, Kim is the one who pushes herself to do better. She's the one who decided to start saving the world. I couldn't convince Kim to not save the world. It's just the way she is. The best I can do is support her and hope that the things I make are enough to keep her safe. If you're hoping that this talk of yours was going to be enough to stop me from helping Kim, I'm sorry to say that you've wasted your time. Naruto said as he stared straight into Nana's eyes. Looking at his expression, Nana sighed, so very much like him. Even when faced with something like this, you stare it straight in the face and tell it to get out of the damn way. Nana chuckled before finishing the rest of her wine. Confused as to what just happened, Naruto could only blink. Looking at Naruto, Nana asked, What did you mean by we don't understand each other? To Kim, you come off as disapproving and extremely overprotective. I know you mean well. What with your own history? Here Nana's eyes widened in surprise. She hadn't expected him to know anything about her, but Kim doesn't. She doesn't see how much you two have in common, and as a result it creates conflicts. Here Naruto took a sip of his water before deciding to continue with his response. To you, Kim seems to be in a phase, but if you listen whenever she talked about one of her missions, you'd notice that she has a passion for it. She's actually talked to me about it before. She doesn't want to always be saving the world but she does enjoy helping people. That's what you aren't understanding. To Kim, saving the world is just another way of helping people. It's what she loves to do and she'll do it for the rest of her life. That's just the kind of person she is. Naruto said with a smile, remembering all of the chats he's had with Kim about helping people. The energy and sparkle in her eyes was enough to tell him that Kim truly enjoyed helping people. Humming. Nana looked into the bottom of her wine glass as she thought over what Naruto had said. He made a lot of sense. Thinking back to the conversations she had with Kim, she did notice that whenever Kim spoke about her missions, she'd start tuning it out. It seems that I have a bit of work to do to repair my relationship with Kimberly. Thank you, Naruto, Nana said as she smiled. It's no problem. It's what Team Possible does, Naruto said with a smirk. November 28, 2003, 12 a.m. What did you and Nana talk about? Kim asked. Once everyone went to sleep. Laying across the couch, Naruto looked at her and answered. She thought that I was pushing you to go out and save the world. What? That's insane. If anything you restrict me. Kim replied with a smirk. Chuckling, Naruto agreed. Oh, and you were right. She didn't hate me. If anything she adores me now. He said with a smirk. Really? Kim asked not believing him. Yep. She said that I reminded her of your grandpa. Naruto said unaware of the significance of such a comment. 
No way. She actually said that. Kim asked not believing what Naruto said. Yeah, why? Naruto wondered why she was so surprised. Well, she always called Grandpa one of a kind. The kind of person who you'd only meet once in a lifetime. Kim said while remembering something she didn't say out loud. Well, now I'm flattered. Naruto said as he closed his eyes to relax. Kim, though, was busy thinking about the conversation she had with her grandma long ago. Kimberly, dear, your grandfather was one of a kind. If you were lucky enough to meet him once in a lifetime, your life would always be that much better for it. I remember falling in love with him, and I realized that if I didn't take a chance, someone else would. Kimberly, promise me that you'll never be never scared of taking a chance no matter what. It might seem like the most impossible thing in the world to overcome, but believe me when I say that everything beyond that fear is more than worth it. If you do allow that fear to keep you from taking a risk for something you truly want, you'll always regret it. Looking at Naruto, Kim wondered, why had Nana decided to do this now of all times? He'd been here for years and Team Possible had been active for almost three years now. What could the reason have been? November 29th. 2003 2 a.m. Looking through the hours of information that he had obtained from the snake talisman had taken Naruto the better part of the night. Most of it was useless as it didn't really have any information that was actually useful. However, he did catch a few spikes of energy that were either quick or were sustained for long periods of time. Once he correlated those with the time, Naruto realized that the energy spikes only occurred when the talisman was active. From there, he was able to isolate the frequency of magic that the snake talisman gave off. With that done, it was easy to exclude all of the background noise that interfered, and he was able to get a steady energy signature from the talisman. Even now, the talisman was still giving off data that Naruto was looking at in real time and he was able to infer that it was currently not in use. At the moment he had nothing to do with the information, but it might be useful later on. However, Naruto made a surprising find once he allowed the real-time data feed to return to normal. There were two other similar energy signatures nearby. Naturally, Naruto had some nanomachines spread from the snake talisman to the other two similar energy signatures. He went through the same process he went through with the snake talisman and was able to isolate those specific energy wavelengths. From looking at those two in the snake talisman, Naruto concluded that magic did not use electromagnetic energy. It used something else entirely. This made sense though. It would explain why magic hadn't been ousted over the centuries to the general public. No one knew to look for it. Naruto was lucky because he knew that magic existed. He knew that it was an energy of some kind and he had the technology to actually find it. In fact, without the Omniband, it would have taken him far longer to find anything remotely magical. The problem he had now was to decide what to do. He had pinpointed the location of the snake talisman easily. It was underneath San Francisco, obviously an underground complex of some sort, but this raised another question. Why wasn't it being used? The only people with stealth technology were Wade and himself. Well, usable stealth technology. Some groups were just barely learning how to refract light correctly. Something like the snake talisman would remove the need for stealth technology, as all you had to do was hold the talisman. This told him that the people who were holding the talisman either didn't want to use it, didn't know what it could do, or the talisman might have some side effects. Sadly, all Naruto had were questions and no answers. But this did make Naruto think about a recent meeting of his. Jackie Chan knew what the talisman was, and he knew that it was magic. He had more information that Naruto desperately needed, but remembering the way their last meeting ended, he didn't think that Jackie would be in a very talkative mood. Thinking about it, though, Naruto realized he did have another way, though taking Kim and Ron along would help. Uncle's Rare Finds San Francisco November 29, 2003 1 p.m. Dragging his hand down his face, Naruto wondered why he thought it was a good idea to drag Ron along into an antique shop. Looking at the elderly Asian man, Naruto could see that he was about to explode. I'll pay for all the damages. The elderly man looked at him with a raised eyebrow, before he lowered the broom he had raised. HMPH. Pulling Ron up from the floor and shattered antiques, Naruto asked. I know this may sound strange, but what do you know about magic? Seeing him raise an eyebrow, Naruto continued, My friend here, was exposed to some strange magic a few months ago, and while nothing bad has happened, I want to make sure that there'll be nothing wrong. Walking up to Ron, the elderly man began poking and prodding him. Once he finished he gestured with a finger to follow him towards the back. Following him Team Possible were surprised at what they found in the back. A giant library filled with books and a chemistry set. Well, Naruto thought it was a chemistry set. 
I shall perform a Kai spell to see if you are cursed. If so, then I shall perform a cleansing spell. The elderly man said. Seeing him gather odd things, Naruto raised an eyebrow. It seemed strange, but the man moved like he knew what he was doing. Looking at the library around him, Naruto put a hand on a drawer and began to send out a legion of nanomachines. The entirety of the desk was covered in a matter of moments. But Naruto then had them spread out and cover the library books. With everyone occupied with what the old man was doing, nobody saw the nanomachines disperse into the books. Pulling out his data pad from his left pocket, Naruto saw that the books were beginning to be digitized into his mainframe. Putting the data pad back into his pocket, Naruto gathered a few nanomachines into his hand, forming them into a ball. He tossed it into a corner where it disappeared into the shadows. Turning to look back at the old man, he saw Kim giving him a questioning look. Smirking, he winked at her. Turning back Kim began to observe the old man. Yu mogi guai fai dai zao. The elderly man chanted over and over again as he waved a puffer fish around. Naruto was beginning to think that the old man was a hack when the fish began to glow green. Naruto took a step back when Ron began to glow a dark blue. The glow around Ron began to get stronger, before it settled down. The old man stopped chanting and looked at Ron with a raised eyebrow. The magic that you were exposed to was not a curse. However, the magic has remained in your body for so long that it is combined with your Kai. It is now impossible to remove. One more thing, your Kai is strong, and it is strange that it was able to absorb the magic you were exposed to. The old wizard said as he put his hand on his chin. Uncle we're back. Jade's voice rang out and was accompanied by a bell ringing. Uncle, where are bois? Jackie's startled voice made Team Possible turn around and see him thumping his chest to calm down his heart rate. Jackie, what bois? Jade followed with an almost identical reaction as to what Jackie had. Getting into a fighting stance, Jackie asked. What are you doing here? We don't have the talisman. Yeah, I saw Mr. Clean take it from the police chief. Also, I was legally in the right. You stole the snake talisman and you broke out of jail. Naruto said as he looked at Jackie. Oh my gosh, Team Possible is here. Who are you? Jade asked seeing Ron. Ron could only hang his head at being unrecognized. Naruto patted his shoulder in sympathy. I didn't break out. Viper broke me out. Jackie yelled back indignantly. He really didn't want to remember the time he spent in jail. Yeah, and I arrested her for theft which is the only thing I could prove. Naruto said as he began to smirk. Jackie, you are a bad influence. The old man yelled out as he walked up to Jackie and hit him on the forehead with a two-fingered strike. Uncle, Captain Black explained everything. I had no choice but to steal the snake talisman to keep it from the dark hand. Jackie explained again to Uncle. Naruto made a mental note to look up any Captain Blacks in the US government. Pueh, excuses. Uncle stated as he walked toward the front desk. Turning to look at Team Possible he yelled, buy something or get out. I'll write you a check, Naruto said to the grumbling old man. Anyway, Mr. Chan, we wanted to know exactly what you are doing with the talisman. We know that it's magic, and we know that you have two others just like it. Kim explained while going into mission mode and putting her hands on her hips. You really are like a super spy. You probably know all about Section 13. Jade exclaimed while fangirling over Kim. Section 13. Oh, please don't tell me that it's another super secret government agency. Ron asked as he cradled his head in his hands. Wait, there's more than one Jade asked with excitement. Naruto just looked at her strangely and wondered once again how much television this girl watched. Jade, don't tell strangers secrets. Jackie cried as he pulled at his hair. Look, how about we call Section 13 and let them decide? Kim replied trying to keep everyone calm. Dragging his hand down his face, Jackie just conceded to the request. It wasn't his place to talk about Section 13. He wasn't an agent after all. Section 13 1 15 p.m. Still wearing the blindfold he'd been forced to put on, Naruto crossed his arms across his chest. While he was indignant about being forced to put the blindfold on, he was amazed at how naive these agents were simply because they were teenagers. The moment he'd been forced to put on the blindfold, he had tapped his omniban twice. It was something he and Wade had come up with. If, for whatever reason, he needed to be tracked he just needed to tap the omniban twice. This would send a signal to Wade to begin tracking his location. Already, Naruto could tell they had gone in circles a few times, and it had messed with his orientation. Luckily, he knew that Wade was keeping an eye on them. Feeling the van stop, he was let out and through a few flights of stairs, until they arrived at what sounded like a giant room if the fading of voices was anything to go by. Feeling the blindfold come off, 
He had to blink a few times before his eyes adjusted. Taking in the view, Naruto was right about it being big. The underground complex stretched pretty far into the distance. Once he finished examining the complex, Naruto decided that he had to have something better. Maybe multiple hidden bases around the world. Feeling Kim trying to grab his attention, Naruto looked at where she was pointing. It was the same guy he had seen on Liberty Island. However, unlike last time, the people here seemed to give him respect. It seemed that he was the head honcho. I'm Captain Black. Jackie called me and told me that you knew about the talismans. However, the talismans are an issue of national security, and I can't divulge that information without the authorization of my superiors, Captain Black stated with professionalism. However, what caught Naruto's attention was that Captain Black had superiors. It seemed that this place didn't have the same autonomy that global justice enjoyed. Call your superiors and get permission because we aren't leaving until we know what's going on. Besides, it can't be any worse than the missile fiasco from two years ago. Naruto said with nonchalance and was glad to see the eyes of the surrounding agents widen. How do you know about that? Captain Black asked as he narrowed his eyes in suspicion. Why don't you call your superiors and find out? After all, for all I know, it might be above your pay grade, Naruto said with a smug smirk. However, the smirk was wiped off his face the moment Kim smacked the back of his head. God damn it, Kim. That hurts. Control your strength. Naruto whined as he looked at Kim with tears in his eyes. Don't be rude, Kim said towards Naruto before looking at Captain Black and smiling. Captain Black? We've been involved with national security matters before. If you could just call your superiors, I'm sure we could resolve this entire thing. Kim suggested more politely than Naruto. Smirking at seeing Naruto get hit, Captain Black figured that it wouldn't hurt to confirm their story. Walking away, he pulled out his cell phone and called speed dial 1. In the meantime, Kim began to lecture Naruto. We are trying to help, not make them kick us out. I am this close to finding the information that I need, and I have to deal with this goddamn red tape. It is infuriating. Naruto ground out while his hands were clenching the air. I understand your frustration, but you don't take it out on Mr. Clean. Kim said while not noticing the slip up. Jade covered her mouth to try and keep her laughter in, but failed as a few snorts got out anyway. Jackie could only stare in shock at the complete lack of respect these teenagers had. Uh, Kim you said Mr. Clean. Ron supplied in a whisper as he saw that Kim hadn't noticed what she said and Naruto was too busy grinning to say anything. What? No, I didn't. That's rude Ron. Kim said as she turned her glare towards Ron. Seeing that Kim wasn't going to back down from this, Ron just let it go. He wasn't going to start an argument over something so small. Seeing Captain Black coming back Team Possible focused on him, though Naruto was still rubbing the back of his head. Seeing the frown on his face, it seemed he received news he didn't like. The president has said that you are to be given security clearance to help in this matter. Captain Black stated while looking at Team Possible. Told you. Naruto said with a grin before Kim flicked his ear, holding his ear in pain. He looked at Kim with a hurt expression. She just raised an eyebrow at him, and he just crossed his arms and sulked. The Dark Hand is after the talismans for a reason unknown to us. What we do know is that they'll do anything to get them. So far, we've been lucky enough that we've been able to retrieve the talisman before them. Unfortunately, we still have nine more to find, Captain Black said as he began briefing them. So there's 12 talismans, and I'm guessing each one has its own animal. So, the one in New York was the snake. What are the other two? Naruto asked while trying to see if he could find any sort of connection. The other two we have in possession are the ox and the rooster, three of the twelve animals in the Chinese zodiac. Captain Black provided seeing that Naruto was already making some sort of connection. Hmm, twelve talismans, one for each animal. Obviously hundreds of years old and they're from China. Maybe some sort of key. Naruto thought out loud as he rubbed his chin and began to ignore everyone around him. But to what? What would require 12 talismans of the Chinese zodiac? Maybe a treasure of some sort. Seeing that Naruto was making connections that his own team hadn't, Captain Black began to rethink his opinion of the blonde punk. If they're so old and important, why aren't there records about them? Ron asked as he and Rufus kept observing the complex. That's true. But at the moment this is just conjecture. For all we know they might just be trying to sell off the 12 talismans. After all, a collection is worth far more when you have a complete set. Naruto said as he decided to put solving the talisman mystery on hold. At the moment, we're keeping tabs on the Dark Hand's movements. However, it's been thanks to Jackie's knowledge of archaeology that we've been able to find the talismans before the Dark Hand. Although, from what he's told me, 
They usually aren't far behind, Captain Black said as he explained Jackie's involvement. Ah, uh, that makes sense. An archaeologist, who also knows martial arts, that way he can defend himself if the need arises. You chose well, Naruto said as complimented Captain Black's choice in outside help. Turning to Jackie, he said, for future reference, if you're going to steal something in order to keep it safe, make sure you actually do just that. Don't go trying to stop another thief. That's the work of the police. Your job is to just keep the object in question safe. But she's a criminal I can't just let her get away with it. Jackie complained as he tried to let them see his view of things. That's true. But you need to keep the talisman safe, and unfortunately, that takes priority. After all, you don't any sort of backup like we do. Kim said as she gestured to herself, Ron and Naruto. She's right Jackie. What you need is a team. We can call it the J team. Jade said as she imagined a team of crime fighters led by her. What? No, I'm an archaeologist, not an agent. Jackie said as he shot down her idea. Oh. Jade pouted at his answer. Wasn't Indiana Jones an archaeologist? And didn't he go around saving the world? Ron said as he tried to remember the movie he saw a few years back. Hey, that's right. Jackie, you can be an archaeologist. And you can save the world too. Jade said now completely convinced that Jackie was going to one day save the world. Hearing Jackie sputtering denials, Kim spoke up. She's right. I'm a cheerleader and I go save the world on an almost monthly basis. Sometimes more. I'm a millionaire philanthropist who goes around saving the world. Naruto said as he shrugged. I may wait I don't have a thing. Ron said as he held his head with his hands. You're a regular high school student who goes around saving the world. Kim supplied quickly. So why can't you be an archaeologist who goes around saving the world? Naruto asked with a smirk taking pleasure in the stuttering of Jackie. Captain Black let out a few chuckled once he saw his friend having trouble coming up with anything. These kids were pretty funny. Well Jackie, it looks like you don't have an excuse, Captain Black said with a small grin. Jackie could only stare at everyone in shock. En route to Middleton 2.30 p.m. So, Ron what do you think about actual Mexican food? Naruto said as he flew the ship at a leisurely speed. None of them had anywhere to be, so there wasn't a rush to get home. I got to admit, this is good but it's not bueno nacho. Ron said as he finished eating his burrito. Next to him Rufus was in a food coma after eating double his body weight. Behind them, Kim was busy using her communicator. She was looking through the information that Captain Black had given them. Unfortunately, there was very little information to actually go through. There was plenty on the Dark Hands illicit activities, but none of it had to deal with the talismans. However, there was one thing that Kim noticed. The amount of money that the Dark Hand was spending was gigantic. They were looking all over the world for the talismans, and they were pretty much using all of their resources to do it. This would usually be bad for them, but with the amount of money they were spending, and at the rate it was going, the Dark Hand would be broke in a matter of months. It seemed that the talismans were more important to the Dark Hand than money. That told her that it was unlikely that the talismans were going to be sold off. More than likely, the talisman's magic was to be used to help the Dark Hand regain all of its lost capital. So far though, the magic of the talismans didn't seem all that great. Sure levitation and super strength were cool but both of those could be done through technological means. Invisibility was an interesting one, but again technology could reproduce it. Although, if you were caught unable to use your technology, the talismans would be greatly beneficial in that situation. Shutting off her communicator, Kim decided to relax. It took them months to find three talismans. It'd probably take them over a year to find the rest. San Francisco Bay Aquarium, December 1st, 2003, 4 p.m. I can't believe that another talisman was found so quickly. It took them forever to find the last one. Kim said as she walked through the aquarium towards the Galapagos Island exhibit. To be fair, no one would have found the talisman if those scientists weren't doing research in the Galapagos. Naruto said as he brought up the rear. He was taking the time to look through the exhibits that were open. It wasn't often he had the chance to actually go to an aquarium. You know. Whatever Ron was going to say next was cut off as an explosion rocked the aquarium. Feeling the building shake team possible took off into the direction of the explosion. They arrived in time to see Jackie fighting off some thugs, and quite possibly the largest person team possible had ever seen. Running towards the ledge of the exhibit, Naruto stopped and turned around. Putting his hands together and taking a knee, he boosted Kim into the air. Tucking in and rolling through the air, 
Kim landed perfectly onto the tiny island where Aesop the tortoise was. Seeing a guy using some sort of pliers to try and remove the talisman, Kim ran at him first. The guy was so absorbed in his task that he didn't notice Kim running at him. He did, however, feel it when Kim punched him in the face hard enough to not only knock him senseless, but also make him fall into the octopus pool. With that done, Kim saw Jackie get thrown into the water, turning to look at who was responsible. She was prepared to fight the sumo off when Ron landed on her. Ron, pushing him off her, she had to dive into the water to avoid being crushed by the sumo's foot. However, she did see that Jackie needed help underwater. He was being kicked around by two thugs underwater. Though her rescue attempt changed when she saw the shark coming at him, pulling out one of the many lipstick gadgets she had at her disposal. She aimed it at the shark's mouth. Shooting out the elastic, she saved Jackie from being eaten. Quickly grabbing his arm, she began to swim up to the surface. Once she broke the surface, she threw Jackie towards the island. He did not appreciate it if his scream was any indication. Though she was more concerned with Naruto fighting off three of the thugs at once, her concern disappeared when she saw him pull out his tanfa. He was dangerous when he had his weapons. However, she didn't see Ron anywhere. Turning around, she saw he had somehow managed to get the tortoise to move but she winced when she saw the sumo just fling him away like nothing. Climbing back onto the island, she ran after the sumo, but was unable to stop him from getting into a plane and taking off. Huffing at losing a talisman, she was joined by the rest of Team Possible and the Chans. Oh man, we lost it. Ron said as he crossed his arms and frowned. Don't worry about it too much, we should be able to track them. Naruto said while making his tanfa disappear. How? Jackie asked as he didn't understand how they'd do that. The three goons I just beat up. We let them go and they'll meet up with their buddies. Naruto said as he activated his Omniband's visor. Ron and Kim were used to it, but it came as a surprise to Jackie and Jade. Locating the three new signatures, Naruto was about to tell the rest of the group when he noticed that he was still tracking Jackie and Viper. I completely forgot to disable the trackers on both you and Viper, Jackie. Wait, you were tracking me? Jackie asked completely surprised. You and Viper, I thought you were criminals, so I needed a way to track you down. It's how I tracked you to that rusty bridge in New York. By the way, a rusty bridge? Really? Do you know how cliche that was? Naruto said as he looked at Jackie. Hey, I set up that meeting. Jade said indignant that Naruto was calling her idea cliche. You watch way too many movies and you stuck out like a sore thumb. Next time you do something like that. You want to be inconspicuous so that you don't draw any excess attention, and do it somewhere crowded. That way you can get lost in the crowd easily if you're screwing someone over. Naruto said seriously while Jackie began sputtering. Don't tell her how to be a better criminal. Jackie said as he saw the look of hero worship appearing on Jade's face. Naruto, I know you're having fun, but you don't teach a little girl how to be a better criminal. Kim said as she face palmed. Hey, spies do that sort of thing too. Besides, we've had to do that sort of thing. Remember, if she gets into that situation again, she better do it right to minimize risks. Also, what harm could knowing this cause? It's not like she's a super spy. She only has access to top secret military technology that she could access pretty easily. Since the agents in Section 13 don't really take kids seriously, Naruto said completely calm while looking at his nails. Though he looked at Jade quickly and winked. She got the idea and winked back. She had backup if she ever got into trouble it seemed. Jackie once again could only gape in disbelief. Anyway, I'm tracking the three goons now. I'll listen in to their conversation and let you know what I find out. Naruto said once he made his visor disappear and earphones popped out of his turtleneck. San Francisco Pier 8 p.m. They should be meeting around here. Naruto said as he spied from behind some crates. Around him, Kim, Ron, and Jackie were also hiding. They're supposed to be meeting some big shot dude around here right? You think it's Valmont? Ron asked as he peeked over the top of a crate. Nah, Valmont doesn't seem like the kind of guy to meet people at a pier. More than likely they're meeting someone else. Aesop is useless to them, so it's likely they'll be selling him off to someone. Illegal animal trafficking is a very lucrative business. Kim suggested as she moved between crates to get closer to the meeting spot. God, I just hope it's not one of those freaks who enjoys eating endangered animals. Naruto said as he expressed his disgust. Yule, can you just imagine eating a tortoise as old as Aesop? It'd be all tough and chewy? 
No thanks, Ron said completely missing the point of Naruto's displeasure. SHH, Jackie shushed team possible. He couldn't believe that these teenagers were supposed to be professionals. Calm down, they're not even here yet, Kim said as she sat down and leaned against a crate. Yeah, and just standing around being completely wound up is bad. It makes you really jumpy, Ron said as he stood up and put his hands on his hips. SHHHHH, Jackie shushed even louder. However, the sound of wood breaking behind him told him that they'd been discovered. Jumping away from the destroyed crate. He turned and saw Toro. Wait, before you attack, Naruto said getting between Jackie and Toro. How did you find out we were here? The shushing, Toru said plainly, turning to look at Jackie, Team Possible could only shake their head, though Jackie was completely shocked at being the one responsible for blowing their cover. Thank you, Kim, Naruto said as he grabbed Kim's arm and swung her at Toru. Not expecting to have a small redeeded girl thrown at him, Toru took Kim's full strength to his face. Being knocked off his feet was a very rare experience for Toru. However, being knocked off his feet by a little girl was an experience he never wanted to repeat, and yet it happened twice in a lifetime for him. It made him wonder if he was doing something wrong with his life. Crashing back onto the pier, Toru took a few moments to take in the fact that a little girl had knocked him off his feet, again. Unlike last time though. This girl didn't have the magic of the ox talisman to make her strong. This girl was just this strong naturally. That was unnerving. Getting back onto his feet, he checked his pocket and made sure the talisman was still there. It was. Looking at the group of teenagers that were fighting his cohorts, he realized that it was the same ones who butted in at the aquarium. If he remembered right, he tried to step on the redeeded one. However, he was more concerned with the blonde-haired one with marks on his face. He and Jackie were keeping his cohorts busy, while the other blonde and the redeed were trying to lure the tortoise away. He couldn't allow that. Valmont would be very displeased. Making his way towards the tortoise, he saw the blonde one take notice of him first. Kim. He yelled out alerting his friend, grabbing them both and picking them up. He made sure to keep the redeed away from his face. It hurt getting hit by her. Tossing them away, he picked up the tortoise and started walking towards the approaching yacht. He needed to do this quickly, or else those two would come back, and with his backup busy, and failing to do their job, he'd be unable to defend himself. Putting the tortoise at the bottom of the ramp to the yacht, Toru yelled, The money. Now. Seeing a briefcase opened, he saw the stacks of money and doing some quick calculations. He concluded that it was all there. Putting his hand out, the briefcase was tossed to him, grabbing it out of the air. He began to make his way to their plane. Along the way though, the redeed made an appearance again. This time though, she looked angry. Maybe throwing her into the ocean hadn't been a good idea. Seeing her run at him, he dropped the suitcase and got into his stance. But he was surprised when the girl jumped and flipped completely over him. So surprised by the jump, he was unprepared to be kicked by both her and Chan in the back. Being sent flying again, Toru wondered if all little girls were just dangerously strong. Crashing onto the pier, he heard wood groaning, and he prayed that the wood would hold. Thankfully it did. But he noticed that the talisman had slipped out of his pocket. Grabbing it, he stood up and faced the girl and Chan. Clenching his hand around the talisman he began to wonder how he'd be able to get out with both the money and the talisman, when the talisman began to glow. Looking at it in wonder, he felt a strange sensation, and deciding to see if it did anything he ran straight at Chan and the girl. He was surprised when he ran and rammed into both Chan and the girl. Seeing the surprised look on their faces, he realized that the rabbit talisman provided super speed. That's not good. With how strong he is, super speed makes him that much more dangerous. I wonder though, how's his reaction speed? Kim asked out loud once she saw the barrels of oil that were next to the plane. Looking in her direction, Jackie noticed what she was looking at and understood her plan. Seeing the glow of the talisman, Kim and Jackie grabbed a barrel each and spilled the oil onto the pier, moving out of the way. The super-fast Toru crashed into the plane and tipped it over. Looking at where she saw the talisman drop, Kim picked it up. Observing it, Kim couldn't believe that something like this was responsible for being able to make a man that large move that quickly. Putting it in her pocket, she realized that only she and Jackie were on the pier. Where's Ron and Naruto? Carl Nivers Yacht 8.30 p.m. Holding onto the outside of the yacht, Naruto could only huff in irritation. While he was busy messing around with those henchmen, Jade had managed to sneak onto the yacht, and then Ron went after her. Kim and Jackie were able to handle the big guy no problem, but now he had to rescue Jade and maybe Ron. 
Grabbing a ledge, Naruto pulled himself up and over it. Quickly running into the shadows, Naruto peeked around and saw that there wasn't anyone outside. It seemed that Niver had a skeleton crew operating his yacht. That made things easier for him. Walking through a few hallways, Naruto heard Ron yell. Running towards the sound of the voice, he stopped and took in the scene. The big cook was unconscious on the ground with Ron standing over him with his hand outstretched. It seemed that Ron had knocked him out. Nice job, Ron, Naruto said as he high-fived him. I have no idea what just happened, Ron said truthfully. However, next to him Jade had seen the entire thing. For a moment, Ron had glowed dark blue. But what was weird is that the glow Kindle looked like a monkey. Shaking off her shock she decided to hold any questions she had until later. How are we gonna get back? The yacht has a very small crew. If we're sneaky we can take them out one by one and take control of the ship. Then we just steer it back, and by the time we reach the pier, the police will be waiting to come arrest these guys. Naruto said having come up with a plan of attack. The plan was never used because a moment later Kim and Jackie appeared behind Naruto. Startled, Naruto turned around in surprise but he calmed down when he saw it was them. However, he did ask a question. How in the world did you two get here? Holding the talisman in her hand and Jackie in the other, Kim dropped Jackie and answered. Well, this little rabbit. Kim said holding up the rabbit talisman, is my lucky animal? It gives the user super speed. Eyes widening, Naruto asked. How does it affect the rest of your senses? Everything is just fine. But things kinda look like a blur. If you're not careful you could really hurt yourself if you trip. Kim said as she tossed him the talisman. Holding it, he spread some nanomachines onto the talisman. Bringing out his visor, he began to look through the magic frequencies he had registered into his omniband. Finding a similar one that wasn't registered, he isolated it and saw that it belonged solely to the rabbit talisman. Looking at the frequency through the visor let him actually see the magic of the talisman. It was an interesting sight. The talisman when not in use, had a slight glow about it. An interesting thing he saw was that the rabbit on the talisman was actually glowing with magic. However, his studying of the talisman was interrupted when Jackie took it out of his hands. Looking at his empty hand, Naruto slowly raised his head up and looked at Jackie with unsettling eyes. Magic is dangerous. You can't just play around with it, Jackie said as he pocketed the talisman. Keeping his temper under control at the moment was one of the most difficult things Naruto had ever done. He almost ended up failing if Kim hadn't put her hand in his. Grasping it, he let his anger go. Jackie was doing what he thought best. He was wrong. But Naruto couldn't fault him for it. Besides, he didn't want to rip Jackie a new one in front of Jade. She didn't need to see that kind of thing. Retracting his visor, Naruto was going to say something when he saw a shadow step out of the wall. Looking around, he saw that they were surrounded. So, the Shadokan can appear from any shadow, even those that are potentially hundreds of miles away, Naruto said rhetorically. That would be an interesting thing to study. Instantaneous travel through shadows. Obviously magic of some sort, but it just reinforced Naruto's desire to learn and harness it. Bringing out his tanfa, Naruto realized that with all of them in the kitchen, there'd be very little room to fight. Kim beat him to it however. Ron, take Jade and go. Grabbing Jade, Ron ran out of the room screaming. A few Shadokan turned to look at him, but they ignored him in favor of the one who held the talisman. Looking at the magic tracker the Shadokan were carrying, Naruto realized that he still hadn't looked at the information he got from that one. Springing into action, Naruto backhanded a Shadokan near him with his tanfa. He heard a crack, and seeing the Shadokan explode into shadow told him that they might be magic, but they were fragile just like humans. On her end, Kim was enjoying herself. The only person she could ever fight seriously was Shago, however. These Shadokan, as Naruto called them, weren't human. They were magic of some sort. If the exploding into shadow was any indication. As such, she didn't need to be careful, and she could just punch them out of existence. Meanwhile, Jackie was doing his best to keep the Shadokan from swarming him, and keeping an eye out for the children. Or at least that's what he thought before he noticed they were doing even better against the Shadokan than he was. He had noticed that they could fight quite well at the aquarium, and when they fought against the Dark Hand Enforcers, but he didn't think they were this skilled. It seemed that Jade wasn't exaggerating when she said that they did this sort of thing often. Throwing a Shadokan over his shoulder, Jackie felt one of the other ninjas trying to pickpocket him. Moving to stop him, Jackie was held in place by the other Shadokan. Feeling the talisman get taken, Jackie yelled out. They took the talisman. Turning his head, Naruto thrust his right arm in the direction of the Shadokan, 
that had the talisman. From his omniband, cables burst out and grabbed the talisman. Retracting the cables, Naruto held the talisman in his hand and realized that every Shadokan's attention was now on him. From his omniband, a metallic glove formed over his right hand, and the talisman was engulfed by the glove. Feeling that the talisman was now secure in his hand, Naruto wasn't expecting to feel the talisman activate. He felt the rush of magic spread from his hand to his shoulder, and from there it spread to the rest of his body. Reveling in it, Naruto couldn't come up with a way to explain the sensation. However, he did know that even though he wasn't moving, everything was moving slowly. It seemed the talisman put the body in a state of super speed. Walking around, he noticed that he wasn't experiencing the motion blur that Kim had. Though he wondered, had Kim activated the talisman before or after she started moving? Shaking his head he focused on the here and now, taking the Shadokan down one at a time. However, he grabbed the talisman tracker from the Shadokan that was using it and put it in his holster. It's been empty ever since he started using the Omniband. Once all of the Shadokan had been defeated, he retracted the glove and the talisman deactivated. Feeling everything return to normal, he leaned against the wall next to Kim, coughing into his hand. He ducked under the punch that Kim sent at his head. Seeing Naruto look at her with wide, Kim could only blush lightly at what she almost did. Sorry. Accepting the hand she offered, Naruto was pulled onto his feet and tossed the talisman back to Jackie. He had the information he wanted. Now, let's turn this thing back around and we can all go home. Naruto said as he crossed his arms. San Francisco Pier 10 p.m. We got the talisman and Aesop should be back in the aquarium in a bit. Overall, it was a pretty good day, Jade said as she sat on top of a crate. Next to her Jackie was leaning against the crate exhausted from the day's events. How do they still have so much energy? Jackie asked out loud as he looked at Team Possible. They were talking and joking around with no signs of exhaustion. Jackie, I told you to look at their website. If you had you'd have seen that something like this is no problem to them. They literally go around the world helping people. Jade said as she looked down at Jackie from her spot. I'll make sure to do that tomorrow Jade. Jackie conceded, as she was right. Seeing Team Possible making their way towards them, Jade jumped down from the crate. Jackie pushed himself off the crate and stood up straight. It was nice working with you Jackie. You too Jade, Kim said with a smile while shaking Jackie's hand. It was nice working with you too, and hopefully the next time we meet it'll be on better circumstances. Jackie replied with a smile. TCH don't count on it. I get the feeling that things are gonna heat up before they quite down. Jade said as she crossed her arm. You know, I get the same feeling. Ron said as he nodded with Jade. Well, if you do need help just call us. Naruto said before looking at Jade and tilting his head. Jade, do you have a cell phone? No. Jade asked unsure of where this was going. Pulling out his cell phone, he had his omniband scan it. Once it finished, he created a copy of it. However, he made sure that it didn't have any of his information. Inputting his cell phone number along with Kim's and Ron's, he handed it to Jade. Going wide-eyed at the gift, Jade just began to play with it. Seeing the look of conflict on Jackie's face, Naruto spoke up. I made my phone myself. You also don't have to worry about cell service. It uses the same network as Kim's communicator. Here Kim pulled out her communicator. The phone has service all over the world, so you can call Jade wherever she may be. Naruto said in order to placate the potential argument about giving Jade a phone without consulting Jackie. Well, considering that she's somehow been able to smuggle herself onto my trips, I don't see a problem with her having a phone. Jackie said as he accepted that the gift was given in order to help keep Jade safe. Thanks, Jade said once she finished playing with her phone. Everyone at school was gonna freak over it. Naruto's Workshop Middleton December 2, 2003-4.25 a.m. Putting the talisman tracker into the slot that appeared, Naruto activated his mainframe. Using the information he gained from the talismans he began to began to scan it. The tracker was able to locate the talismans wherever they were. This meant that its magic was attuned to those frequencies. If Naruto could figure out how to activate the tracker, he'd be able to use a satellite to track the talismans all over the world. This would speed up the search exponentially. At the same time as the scans were at work, Naruto was looking up the information he acquired from the tracker during Thanksgiving. Once again he correlated the time to the information he had and was able to find when the tracker activated. This though, made Naruto see something interesting. The tracker's magic frequency resonated with those of the talismans. Whenever it was near one, it would activate. A lot like strings on a guitar. However, the opposite was also true. When the talisman was near the tracker, 
The magic of the talisman resonated with the trackers. This meant that he would need a talisman to activate the tracker. Or maybe he didn't. All he needed to do was replicate an energy signature that would resonate with the tracker. That was simple enough. What he couldn't do was replicate the magic of the talisman. For that he would need a sample of the magic from the talisman itself. Grabbing one of his smallest infinite energy generators which was the size of a penny, he attached it to his Omniband. The Omniband changed the air around itself into energy which it then changed back into a different form of matter. However, Naruto needed to create a sustained energy frequency, and the Omniband by itself couldn't do that. His infinite energy generator could though. All he had to do was have the Omniband take the energy from the generator, and transform it into a different energy. That was much easier. Once the Omniband assimilated the generator, he had a nice glowing blue circle on the silver omniband. Connecting his omniband to the mainframe, he began to look for a frequency that would cause a reaction. Luckily, he had four sample frequencies he could use to synthesize one. It didn't actually take long before he found a frequency that reacted with the tracker. Seeing the four little dragons on the tracker light up, he looked at the information his scans were receiving in real time. Grinning, Naruto began to make plans to build the satellite he'd need. After all, he didn't want anyone intercepting his communications with it. A satellite that could only be used by Team Possible seemed like a very nice idea. December 2, 2037 AM Wade, having the Centurion Project get stuck on my wrist, was one of the greatest things to happen to me. Naruto said as he finished installing an improved shield generator onto the satellite. You know that's right? Wade said as he draw some milk. The Omniband's been able to cut down all production time to almost nothing. Naruto said as he looked over the satellite for any sort of problems. It's a pain to manufacture an Omniband without the Centurion project though. Wade said as the work for his own personal Omniband hadn't even begun yet. The machines needed to create the nanomachines were time-consuming as they needed to be able to work with incredibly small amounts of materials. There was an upside though. Wade and Naruto had been working on making the nanomachines even smaller, and they had succeeded. The only problem was that they were sure they could make them even smaller. The smaller size while nice, wouldn't be enough justification to create an upgraded Omniband, when the one that Naruto was using was doing quite well. They wanted each nanomachine to have its own infinite energy generator. This would allow it to create any type of matter infinitely. This way it could be used in places like space, which was one of their goals. They wanted a space base. They even had a new generation spacesuit they wanted to create. But it was impossible without a source of energy for the Omniband, so that it could create air, food, water, and fuel for the spacesuit. At the moment installing a generator for the Omniband solved the problem. But if the generator was destroyed, it meant that the Omniband would be without power until the generator was fixed, and taking into account how delicate the generator's inner workings were, it'd take a while. Yeah, that's true. Naruto said as he looked up at the monitor that had grown from the desk. Naruto had taken time to completely upgrade his workshop. His mainframe was now completely composed of nanomachines, as was most of his technology, but his ship wasn't. The ship was composed of materials with specific properties that allowed it to enter and exit the Earth's atmosphere, as well as fly in it. The nanomachines weren't able to replicate that just yet. You know I could give you some nanomachines, so that you can build your own Omniband. Naruto said as he looked at Wade. In return Wade's face gained a thoughtful expression. Sighing, he answered, as much as I would like to. I want to do this myself. You've helped me get this far, and I think it's time I start standing on my own. Surprised but proud, Naruto grinned. All right then, I can't wait to see what you come up with. Grinning back, Wade ended the call. Although he felt proud, he felt a bit sad that Wade had chosen to do this on his own. They hadn't had the most traditional mentor-student relationship, but it had been fun. Moving the satellite out of the workshop, Naruto decided that while he and Wade were no longer mentor and student, they were now equals. He hadn't had an intellectual equal in a long time. He couldn't wait to see what Wade came up with in the future. Prepping the satellite for launch, Naruto wondered if Wade had chosen to do this now, as he had built the perfect metaphor. Launching the satellite, he saw it take off into the sky, and before he knew it, it was gone. December 4, 2003 6 AM Looking at the map, Naruto tented his fingers together. His plan had worked out fabulously. His satellite was able to pinpoint the location of the other talismans. However, Naruto found a problem. The talismans in Section 13 were getting more powerful. It was a small increase, overall irrelevant. 
but it happened after the rabbit talisman was placed near the others. It seemed that the talismans became more powerful the closer they were in proximity to each other. That was worrying. When he had used the rabbit talisman, he could already move faster than people could react. It only made him wonder how much more powerful they'd become when all twelve were brought together. It also made him wonder if he should keep the talisman separated. Sighing, he looked at his clock. 6.05 a.m. He had to go to school today. He'd been blowing a lot of it off recently, and even though the school gave him a lot of leeway, he didn't feel right taking advantage of it. Though he didn't look forward to the swarming from other students. Now more than ever, he had wished he had gotten more classes with Kim and Ron. 7.50 a.m. I hate this so much, Naruto said as he walked through the halls of the school. Once again, he was being stared at. Yeah, but there's nothing you can do about it. Kim said as she walked next to him and looked through her backpack. Oh, there's plenty I could do about it. But most of it is illegal. Naruto said as he corrected her. That's what I meant and you know it. Kim said as she swung her backpack at him, taking the hit on his arm. He figured it was this or getting punched. He'd take the swinging backpack. I know, but can you blame me? I feel like I'm in a cage. Naruto said in a whisper, so that people around them wouldn't hear. Well, if you came to school more often they'd be over this by now. Kim rebuked as she raised an eyebrow at him. About to defend himself, the bell rang. Huffing, he went towards his class while Kim went to hers. 8.55 a.m. Please stay behind Naruto. Ms. Wisp said as Naruto tried to sneak away when the bell rang. Sighing, Naruto turned away from the door. Yes, Ms. Wisp, Naruto asked in a deadpan tone. I get the feeling you aren't being challenged here. As such I believe it'd be best if you graduated early. Ms. Wisp said as she looked at Naruto. You're right about me not being challenged. But graduating won't do anything for me either. I could pass any STEM course no problem. The other subjects would be more difficult as I never really bothered to study those to the same depth as I have with what I enjoy. Naruto said honestly. You truly believe that there's nothing any other school in the world could teach you in those fields of study? Ms. Wisp asked unable to believe her ears. Ms. Wisp, you know me as the student who gets B's in every exam he's ever taken. Did you ever stop to think why that is? If I did my best every time, I'd get bored. As such, I devise ways to make classes less boring. One of them just happens to be to have my grades average out to an 85%. It's a fun little way to kill time. Also, Yes, no other school in the world could teach me more about those fields of study, as I'm already years ahead of them with my own research. Naruto said not noticing that other students were paying attention to his conversation, or that a few students were actually recording it. That's a bit arrogant don't you think? Ms. Wisp said as she really didn't believe that he was already years ahead of everyone else on the planet. Yeah, it could be taken as arrogance but it's the truth. Look, I don't need you to believe me because I don't care. I've had people doubt my abilities all my life. All you are is another person to add to that list. Naruto said as he heard the bell ring. Looking at the time he said, and now I'm late for class. Mr. Barkin's gonna call you to confirm that you were the one who held me up. With that he left the classroom, and the students who were recording the conversation quickly stashed away their cameras. 12 p.m. Making his way to where Kim was sitting, he pulled out her lunch as well as his own. Looking around, he couldn't spot Ron. Do you know where Ron is? Looking at where she was pointing, he noticed that Ron was sitting with the seniors. That's still going on. Yeah, it's surprising. She's really in it for the long con. Kim said as she spoke of Amelia. Looking at Amelia and Ron more closely, he noticed something he never would have imagined possible. Kim, I don't think she's doing it to get near me anymore. Hmm. Why is that? Kim asked distractedly as she looked to see what Naruto made for lunch. Cause she's holding his hand under the table. Taken by surprise, Kim whipped her head over and gasped as she saw he was right. Pulling Naruto down to his seat, she whispered, What the heck is going on? Rubbing his lower back, Naruto replied, I don't know, but she seems to be enjoying herself. Who's enjoying herself? Monique asked carrying a tray of school cafeteria food. Amelia. I think she's actually enjoying Ron's company. Naruto said as he looked at them and saw the subtle clues that she was actually having fun. For real. Turning her head, Monique saw that it was indeed real. Huh. I never would have guessed. Well, now what am I gonna do with this? Naruto said as he held up Ron's lunch. Looking at Monique's tray, he quickly handed her the bag. Here you go. Taking the bag, Monique raised an eyebrow, opening it up. 
She was surprised to see actual delicious-looking food, pushing the cafeteria tray as far from herself as possible Monique dug in. However, she stopped when a thought entered her head. Boy, I haven't seen you in like a week, she said while pointing a utensil at Naruto. Thinking it over, Naruto realized she was right. He really needed to keep in touch with his friends. Sorry. I got busy and I kinda let a bunch of things slide recently. I'll try not to do that again for a while. Looking at Kim because she'd been really quiet. He saw that she was glaring at Amelia and Ron. Now why are you looking at them like that? Naruto asked as he saw that she had completely ignored both him and Monique to focus completely on the couple. I don't trust her, Kim said plainly. Now, you don't trust her because she's untrustworthy or because you're jealous? Monique asked as she continued to eat her food. First of all you. Second of all, she only started hanging out with Ron because he's friends with Naruto. With a foundation like that why would I trust her? Kim said as she looked at Monique. Alright I'll give you that one. But don't you think you should give her a chance? For all we know it may have started like that. But she might really be digging Ron. Monique said as she gave out her sagely advice. What do you think Naruto? Kim said once she heard Monique's opinion. I don't really know. On one hand, I want to distrust her because of how she and Ron got together. On the other, I want to cheer Ron on because he's possibly dating one of the most attractive girls in school. Naruto said while keeping his eyes closed and not seeing Monique and Kim share a glance. For now, I'll just stay neutral. Naruto decided before eating his own food. I guess you're both right. Doesn't mean I like it though? Kim said as she stopped staring. To San Francisco 5.30 p.m. Wait you found the other talismans? Jade asked through the ship's communication system. Yeah, we found out where they are. We're actually heading your way so that we can make a plan to retrieve them all. Kim said as she sat next to Naruto who was currently steering the ship. From time to time he liked to drive the ship himself and not rely on autopilot. How'd you find them? I just found out that Jackie located another one like five minutes ago. He went to Istanbul to get it. Jade responded. And Naruto pulled up the information from his mainframe to check and sure enough, Jackie was on a plane flying across the North Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, I can see him flying over the Atlantic. Hmm, should we stop by and grab him? Naruto asked as he looked at Kim. If we do that we'd scare a bunch of people. We should just let him arrive on his own time. Kim said as she shook her head at his idea. Fine. Anyway. We'll be in San Francisco soon and we'll meet up at your uncle's shop. I'll even buy something to keep him from trying to kick us out. Naruto said as he prepared to end the call. Cool, I'll be here. Oh wait, I have a question. Jade said and Naruto raised an eyebrow. How is it that you can just fly around like nothing? I thought after 9 11 the government would crack down on that. Jade asked as it had been bugging her since New York. Oh, that's because of the missile fiasco I mentioned before to Captain Black. What happened is that the US military was testing a new ICBM. It didn't have any explosive of any kind, but it was a kinetic warhead. Anyway, they were testing this thing out. It was supposed to land on a deserted island under US control but somehow they lost control of it when it reached suborbital spaciflight. They tried to detonate it remotely, but it failed. It was a catastrophic disaster. So, running out of options they call us. To this day I have no idea why they thought that a bunch of middle school kids would be able to do something they couldn't, but luckily we could. I had finished building the ship a few months beforehand, but I couldn't actually use it. I didn't want to register it and I didn't have a pilot's license. But when they called I told them I could redirect it back to its proper path, but I would need unrestricted airspace access. The sole fact that they gave me this special access told me that they were desperate. From there, it was simple enough to fly up, reach the missile's velocity, and turn it back around. Naruto said as he finished telling the story. No way, that really happened. Jade asked with disbelief. Hey, ask Captain Black. I'm sure he knows about it. But if his reaction from before was any indication he doesn't know the complete story. Still, it did give me the unrestricted access that I wanted. Naruto said as he leaned back and let go of the controls. Kim would have told Naruto to keep his hands on the controls if he hadn't done this before. The ship kept itself level and continued to fly as it was designed. Should it lose manual input? Oh, got to go. Uncle's ranting again. Jade said before she hung up the call. Looking at Kim, he saw her also relaxing. Looking behind, he saw Ron was still on his cell phone talking to Amelia. I can't believe that she's not just using Ron. Kim said once she noticed where he was looking. I don't know. Ron's a fun guy to be around. 
He just has a lot of issues he needs to get out of his way, many of which are the fault of his parents, Naruto said as he looked at Kim. Oh, big time. But until I actually speak to Amelia, I'm not believing it, Kim said as she crossed her arms. That's fine, just don't be hostile, Naruto said as he closed his eyes. I'm not hostile, Kim said in a hostile tone. Sure, you're not, Naruto said with a smug smile. Uncle's rare find San Francisco 4 p.m. And here we have a RAR. I'll buy it. But that's the last one, Naruto said as he bought yet another antique, so that uncle didn't kick them out. I'll ring up your total, uncle said with a smile as he wrung his hands together. That's like $20,000 right there, Jade said as she knew how much most of the antiques cost in the store. Add in how much I spent last time, and it's around $100,000 already. This place is gonna make me broke, Naruto said as he could feel his wallet get lighter just by being in the shop. Clapping her hands together, Kim grabbed everyone's attention. Anyway, here are the locations of all the talismans, Kim said as she marked the locations on the world map she had brought along. There's one right here in San Francisco. We can get that one later today. Another in Wyoming. We'll be stopping to get that one on our way back home. We found one in Ecuador. And if the location is correct, it's near the Reventator volcano. So we should be careful when we go get that one. There's one in the Netherlands and one in Bavaria, so we can get those together. The last two will be the most difficult to get to as one is in the Himalayas. The final one is located in Micronesia, but it's in the middle of the ocean. Finishing marking the last one, Kim put the cap back onto the marker. How likely is it that the bad guys know about this? Jade asked as she looked over the map. Not likely. Naruto was the one who found them and he worked on this for hours. Kim said as she pointed the marker at Naruto. So then we have a huge lead on them, Jade said with a smile. Yup. We just have to make sure that they don't get their hands on this information, Kim said as she crossed her arms. Well, to anybody looking at it it's just a map. As long as we don't put anything incriminating on the map we should be okay, or Naruto trailed off before he grabbed the marker from Kim. Writing something at the top of the map, he didn't let either of the girls see. Finishing, he pulled away and put the cap back. Places to visit. Kim asked when she read what he wrote. Oh, I get it. Even if the bad guys find the map, they'll just think it's places I want to go to. As Jackie gets called to visit archaeological sites all over the world, Jade said as she connected the dots. Bingo. Naruto said as he pointed the marker at her. No, you hang up first. No, you hang up first. Ron interrupted them suddenly as he walked into the room backwards and managed to not hit a single antique. What's up with him? Jade asked as this was weird even to her. I think he's got a girlfriend, but I'm not sure. Naruto said as he explained Ron's strange behavior. She's not his girlfriend. Kim said denying that. Uh, is she jealous? Jade asked in a stage whisper to Naruto. I don't think so. But I think she just doesn't like the fact that Ron might be separating from our group. Since we were small, it's been the three of us. Well, first it was Kim and Ron, but later on it became the three of us. Anyway, for years we've been friends together, so to have something change so suddenly makes her nervous. It's actually kinda ironic that she's the one who's so scared of change right now when it's usually Ron who freaks out. Naruto explained to Jade who nodded her head in understanding. I get? It kinda reminds me of when my parents sent me to live with Uncle and Jackie. It was scary that they were sending me away. But once I got over it, it's been a lot of fun. Could do without getting detention at school though. Jade said as told Team Possible her history. Ah detention. I get them too. But it's usually because I talk back to the teachers. What do you do? Naruto asked as he wondered why Jade was getting detention. Off to the side Kim was just observing the conversation with interest. Naruto always had trouble conversing with people, but never with children. It was interesting to see. Nothing really. I just think Ms. Hartman likes picking on me. Jade said as she crossed her arms. Humming, Naruto knew there was more to it, but he decided not to pry. Instead, he tousled her hair. Come on, let's go get the talisman that's in the city. Fixing her hair, Jade followed after him. Kim moved to follow but turned back to start dragging Ron along too. 4.35 p.m. And here is your payment. Thank you for the lamp. Naruto said as he picked up the ugly-looking porcelain lamp. But what he cared about was the fact that the rat talisman was embedded in it. Coming out of the apartment complex, Naruto spotted his friends waiting for him. It had been his idea to go in alone. Luckily all he had to ask is if they had any old antiques they'd be willing to sell. It had been a long shot, but it paid off when they showed him the lamp. The elderly couple had said they were going to put it up for auction, 
but if he could make them a deal they liked they'd be willing to sell it. It took a bit of haggling, but once Naruto was relieved of $2,500, he was one lamp richer. Got it. Naruto said as he held up the lamp with the rat talisman embedded in it. Cool. Let's test it. Jade said as she reached up to grab the talisman. Pulling the lamp away from her, Naruto said, We don't know what it does, and I really don't want to test it out in the middle of San Francisco. Seeing his point, Jade just smiled sheepishly. Hailing a cab, they all got inside it and went back toward Uncle's shop. Okay, so how are we gonna test it? Jade asked excitedly. Jackie and Uncle never wanted to test the talisman first. It was always research first. Well, we need to research what this thing is. So I'll be looking through my library for anything that resembles this. Once that's done, we'll test it in a safe location where we take proper security measures. Naruto said as he pulled the talisman out of the porcelain lamp. Oh, come on, more research. Jade pouted at finding out her hero didn't want to just test it out. Hey, I do research all the time. It's not always fun. But if we go into this half-baked we could be seriously hurt. I just want to make sure that this thing isn't going to hurt someone. Naruto said as he held up the rat talisman. Fine. Jade agreed begrudgingly. Uncle's rare finds 5 p.m. God, I hate traffic. Kim said as she stepped out of the taxi and stretched. It's 5 o'clock. That means people are getting out of work which means traffic. Jade said as she stretched as well. Ron however was sleeping in the car. He had fallen asleep the moment they hit traffic. Climbing out of his pocket, Rufus crawled up to Ron's ear and yelled into it. Wah! Ron yelled as he was scared awake. Looking around, he noticed that he was the last one in the cab. Climbing out, he stretched and walked towards Kim and Jade. What did I miss? Ron asked still half asleep. Shaking her head, Kim just opened the door for Jade and Ron to walk inside. Looking at Naruto, who was had finished paying the driver, he held the door for her to walk inside. Placing the lamp off to the side, Naruto pulled out his data pad. He'd added a camera to it once he realized that it might be faster to search for an image, when he didn't know what terms to look for. Scanning the talisman from the front and the back, his mainframe brought up an image of the rat talisman. Having the mainframe focus on translating this one book, he was soon given a roughly translated English version. The rat talisman apparently makes the inanimate animate. Hmm. I think I need to work on the translating program, Naruto said once he read the translated version. Inanimate animate. What does that mean? Jade asked not understanding such a strange phrase. I'm not sure. I think the translation is wrong, or it's using strange synonyms. Why don't we just ask uncle? Naruto suggested not liking the fact that his technology wasn't up to par for the task. He was going to need to make a better translating program. Uncle. Jade yelled without moving from her spot. Running in with a broom, Uncle looked around. What? What's wrong? We need your help. Naruto said once he saw how frazzled the yell had made the old man. Can you translate this? Showing him the page, in its original Chinese, Naruto handed his data pad to Uncle. Grabbing the data pad gingerly, Naruto could tell that he didn't understand modern technology well. He looked at the writing. Hmm. This says that the rat talisman provides motion to the motionless. Well, that's a lot better than inanimate animate, that's for sure. But it doesn't tell us much more. Kim said as she saw the face that Naruto made. Patting his shoulder, she was rewarded with a small smile. Glad that he wasn't taking it personal, she focused on uncle, who was rubbing his chin as he regarded the rat talisman. The book goes on to say that anything animated by the talisman, will have all of the attributes that it was based upon. Anything it was based upon? That kinda sounds like a statue, doesn't it? Ron said as he rubbed his chin. The clumsy one is right. Statues were often made in the form of creatures. As such, if the rat talisman provides motion to the motionless, it means that it can bring to life things such as statues. It could be very dangerous if misused. Uncle said as he put the rat talisman on the desk they were using. You know, as much as I would love to see this thing in action. I think it'd be best to just put this one away in section 13. Naruto said as he looked at the talisman. He desperately wanted to study it. But he knew that something like this shouldn't be left out in the open where it could be stolen. Oh, where's your sense of adventure? Jade said as she looked at Naruto. Sighing, Naruto said. Believe me, I want to see this thing in action. And see how alive it can make something. But if we're not careful it might bring something to life that could cause a lot of damage. We can't take that chance just to see how cool it might be. Seeing his point, Jade relented, but she didn't have to like it. Come on, let's call a Section 13 transport. Kim said as she saw that everyone was in agreement. Section 13 5.30 p.m. Just a few days ago you three helped Jackie find one of these, 
And now you went and found one by yourselves. Exactly how did you find it? Captain Black questioned as he looked at the talisman that was given to him. That'd be telling. Sorry. Naruto said as he smirked and put his hands in his pockets. Once again the blonde punk, as Captain Black began to think of him, irked him. It wasn't malicious. He could tell when someone was being malicious. But it did get on his nerves, right? I'll go put this in the vault. Jade, it's getting late. So I'll have a transport ready to take you back to your uncle's. Captain Black said and he departed once he saw Jade nod her head. We should probably head back to if we don't want to get home too late. Kim said as she knew Middleton was two hours ahead of San Francisco. Yeah, and we still need to get the other one in Wyoming. Naruto said as he pulled out his data pad and checked to make sure that the talisman was still in its previous location. We'll be back tomorrow with the other talisman, and hopefully so will Jackie. Kim said to Jade as they left. You know, with everything going on with the talismans I'm thinking about buying a home here. Naruto said as they exited section 13 via the stairs. You really think we'll need to be here that often? Kim asked as they walked down the street away from the secret entrance. Didn't want anyone finding it after all? I don't know if we'll need to be here that often. But I think we could do with a safe house. We did say we can do anything. And I think it's only a matter of time before we're asked to keep someone safe. It pays to think ahead, Naruto said with a smile. That's true. But I don't know if we should just use it as a safe house. Kim said as she crossed her arms and thought about it. What about a vacation safe house? Ron asked as he began to rub his stomach in hunger. That would work. Though, I'm worried about earthquakes. California is known as earthquake country for a reason, and I really don't want to be here for an earthquake. Naruto said as they finally arrived at an intersection where he could call the ship. Well, it's your money. If you want to get a house here, I'm with you. Kim said as the ship lowered cables for them to grab. Around them a few pedestrians could only gawk at the ship that appeared in the sky. Wyoming 8 p.m. Letting go of the cable Kim stepped onto the ground. Looking around, she could see nothing but dirt. Pulling out her communicator, she pulled up the GPS location of the talisman. Turning around, it kept telling her the same thing. She was on top of it. Hey guys! Kim yelled upwards towards the ship. Seeing Ron and Naruto peek their heads over, she said, It's right underneath us. We're gonna need to dig it out. Grabbing another cable. Both Naruto and Ron dropped down to the ground. Bringing out his visualizer, Naruto looked and around, and confirmed what Kim had said. Well, I can see the talisman, but it's buried pretty deep. Naruto said as he crouched down and looked at the source of magic he could see. How deep? Ron asked as he held his stomach in hunger. On his shoulder Rufus did the same. Pretty deep, and this is tightly packed earth. It's gonna take a while to dig through all of this. Even if I use my Omniband, Naruto said as he began to send nanomachines to dig up the talisman. Well, hurry if you can. Rufus and I are starving. Ron said as he clutched his stomach tighter. We did forget to eat, didn't we? Naruto said as he held his own stomach in hunger. And we forgot to stock the ship up too. Kim said as she held her own stomach. The ship was usually stocked with dry food for times like these. But they had forgotten to restock it. Hopefully we can get back before Bueno Nacho closes. Naruto said as he observed the digging process, and estimated the amount of time it'd take to reach the talisman, and get back to Middleton. It'd be cutting it close. Middleton, 9.55pm. Stuffing an entire burrito into his mouth, Ron ate it in a single bite. Usually Naruto or Kim would chastise him for it. But at the moment they were just as bad as him. Rufus was allowed to get away with it because he was a naked mole rat. Grabbing a handful of nachos, Naruto stuffed them into his mouth, and then took a large gulp of his soda. Next to him, Kim was only just a bit more civilized. She used a fork to hold up her food as she bit into it. The late-night patrons could only stare at the teens as they absolutely devoured all of the food in front of them. They were used to seeing teenagers eat large amounts of food no problem, but never at the pace these three teenagers were setting. Grabbing a Nako, Naruto stuffed it into his mouth. It was tough to chew with so much food, but he managed. Leaning back into his seat, he began to drink from his soda, looking at Ron, who had just finished eating, and then to Kim, who was just finishing the last bit of her food, and finally to Rufus who had just eaten his way out of a burrito, and then to the table that was absolutely loaded with the remains of food wrappers. He figured that today was a good today. Possible home middle of the night. Waking up Kim grabbed Naruto's hand, feeling it grab her own. She was able to calm down from the nightmare. It happened again. Nodding to his question, Kim didn't mind when he turned her over, 
so that she rested on his chest. Hearing his heart beating steadily, Kim smiled. Want to talk about it? It's always the same thing I remember you covered in that armor, and you're just coughing up blood. The doctors can't operate until the armor is taken off, but it's too durable to cut off. It's not until I try and tell the armor to deactivate that it does, and then I see the state that your chest is in. Taking in a shuddering breath, Kim was glad that Naruto was rubbing her back. Your breathing is all wrong, and it's not until they put that tub down your throat that you start breathing well. Then they take you into the operating room for a few hours. It's not the fact that you were injured that bothers me. It's the fact that you almost died, Kim said as she once again analyzed her dream out loud to him. Moving his hand from her back, Naruto ran his fingers through her hair. That was a freak accident neither one of yous could have foreseen. I didn't know that Shago would have reacted that badly to having someone replicate her powers. Naruto said as he continued his ministrations. And I couldn't have known that she would be that much more dangerous when she wasn't conserving her plasma. It just got so out of hand so quickly. I hated the fact that I couldn't do anything. Her plasma was eating away at your armor, and if I tried getting into the fight, I would have just been a liability. I really hope that Project Uber is completed soon. Kim said as she looked at Naruto. We're pretty close, but we still need a vital component. Naruto said as he shook his head. We want your battle suit to be flexible as well have the ability to heal itself, so that you can use your abilities to the fullest, and unfortunately, we don't have anything like that. Naruto said as he continued running his hand through her hair. Feeling her eyes close, Kim said. Well, you'll get it eventually. You always do. With that Kim fell back to sleep. This time no nightmare would wake her. Feeling himself falling back to sleep, he wondered if he should move Kim, but decided it was too much work at the moment. December 5th, 2003 6 a.m. Taking a picture with her camera, and closed the door gently behind her. It wasn't often that she was able to sneak up on Naruto when he was asleep, so he was either very tired, or he was in a very heavy sleep. Either way, it's adorable. Anne thought as she knew that this photo was going to go into a certain scrapbook of hers. 3.30 p.m. Go Ron, go Ron, go, go, go Ron. Naruto chanted after he saw Ron and Amelia. SHH. Ron said trying to shush Naruto and looking around to make sure no one heard him. Seeing no one near, he relaxed. How much did you see? Ron asked seriously. However, Naruto could only grin in excitement. You mean you and Amelia smackin' lips, Naruto said with a shit-eating grin. Quickly putting Ron into a headlock, he said, Why are you hiding it? I thought you wanted to be popular. Dating Amelia is the perfect gateway in. Keyword being was, Look Amelia and I, we're not really sure what we are, and I don't want to drag her down, if people find out we're dating. Ron said as he removed himself from the headlock. Oh, I see. She's scared about how people are going to react, and you're freaking out because you think she's out of your league, Naruto said and Rufus, who had climbed out of Ron's pocket and perched himself on Naruto's shoulder. Nodded along. All of this out of my league crap is stupid. Right, Rufus? Naruto asked looking at Rufus. Ah. Uh... Huh. It's obvious you both like each other. Hiding it isn't going to do any good for either of you. If anything it's going to make things worse. Naruto said as Rufus nodded along. Yeah, but I don't want her getting hurt. I know I'm not the most popular guy in school. And I don't want her to suffer because of me. Ron said while pointing at himself. Rufus just sighed as he shook his head. Ron, I hate sounding like this. But if she can't handle a few insults being thrown her way about her choice and boyfriend then it might be better if you weren't dating her. Naruto said while grimacing. Yeah, but what if she listens to them and she breaks up with me because of them? Ron asked as he pulled at his hair. I had completely forgotten how insecure you were about relationships. Naruto murmured to himself just loud enough for Rufus to hear. Look, like I just said, if she breaks up with you because of what people say then you shouldn't be dating. But if she can weather through that, and you can learn to get over your own insecurities, Naruto said as he poked Ron in the chest. I don't see why it couldn't work. Of course, that's not taking into account on whether or not you're actually a good matchup, but everyone's different so who knows. Naruto said as he shrugged his shoulders at the end. Calming down after hearing Naruto break it down for him, Ron took a deep breath, letting it go. He was back to his usual self. Thanks for that. But the reason we haven't actually told anyone anything, and we're keeping up the cover of her using me, is that we actually have no idea how we got together. Ron admitted as he put his hands in his pockets. Jumping from Naruto's shoulder to Ron's Rufus patted Ron's cheek. Smiling at the gestured, Ron felt a bit better. 
What do you mean you have no idea? Naruto asked not understanding how two people didn't know how they got together. It's just that a few weeks ago, she was using me to get to you, and then about a week later she and I were kissing. It's just all kinds of weird. Ron said as she scratched the back of his head. Okay, so what you're saying is that during that week you two went from using each other for mutual benefit to being in a relationship. Naruto asked as he tried to piece together the timeline. Yes, Ron said as he nodded his head. Well, what happened during that week? Naruto asked as he was still confused by what Ron meant. Hmm, well I asked her how she was, she told me her parents were telling her to find a good man to marry, I told her that was stupid, she agreed, I told her she already had a good man, she laughed, I didn't get the joke, and then we talked about our home lives, Ron said as he explained the events of that one particular week. Well, it looks like we found out when you two became a couple, when you made her laugh. Naruto said as he figured out what happened. Really? But I do that all the time. Ron asked not understanding how that got him a girlfriend. Ron, people like to laugh. It makes them feel better. Amelia probably has a lot of problems at home if what her parents said is any indication and you being able to make her laugh about those problems is probably cathartic for her. From there it was a simple transition from friend to boyfriend. Naruto said as he crossed his arms and nodded. However, he then realized something. Well, that means that you went from being her friend to being her boyfriend in about a week. Congratulations you stud. Naruto said as he elbowed Ron a bit. Really, because it feels a lot like I'm just her friend. Except you know. I get to kiss her and stuff, Ron said as he trailed off. Raising an eyebrow at stuff Naruto said, Well, wouldn't you want your girlfriend to be your friend? Opening his mouth to say something, Ron couldn't come up with anything. Rufus closed his mouth for him to keep flies from getting in. So, when you telling Kim? Naruto asked as he saw Kim finally get out of cheer practice. I think I'm gonna hold off on that. I don't want Kim to think that Amelia is just using me, you know. Ron said as he looked towards the approaching Kim. Ready to go deliver the talisman. Kim asked as she reached Naruto and Ron. Section 13 San Francisco 2 p.m. And you brought another one? Captain Black said once he saw the tiger talisman in Team Possible's hands. Was there any doubt? Kim asked feeling smug. Opening his mouth and having nothing come out. Captain Black just took the talisman and went to secure it in the vault. Well, that's another one down. Let's go check on Jackie and see if he's done with his. Naruto said as he began to walk out of section 13. Uncle's rare finds 2.15 p.m. Wait, so Jackie isn't back yet? Naruto asked while bracing himself on the counter. No, but why don't you buy some antiques? I have plenty of antiques you have yet to see. Uncle said while rubbing his hands together. Backing up. Naruto said, no thanks, I already bought a bunch of antiques, I don't need any more. Walking outside the shop, Naruto saw that Kim and Ron were both leaning against the building. He's not here yet. Well, we did arrive a bit early, Kim said checking the time on her communicator. Yeah and now I'm bored, Ron said as he banged his head against the wall. Well, we have some time to kill, Naruto said as he didn't want to wait inside the shop. He had spent enough money there. Why don't we have some fun? Kim suggested as she put her hands on her hips. Nodding to her suggestion, Naruto began to look for places to have fun. Embarcadero Center 3 p.m. Sighing, Naruto wondered why he thought it was a good idea to bring Kim to a club banana in a different city. She was currently looking through the different selections they had here that she couldn't find in Middleton. Looking around, he saw Ron was on the phone with Amelia. He was apparently going to buy her a gift. Turning to look at Kim, he saw that she was currently modeling a blue hoodie she found. It looked good on her, but she hadn't asked for his opinion yet. Then again, she probably knew what he'd say. How does it look? Kim asked suddenly making Naruto turn to look at her. It looks good. I like how it goes well with your eyes. Naruto said as he looked her over. Turning around to look in the mirror, Kim noticed that he was right. Oh by the way, have you seen the video they posted about you online? Kim asked as she remembered seeing it. What video? Naruto asked as he didn't really keep up with news about himself. It was during one of your classes. You were talking with Ms. Wisp about how your research is years ahead of everyone's. Kim said as she looked around for more stuff to model. Oh yeah, that was yesterday. Didn't know that anyone was recording it. Naruto said as he carried Kim's white jacket. Even after all of these missions, the jacket was holding up very well. Yeah, you should have seen the comments people were leaving. A lot of them were calling you arrogant for thinking that. Kim said from inside the changing room. 
Yeah, I don't blame them. It does sound arrogant since it's been a while since we've released any new items into the market. Naruto said as he remembered it had been about a year since they released anything new. Aren't you working on something big right now? Kim asked as she had seen plans and schematics whenever she was at his house. I'm always working on something big. But yeah, I'm working on something big for hospitals. I've got most of it figured out. But I just got to figure out a small issue. After that it should be released to the open market soon. Naruto said as he got another piece of clothing thrown at him. What's it going to revolutionize this time? Kim asked playfully. The medical field. Naruto said as a dress fell over his head. I was kidding. Kim said as she peeked over the top of the door. Well, I'm not. Naruto said with a grin once he took the dress off his head. Then I can't wait to see what it is. Kim said before going back to changing clothes. Do you think Amelia is going to like purple or blue? Ron asked suddenly from behind Naruto. Turning around, he saw that Ron was holding up two bikinis. Ron, do you think that's a good idea? Naruto asked not sure if Ron was actually sure about what he was asking. Yeah, Amelia asked me to pick one up for her, but I couldn't decide between purple or blue. Ron said looking at both. Oh, um, I guess the purple one. Naruto said not sure anymore if he understood the complex relationship between Ron and Amelia. Thanks, Ron said before going to the checkout stand. Still looking at him, Naruto was startled when Kim grabbed her items from his arms. Looking at him with a raised eyebrow she asked, What's up with you? Uh, I don't think I understand Ron and Amelia's relationship anymore. Naruto said truthfully. That's because there's no relationship. She's using him and no matter what we say, he won't listen. Kim said with a frown. Remember what he saw earlier in the day? Naruto didn't say anything. Uncle's rare finds 4.30 p.m. Getting out of the cab, Kim and Ron grabbed all of the bags they had placed in the trunk. Naruto was paying for their ride. Looking at the pile of stuff they bought, Naruto decided to call the ship and store it all there. They didn't want Uncle getting mad at them for crowding his shop after all. Waiting for the ship to arrive Team Possible saw a white car pull up in front of the shop. From the car stepped out two men. One wore a white suit, and the other wore a black suit. However, Naruto was interested in the fact that he recognized them. Alerting Kim and Ron, they stood by and listened in to their conversation. Finn, we don't even know if they have the talisman anymore. They probably already put it in section 13. The black-suited man said as he turned to his partner. Ratso, if we don't get that talisman. Big V might decide to take care of us, Finn said to Ratso while using drawing his finger across his neck to signify what he meant. Looking at Naruto and Ron, Kim saw them nodding, getting a boost from Naruto. Kim climbed on top of the roof, and she could look down at the enforcers. Looking at the corner, she saw Naruto counting down with his fingers. When he reached zero, Kim jumped down in front of the two. Hello boys, mind telling me where I can find your boss? Turning to look at the voice, Finn and Ratso saw that it was the teenager that interrupted them last time at the aquarium. Look girl, get out of the way or suffer the consequences, Finn said while reaching into his jacket. However, he was kicked in the back towards Kim, and she kicked him hard enough that he was knocked into and over the car, looking at the guy who hit Finn. Ratso was unprepared to meet a chop to his face courtesy of Ron. Once again unnoticed by everyone, Ron's hand glowed blue for an instant, lifting himself up. Naruto peeked over the top of the car and saw that Finn was unconscious. Apparently, Kim had taken enough offense to leave a nice shoe print on Finn's face. I don't get how Jackie has trouble with these guys. Ron said while dusting his hands off. I think it's because he doesn't have backup. Jade was right. He needs a team. Kim said as she put her hands on her hips. Wrapping Finn and Ratso up in rope, Naruto searched them and took out anything that they might use to escape. This included a gun, a high-energy sword. A butterfly knife, Naruto made a note to get one himself, a lock picking set, a bobby pin, and a small explosive, Naruto disarmed it. Looking through Finn's jacket pocket he found a phone. Looking it over, he saw that it was a pretty advanced phone. He was sure that Captain Black would be very interested in this. Right Naruto? Kim asked Naruto, but he was still engrossed in looking through the stuff he confiscated. Nudging him with her foot, he finally turned towards her. What happened? Naruto asked not sure why Kim was nudging him. That Jackie needs a team. Kim said once again. Now sure that he was paying attention. Oh big time. He can only do so much. But the problem is that he won't accept it. You saw how he reacted when he found out we were going to help him. It was only after he found out how well we worked together that he finally gave in. Naruto said as he began to ring up Captain Black. However, even if he had a team, 
They wouldn't have the synergy that we do. We've been together for years, and we have absolute trust in each other. That's not gonna happen if we just put together random people that Jackie knows. It'd probably be a complete disaster, Naruto said as he waited for anyone to pick up at section 13. Well duh. I'm just saying that he needs a team. He needs to go and make it himself. Kim said as the ship arrived above them. Hmm. No one's picking up at section 13. Naruto said looking at his cell phone. Before we do anything, can we put our stuff away first? Ron said as he gestured to the bags around them. Nodding at Ron, Kim and Naruto began to put their purchases away in the ship. Ron kept an eye on the enforcers. 4.45 p.m. Why haven't you put the talisman in section 13 yet? Kim asked not believing that they hadn't secured the talisman yet. We need to study the talisman to find out what magic it possesses. Jackie said while yawning. Looking at him, Team Possible could tell that he was exhausted. You can do research after it's been secured. It's just you, Uncle, and Jade here. You can't keep them and the talisman safe with how exhausted you are. Kim said while staring down the sleepy Jackie. Jade told me yesterday that you four researched the talisman before putting it in section 13. Jackie countered while trying to keep his eyes open. There were three of us here to keep everyone safe, and the Dark Hand didn't know we had the talisman. We could afford to do that. You can't. Now, I'm going to grab the talisman, and we're going to take it to section 13. If Uncle wants to research it, he can take a picture, Kim said as she marched into the back. Looking around she spotted the box the talisman was supposed to be in. Opening it up, she saw that it was empty. Thinking about who could have taken the talisman, she instantly zeroed in on the one person they hadn't seen yet. I think Jade took the talisman for a little joy ride, Kim said as she leaned against the doorframe going into the store. I'll go get it, Jackie said as he sighed and dragged himself up the stairs. Following after him, Kim didn't trust him to stay awake. Arriving at the attic, they saw Jade asleep on one of the recliners. In her hand they saw the talisman. Grabbing it, Jackie handed it over to Kim. I think I'm going to sleep here a bit. You can take the talisman to section 13. Nodding at his request, Kim went down the stairs and out the door where Naruto was on the phone. And Ron was still keeping an eye on the enforcers who had woken up. Get here in the next five minutes. Naruto yelled into the phone before hung up. You okay? Kim asked not sure what was happening. Looking at Kim, Naruto put away his phone. Yeah, it's just that section 13 wasn't taking my calls until a minute ago. Apparently, they don't trust my phone to have a secure connection. So I forced them to take my call, and they weren't happy with what I did. Anyway, they're sending a transport to pick us and these guys up. Naruto said gesturing to the enforcers. Ah, well I have the talisman. Kim said holding the talisman up. Huh, told you they still had the talisman here. Finn said suddenly to Ratso. Yeah, lot of good that's gonna do for us in the Husago. Ratso said sullenly. Oh calm down. If you rat on Valmont they'll probably cut your time down. Of course, it all depends on what you're charged with and what they can get you on. Naruto said while looking at them. Hey, we wouldn't rat on Big V. Finn said while glaring at Naruto. Why not? What has he done for you? Naruto said trying to see how deep their loyalty was. It's not what he's done for us. It's what he would have done to us. Ratso said while looking at Team Possible. How old are you three anyway? Finn asked trying to steer the conversation away from what might happen to them in prison. We just entered high school a few months ago. Kim said seeing no harm in telling them that. Are you some kind of government super soldier? Finn asked out of the blue. No. Why would you ask that? Kim questioned surprised that anyone would ask her that. Cause you hit harder than Chan does. And this bruise on my face is not gonna go away anytime soon. Finn said while trying to gesture to the shoe print on his face which was steadily purpling. Ah, yeah Kim's stronger than most people. I've actually seen her punch a hole through steel before. Naruto said recalling that particular day. That was a thin sheet of metal. A hammer would have made a hole through it. Kim said knowing what he was referring to. Okay. Then how about the time that you punched an elevator button, and you dented the frame? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. I didn't punch any elevator buttons. Kim said frowning and trying to recall that incident. Wait I remember that. Yeah, we were in Draken's Lair. You two had just gotten your brain switched. And when we made a break for the elevator, Naruto punched a button, but it dented the entire thing. Ron cut in with information about the situation. That doesn't count. We had just switched bodies. Kim said waving away that incident due to circumstances. 
Brain switching. Who are you people? Ratso asked not believing what he was hearing. We're team possible. Look us up online. Kim said as she saw the Section 13 transport arrive. Now let's go. Unless you want me to drag you. Section 13 5.05 p.m. Another talisman and we have two of the Dark Hands enforcers. Have you ever thought about becoming agents when you're older? Captain Black asked as he swiped his security card through the scanner. Thanks, but we've got bigger plans. Kim said as Team Possible was led towards the vault. How much bigger? Captain Black asked as he put in his code to the vault door. That'd be telling. Naruto said with a smirk. Opening the vault door, Captain Black approached the control panel that managed the vault's defenses. Turning those off, the glass case was lifted, and the talismans inside were exposed. Interesting defense system. These things are sensors, right? I'm guessing you have some sort of weaponry hidden here, so that it attacks when they step on it, right? Naruto said as he crouched down to look at the sensors on the floor. Yeah, you've worked with something similar. Captain Black said as he was surprised at how easily the defense system was figured out. Yup. But I decided not to use it. It had too many security flaws. Naruto said as he pushed himself back up. Well, I can tell you right now, that you've never worked with anything like this. Section 13 is impenetrable. Captain Black said with a smirk. Humoring him, Naruto decided not to say anything. He was sure that Captain Black tolerated him quite a bit less than Ron and Kim. Pulling the talisman out of her pocket, Kim attached it to the conical structure where the rest of the talismans were held. Looking at them Kim could see that they still had five more to find. More than halfway there, Kim said as she observed the talismans. What are you planning to do with them once everything with the dark hand is over with? Kim asked as she knew that the talismans were dangerous if misused. More than likely. They'll be donated to a museum. We'll need to craft a story about Jackie finding them somewhere in China. Captain Black said as he re-engaged the security system. Well, that's better than just leaving them here to rot for no reason. Naruto said as he started thinking up a few ideas on how to get the talismans away from Section 13. Dangerous or not, Naruto was not going to let magic slip from his fingers. Even if he had to steal them, he'd get them. Though, he really wished he wouldn't have to steal them. That'd make things more difficult, and he was sure that Kim would make him feel guilty about it. Dark Hand Headquarters 5.10 p.m. Are you telling me that Finn and Ratso have been arrested by Section 13? Valmont asked while looking at his view phone. Yes, Master. Chow saw them being loaded into one of their vehicles. Unfortunately, he lost the vehicle in traffic. Toru said as he held Chow to keep him from running away in case Valmont wanted to punish him in some way. Hmm. This may be to our advantage, Valmont said before ending the call. How is having two of your lackeys imprisoned to our advantage? Shendu asked as his eyes glowed red. My enforcers have been arrested before and as a precaution, I've had them microchipped. Valmont said before activating the computer on his desk. Within moments a map appeared on the screen, and it shifted until a glowing red dot was in the middle of the map. As of now, we have the exact location of Section 13. Valmont said with a grin. Impressive Valmont. From now on, let Chan obtain the talismans. When the final talisman has been acquired, we shall launch a full-scaled assault on Section 13, Shendu said with a voice that was filled with malice. Possible home December 6, 2003 8 a.m. Thanks for the food, Anne. Naruto said as he ate the pancakes that Anne made. He had awoken early because he had smelled pancakes cooking. Oh, it's no problem, Naruto. I don't often get to make breakfast so I take whatever chance I get to do so. Anne said as she held her cup of coffee and sat across from Naruto. Well, I'm glad you got the chance today. I absolutely enjoy your cooking, Naruto said as he took a bite of the pancakes. Thank you, Naruto. Anne said as she sipped from her coffee. I still find it strange that Kimi can do so many things, but give her a few kitchen appliances, and it's a disaster. Anne said as she chuckled in remembrance of Kim trying to use the appliances in the kitchen. I think it's just a mental block. Like what she has for her singing, Naruto said as he pointed his fork at Anne. It's been so long since we've heard her sing. I wish she'd sing for us, Anne said as she smiled sadly. How do you feel about Karaik? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. Realizing his plan, Anne got a smile on her face. Oh, Kim was going to hate this. Middleton Mall 11 AM. Kim, we have more important things to do than going to the mall, Naruto said as he tried to pry his arm free from Kim's grip. I've let you wear those raggedy clothes long enough. You need a wardrobe change. Kim said as she dragged him around. Kim, I just have a bunch of the same outfit. Naruto said as he tried to get out of the shopping trip. 
Are you telling me you have a bunch of the same orange shirts and cargo pants? Kim said as she looked at him. Yes, Naruto said without missing a beat. You need to diversify, Kim said before she dragged him some more. Behind them Ron walked with his hands behind his head. He was enjoying watching them squabble. Federal Penitentiary 11.30 a.m. Shago, I have to ask, why haven't you broken out yet? Viper asked as she moved her pawn. I'm sorry, what? Shago asked offhandedly as she focused completely on the game. This would be their 20th game, and she had yet to win once. You've been here for over a month. I thought you would have broken out by now. Viper said as she saw Shago was now actually paying attention. Prison is a very different thing for both of us. To you it's a punishment. To me it's a small little vacation. I have no worries and I can just relax. Plus if any bitches here get lippy. I can let out a little aggression, Shago said with a smirk that made Viper realize that she was happy to be on her good side. So you're staying here as a vacation? That's kinda weird, Viper said honestly. She wasn't worried that Shago would do anything. After all Shago had over a month to do something. Yeah, I'd rather have stayed at a beachside resort. But then I'd have to worry about attracting the wrong kind of attention. You know, instead of the right kind. Shago said with a lecherous grin while wiggling her eyebrows. Grinning, Viper put Shago in check. Check. Looking at the board, she saw that Viper was right. Growling, she tried to find a way to win. How long are you planning to stay? I'd hate having to deal with another roommate. Viper said as she saw Shago struggling on what to do. I'm busting out before Christmas so you'll be getting another roommate anyway, Shago said before moving her king. Well that's unfortunate, I still have a few more years here even with good behavior, Viper said as she put the king in check once more. You should have just left the city once you had the puma, Shago said as she held her chin. I got greedy, Viper said as she shrugged her shoulders. I learned my lesson though, getting busted by some kid really makes you reevaluate your life, Viper said as she remembered the events leading to her arrest. I hear you. That Naruto gets around, Shago stated as she gave up. There wasn't anything else she could do. It's still weird to find out that he's so famous though, and Rich. Viper said as she started setting the board up again. Don't remind me. Did you know that he visited me before my trial? He thought I was propositioning him, Shago said as she moved her black pawn. He's a millionaire teenager. Of course he's gonna have an ego, Viper, said matter of fact. I don't care about that, Shago replied as she saw the move that Viper started with. What I care about is that he's rich. If I had known that, I would have just gone along with it. Isn't he like 10 years younger than you? Viper asked surprised with Shago's admission. Hey, he's 15. I'm 23. We could have made it work and I'd be rich, Shago said as she slammed her fist on the game board, breaking it in half. You're telling the warden, Viper said with deadpan. Revented her Ecuador 3.06 p.m. Why are we the ones who are digging this talisman up? It's the most dangerous location, Ron said as he walked ahead of Kim and Naruto. We lost the coin flip, Kim said as she carried the pickaxe. And can anyone tell me why we can't just dig it up like we did with the tiger talisman? Ron asked as he looked back at Naruto. That's our plan. But it might be too hot for the nanomachines. It depends on how deep underground the talisman is. Naruto said as he carried the rope they might need. So if all goes well, we don't even have to go underground. Booyah. Ron said as he pumped his fist. On top of his head, Rufus pumped his paw. But it was half-heartedly. The humidity was affecting him a bit more than team possible. Wow, the talisman is right at the base of the volcano. Kim said as she tracked their progress with the communicator. Yeah, that makes things more dangerous, Naruto said as they arrived at the spot the communicator led them to. Activating his visor, Naruto looked for the talisman underground. Finding it, he noticed that the talisman was embedded in the wall of a cavern. This might be easier than we thought. Seeing the questioning looks he elaborated, there's an underground cavern. The talisman is embedded in one of the walls. We won't need to dig too much, just enough to reach the cavern, and then hope we don't damage any of the walls. Putting the rope on the ground, Naruto placed his hand on the ground, and had some nanomachines begin making a hole into the cavern. It was slow going as Naruto didn't want to accidentally cave the cavern in. I can't believe I brought this thing for nothing, Kim said as she held the pickaxe in front of her. Hey, you never know KP, we might need it, Ron said as he fanned Rufus. Hey, I brought the rope, it weighs like 30 pounds, Naruto complained as he pointed towards the rope. I've seen you carry heavier stuff, Kim said waving away his complaint. So, it's still heavy, Naruto shot back. Looking at the hole in the ground, 
Kim saw that it was now large enough for someone to climb through. Putting her head over the hole, Kim had to pull back when she felt the wave of heat come up. It seemed that Naruto was right about the danger. Okay, I'll go in. Naruto, Ron, you two hold the rope. Kim said as she picked the rope up and handed it to them. Here, take these with you. Naruto said as he pulled off his visor and handed it to Kim. That way you can have your hands free. Thanks, Kim said as she put the visor on. Taken aback by the information the visor was presenting, she was disoriented for a moment. Closing her eyes and focusing, she began to take the information a little at a time. The visor told her about the many types of vegetation and flora around her, along with the temperature and humidity around them. It also had a little indicator for where the talisman was, and how far away it was in meters. It was kinda like playing a video game. Looking at Naruto and Ron, she noticed that some information popped up about them. It told her their names, that they were students, and that they were part of Team Possible. I want one of these. You'll get them when I finish your Omniband, Naruto said as Kim began to propel down into the cavern. Hey, when are we getting them anyway? Ron asked as he fed the rope into the hole. The problem isn't that I can't make more. It's that I want to personalize them. Kim is very acrobatic, and I want her Omniband to supplement that. Naruto said as he held the remainder of the rope in his hands. But aren't your cables already really maneuverable? Ron said as he put his hands on his hips. Kim had already reached the bottom of the cavern. Yeah, but they aren't fast enough. If it's in a straight line the cables can reach it quickly. But if they have to make a turn they slow down. For most people that wouldn't really matter. But Kim fights Shago often, and if Kim can dodge them, so will Shago. Naruto said as he had some cables come out of the Omniband. Hey, I need the pickaxe. Kim yelled out from the cavern. Sending some cables at the pickaxe, Naruto picked it up and lowered it into the hole. Thank you. So how are you gonna personalize mine? Ron asked as he handed his water bottle to Rufus. The poor naked mole rat was suffering. Yours is tricky. I could hand you one just like mine, and you'd use it well. But I want it to be able to channel your mystical monkey powers. Naruto said as Ron looked at him in surprise. You can do that. Ron asked in shock. He didn't know what Naruto had learned about magic. I don't see why I couldn't. Magic is energy just like electricity is. In theory it should work. The problem is actually figuring out how to draw it out. If you ever learn how to summon it on command, I should be able to figure out how to connect your Omniband with it. I don't know what kinds of effects it'll have but it'd be interesting to find out. Naruto said as he shrugged, I'll probably just hand you both an Omniband soon, so that you can at least get familiar with it. Naruto said as he looked up and considered the idea. Can you give one to Rufus? Ron asked as he pointed to Rufus. He was looking better after drinking some water. I don't see why not. He's an intelligent naked mole rat. Naruto said as Rufus perked up at that. Giving Naruto a thumbs up, he went back to drinking water. Feeling the rope being pulled on, Naruto and Ron began to pull Kim up. Once she reached the top of the hole, Kim grabbed Naruto's hand and pulled herself up. Dusting herself off, Kim wiped the sweat that was on her forehead. It was really hot in there. Let's never do that again. Hopefully we'll never have to again. Where's the pickaxe? Naruto asked as he dusted her shoulder off. Oh shoot, I left the pickaxe down there. Kim said as she looked down into the hole. I'll get it, don't worry, Naruto said as Kim smiled in gratitude at him. Grabbing the rope, he began to climb down. Sliding down the last bit, Naruto was glad he wore gloves. Dusting them off, he looked around until he saw the pickaxe. Walking towards it, he picked it up, but he quickly dropped it when he felt how hot it was. Grabbing it from the handle this time, he swung it around a bit. Looking at the cavern wall, he saw the hole that Kim had made. Feeling the hole, he realized it was roughly octagonal. The talisman had been embedded deeper into the wall than he had realized. Putting the pickaxe next to the hole, he saw that Kim hadn't just hacked at the wall. She had carefully dug it out. Tapping the wall with it, Naruto hadn't expected for the pickaxe to puncture through the wall. He also didn't expect for the hole to start leaking lava. Uh, oh, Naruto said as he let go of the pickaxe and started running back to the rope. He had made a small crack in the wall but he didn't want to be near it in case the pressure from the lava broke the wall. Grabbing the rope, he started climbing up it as quickly as he could. Hearing a crack, he looked back and saw that the wall had caved in a bit, and there was a river of lava steadily coming out. Crap, crap, crap. Pulling himself all the way out, he made it just in time to hear the wall completely fall apart, and for the cavern to fill itself with lava. Looking away from the hole, he saw that Kim and Ron were giving him a look. 
Whoops, Naruto said with an embarrassed laugh. Shaking her head, Kim held out the talisman. Grabbing it, Naruto saw that it was the dragon talisman. Is it irony or coincidence that the dragon talisman was in a volcano? Kim asked as Naruto flipped it over and looked at the symbols in the back. I believe it's coincidence, Ron said as he scratched his chin. Bringing out another visor, Naruto looked at the talisman. He had upgraded his translation program, and it was working well on the library. But now he wanted to see what it had to say about the talisman. Hmm. Point the dragon to unleash its roar, Naruto said as he translated the symbols into modern English. A dragon's roar, Kim asked as she thought over the riddle. Aren't dragons known for breathing fire? Maybe that's what it does, Ron said as he shrugged his shoulders. Let's find out, Naruto said as he extended his arm out. Point the dragon aiming at a boulder off to the side, Naruto aimed the talisman at it. To unleash its roar, Feeling the familiar sensation of magic in his body, Naruto realized that this felt a bit different. It felt viscous. From the talisman a burst of fire came out and destroyed the boulder. Looking at the remains of the boulder, Naruto lowered his arm. Fire shouldn't have been able to do that. Naruto said as he realized that the talisman did more than just shoot fire. It was more like an explosion. Ron said as he moved away from Naruto. You know, I think it was for the best that we were the ones who retrieved this talisman. Jade's a bit reckless and something horrible could have happened, Kim said once she found her voice. Section 13 San Francisco 1.30 PM Putting the talisman on the conical structure, Naruto realized he hadn't been keeping an eye on the talisman's energy readings. That was something he needed to fix quickly. Have you gotten anything from the enforcers? Kim asked as Naruto was busy staring at the talismans. Unfortunately, no. They won't take any deals, which makes my job harder. Captain Black said as he crossed his arms. That sucks. Ron said as he stayed away from the sensor pads. He still remembered what they did. Yes, but don't worry about it. Just focus on finding the talismans. We'll deal with the dark hand. Captain Black said as he re-engaged the security system. Jackie and Jade are still in Micronesia, right? Kim asked as they left the vault. They left early in the morning so they should be about halfway there. Captain Black said as he led them towards the exit of Section 13. Then after they get that talisman we'll still need to get three more, and then we'll be done. If everything goes well we should be done by next week. Naruto said as he made rough estimates about how long it'd take to reach each talisman. That's good. Wade's been telling me that we've gotten a few hits on the site that we've had to postpone. Kim said as she pulled out her communicator and looked through the list of requests they had backlogged. Any important ones? Ron asked as he walked backwards to look at Kim. No. There are things like asking for help finding lost items, babysitting, tutoring. Oh, and there's even a request to take down North Korea. Kim said nonchalantly. Captain Black, however, stopped where he was. You get requests to take down North Korea, Captain Black asked incredulous. That wasn't something even governments could do. Why did people think that some teenagers could? We get that one all the time, Kim said waving it off. It's unfortunate, but even we can't take down a tyrannical government, Naruto said out loud to Captain Black, but he shared a glance with Kim and Ron. Good, at least you know not to try and do something impossible. Captain Black said not seeing the look Kim game when he said it was impossible. Ron and Naruto did though, and they already knew what she was gonna say. To Middleton 2 10 p.m. We're gonna take down North Korea, Kim said once Naruto had put the ship on autopilot. Even we can't do something like that in a day. However, if you expand that to about say two weeks, then I believe we can do it, Naruto said as he spun his chair around so that he could see Kim and Ron, and they could see him. Am I the only one thinking about how we're gonna do that? Ron asked as he crossed his arms. This wasn't as simple as stopping a supervillain. It was toppling a government. The amount of trouble they could get into was stupidly large. Toppling a government isn't as simple as taking out a figurehead. What we're aiming for is a revolution by the people themselves. Naruto said as he began to figure out what they would need to do. We need to incite the people themselves to such a fever that they revolt against the government. This includes the soldiers themselves. We don't want a massacre because we didn't get them to follow along. Naruto said as he tented his fingers together and his eyes focused on nothing in particular. It's going to take a lot of planning but I believe we can do it. The only issue is what's going to happen afterward. We can't just leave them to fend for themselves afterward. We'd need to help them set up a temporary government until things settle down, and they decide what they want to become. Kim said as she reclined into the seat. That's a good idea, and I can show them the joy of Bueno Nacho. Ron said with a beaming grin. 
At the moment though, this isn't feasible. We don't have the time and I'm pretty sure that your parents wouldn't allow you to take time off school even for this. However, we could probably start things up during winter break. That'd give us a few months to incite the revolution. Naruto said as he smirked just imagining how the world would react to them taking down North Korea. Then it's official. Team Possible is going to take down North Korea, Kim said with a smirk. Middleton Karayak December 6, 2003 9.40 p.m. No. Kim said as she crossed her arms and sunk lower into her seat. Though she took care not to wrinkle her nice dress. She had dressed up for the night. Come on KP. We all agreed to do this. Ron said as he leaned on the table. He wore a nice blue shirt. But he kept his cargo pants. I took my turn. Now it's yours. I never agreed to this. Besides, I don't want to go up there and make a fool of myself. Kim said as she closed her eyes and tried to ignore everyone around her. Kim Karayak isn't about sounding good. It's about making a fool of yourself and having fun. Naruto said as he looked at Anne and James sing a duet. They weren't great, but the atmosphere was making everyone have fun. Naruto himself wore a nice button-up shirt and some dress pants. Kim had asked him to dress nicely, and he had obliged. If it'll make you feel better, I'll choose the song. Naruto said as he bobbed his head to the music. Naruto, you and my dad have the same taste in music. Kim said as she knew the kind of music that he liked. Hey, I don't know how that happened, it just did. Besides, I know you don't like my taste in music. That's why I had Monique give me a list of songs she knew you'd like. Naruto said as he held up a piece of paper. As long as there aren't any high notes. Kim she relented, but then she said. This means that I get to pick your song though. Raising an eyebrow, Naruto quickly tried to figure out if she was trying to embarrass him, but he couldn't find any way she could. All right then, it's a deal. That means that you're up next. Getting up from his seat, Kim saw him walk over to the DJ in charge of the music and begin speaking to him. What is he up to? Kim asked herself as she narrowed her eyes at Naruto's back. No idea, but he seems pretty proud of himself. Ron said as he saw Naruto coming back. The smug grin Naruto wore made Kim nervous but she couldn't say anything as her parents sat down from their turn at the mick. Oh, that was fun. James said as he drank deeply from his water. Next to him Anne was giggling. Naruto this was a great idea. Anne sat in between her giggles. And it's about to get better. Guess who's going to be singing next? Naruto said with a shit-eating grin. While looking at Kim. Oh Kimmy, that's fantastic. I know you'll do great. And said as she hugged her daughter. Kim smiled even though she felt apprehensive. You know what we say Kimmy. Anything's possible for a possible. James said as he saw the look on Kim's face. You're right dad. I'm Kim possible. I can do anything. Kim said as she stood up and went towards the stage. Oh she's going to hate me when she sees the song. Naruto said as he began to laugh a bit. What song did you pick for her? Ron asked as Naruto was still smiling. Oh, you'll see. Naruto said while continuing to smile. Pulling out his cell phone quickly, he called Wade. Okay, start recording. You got it, Wade said before ending the call. Naruto. Kim yelled from the stage. Now laughing out loud, Naruto tried his best to stop, but couldn't. Looking at the song he chose, Kim decided to just bite the bullet. Go, she told the DJ. Seeing her nod, Kim took a deep breath. Hearing the communicator beeping sound come through the speakers, Ron's eyes got wide, and he slowly turned to look at Naruto. You didn't. Laughing even harder, Naruto tried to say something, but couldn't. Ooh, yeah, yeah. I'm your basic average girl Kim began to sing, and Naruto was finally able to get his laughter under control. As she was glaring at Naruto, she tried to keep a frown on her face, but as she sang, she began to remember how much fun she used to have doing it. Arriving at the part where she had to sing her name, Kim gave up trying to stay annoyed, and just enjoyed her time singing. It also helped that the crowd was roaring with appreciation. You know that you always can call, Kim possible. As Kim sang Naruto smiled at seeing how much fun she was having. Kim could deny it all she wanted, but she enjoyed singing. I think you're in the clear now, Ron said as he leaned next to him so that they could actually speak to each other. I knew that she'd love it. I just had to make sure that she actually went up. Naruto said back as Kim finished her song. You do know that she's going to get back at you right? Ron asked as he stood up and clapped with the rest of the audience. Oh big time. But it was worth it. Naruto said back with a smile. I need an embarrassing song for my friend to sing. Kim said with a smirk as she looked at the DJ. 
Most guys are embarrassed to sing love songs, the DJ said as she shrugged her shoulders. Perfect. Which one would you suggest? Kim asked with a grin. This was going to be great payback. She's coming back and she's grinning. I don't think things are going to end well for you. Ron told Naruto as he saw Kim coming back with a giant grin on her face. Your turn next. Kim said as she grinned at Naruto. Oh Kimmy that was beautiful. I hope this means that we'll be hearing you sing more often. And said as she drank from her non-alcoholic drink. She was driving everyone home after all. I wouldn't get your hopes up mom. Kim said plainly. Singing had been fun. But her voice almost cracked on the higher notes. It was only through supreme effort that she hadn't. Well, even if she won't, you can just look up the video online. Naruto said with a grin. However, that grin turned into a full-blown smile. When he saw Kim turn her head slowly in his direction. What do you mean, video? Her glare only made Naruto chuckle. Did you really think I wouldn't have Wade record it? Hearing her sigh of resignation made him feel a bit guilty. Grabbing her hand, he squeezed it a bit and looked at her. She smiled in return and squeezed his hand back. It was nice knowing that she wasn't angry at him. Well, I believe it's my turn. Wish me luck. Naruto said as he stood from the table and went towards the stage. Grabbing the microphone, he looked at the screen and saw the song name. Speaking into the microphone, Naruto said, Jokes on you Kim. I love this song. Hearing drums being playing, Naruto began to sway with the music. At the table, James perked up. Oh, I love this song. We're no strangers to love as Naruto sang. He began to stare straight at Kim. Seeing him look straight into her eyes and hearing him sing the love song, Kim thought to herself, my plan has backfired spectacularly. As Naruto began to get more and more into the song, Kim realized that she was beginning to blush. His intense gaze combined with the singing was a bit too much at once. Grabbing her drink and purposely avoiding his gaze, she looked off to the side. However, her blush became even worse when she saw that her mother was grinning at her. Except this wasn't a simple grin. It was one of those knowing grins. Her mother was going to talk to her when this was over. At the same time though, she looked back up and saw that Naruto wasn't just focusing on her anymore. Though he did wink at her when he saw that she was paying attention to him again. She just smiled softly. Naruto's home 11.30pm. Are you sure you don't want to stay over tonight? Anne asked as Naruto got out of the car. Thanks, but I have a lot of work I need to do that I've been putting off. Naruto replied as he pulled his keys out of his pocket. Well, alright then. Just don't overwork yourself. Anne said. But then Kim cut in. He's going to overwork himself. No matter what we say mom. That's just him. Smiling at her daughter, Anne just laughed. Waving goodbye at them, Naruto opened the door to his house and locked it behind him. Sighing, Naruto began to unbutton his shirt. He looked great. But he enjoyed wearing looser clothing. Throwing that on his couch. Which he now realized was getting dusty from disuse. He went down to his workshop. He had paperwork to fill out. Possible home December 7, 2003, 12, 15 a.m. Now Kimmy, did you know why I wanted to talk to you? Anne said as she drank from her tea. It was late and she didn't want to stay up late from drinking coffee. I don't know. Maybe it had to do with the look you gave me when Naruto was singing. Kim asked as she looked away from her mother's knowing eyes. You'd be correct? I don't like beating around the bush. So I'll just get straight to the point. Kimmy, do you have a crush on Naruto? Anne asked seriously. As much as she wanted to poke fun. Right now Kim needed her to be serious. I think. I'm not really sure. Kim said as she looked down at her hands. Well, I think your reaction to Naruto singing that love song was a pretty strong indicator of what you're feeling. Anne said with a small grin. The thing is, I've been feeling like this for a while. But I don't really know if I'm crushing on him. Kim said as she started playing with her hands. Well, let's change Naruto with Ron. How do you feel about him? Anne asked as she helped her daughter sort through her feelings. Ron, he's one of my best friends. Kim said raising an eyebrow at her mother's change in subject. And how do you feel? Do you feel the same about Ron as you do about Naruto? Anne asked neutrally. It was interesting to see her daughter realize the different feelings she had for her friends. No. I don't. When I think of Ron I kinda think of him like a brother. But when I think about Naruto things get weird. Kim said honestly. She had already known this. But saying it out loud made it seem much more real. Well, then it's obvious that your feelings for Naruto are changing. Though, the question is what are they changing into? Luckily though, you have plenty of time to figure things out. Don't rush anything and see what happens. Your feelings might revert back or they might even change some more. Who really knows? Anne said as she shrugged her shoulder. Smiling at her mother, Kim said, 
I think I'll do that. It's not like I really have much of an idea of what I'm doing anyway. Well, you can always take solace in knowing that Naruto will never let you down. He'll never run around and desert you. He'll never make you cry. He'll never say goodbye. As Anne spoke, she gained a smirk once she saw her daughter was connecting the words. He'll never tell a lie and hurt you. Anne finished before she burst into laughter at seeing Kim's face begin to blush, as she remembered Naruto's performance. Covering her blushing face with her hands, Kim still smiled at the memory. Naruto's Workshop 2.30 AM Smacking himself on the forehead, Naruto tried to keep himself from screaming out in anger at himself. He had kept the tiger talisman overnight once, and he had forgotten to run tests on it. Letting out a breath of frustration he decided that it was a lost cause, and that he should just focus on what he could do now. Bringing up the energy readings in section 13 Naruto looked at them for a moment, before turning to look at something else. A moment later though, he froze, turning his head slowly. He looked at the energy readings again, and paid more attention to them. The readings had increased threefold. Going back into his records, he correlated the date and time, and then he compared it to where he had been at that time. Looking at the data told him that it was exactly what he thought it was. The tiger talisman had done something to the other talismans. It didn't stop there though. The energy of the tiger talisman had increased as well as a result of the other talisman's energy increasing. Thankfully though, the large energy boost was only a one-time thing. However, the talisman's energy was still increasing like before, but at a faster rate. Bringing up the pictures he took of the tiger talisman, he looked up the symbols in his library. Finding the corresponding book quickly, he began translating it. In the meantime, he brought up Project Uber. Looking up all of the candidate materials for Kim's battle suit, Naruto looked them over. Each one had a flaw in it that made Naruto hesitant to use it. Many of these materials were sturdy, but they weren't flexible enough. Others were flexible, but they weren't sturdy. Some would require that the suit become bulky, and that wouldn't work. Sighing, Naruto removed them all. He and Wade needed to create a brand new material that was flexible, sturdy, and that wouldn't need to become bulky. They'd also need the suit to be able to repair itself. They could use the nanomachines they had, but Naruto wanted nanomachines that thematically went with the suit. It was a tiny insignificant thing but he was a perfectionist about the things he made. Unfortunately, he didn't have enough time to invest to making a brand new material. The talismans needed to be researched, his company needed to find that information leak, and he still needed to start thinking up a plan to take down North Korea. This wasn't even taking into account all of the projects his company was working on, and that he needed to be up to date on. Taking a deep breath, Naruto decided to break things down. The talismans were an immediate problem, so that took priority. The information leak in his company, while worrying, wasn't that important as all that was leaked was information about him. That would have become public knowledge in a few years. The North Korea thing was where he hit a snag. It was obvious that at the moment he couldn't really do anything about it but at the same time people were dying. He was stuck between making that his main project or bringing someone in to help. However, he couldn't really make it his main project, as he had too many responsibilities. Sighing, he pulled out his cell phone, and with heavy fingers, he began to put in the number to the only person who would be able to help. Hello, Betty. I'm going to need your help. Himalayan Mountain Range, December 7, 2003, 9 p.m. local time. You like your new suit, Rufus. Ron asked Rufus's team possible walk towards the temple. Yeah, huh. Rufus said as he nodded his head while wearing the knitted suit that Naruto had made for him. Why did you just make Rufus a Rufus suit? Kim asked as she turned her head back towards Rufus and smiled at seeing Rufus wearing a bigger sized suit of himself. I thought it made him look cute. Naruto said seriously as he pulled his balaclava up to cover his nose more. The Himalayan mountain range's higher elevation made it colder than what Team Possible was normally exposed to. As such, they were wearing warmer clothing than they usually did for cold missions. Each one of them wore a fur-lined jacket with a hood and balaclavas to protect their faces from the cold. Along with that they wore goggles, so that the cold air didn't sting their eyes. To make sure that they were visible to each other in the snow-covered mountain tops, their jackets were brightly colored. Kim wore bright red, Naruto bright green, and Ron bright blue. Rufus was inside Ron's pocket, and with his cold suit, he was quite toasty in it. Walking inside the temple, Team Possible lowered their hoods and took off the balaclavas. Man, it's hard to breath with those things on, Ron said as he scrunched his nose up and breathed in the air. It's that or you can just have your lungs freeze. Kim said as she put on the visor she got from Naruto during their mission to get the dragon talisman. Call me. Beat me. 
If you Naruto flipped his phone open quickly and turned away from Kim, so that he wouldn't have to stare at her glare. Hello. Naruto answered without looking at who was calling. Naruto. It's Sylvan Green. Eyes widening in recognition, Naruto now had his full attention on the phone call. Dr. Green, is something wrong? I thought you were going to do all of your correspondence through email. Naruto asked as the doctor had a preference for that. Oh, nothing is wrong. It's just that I couldn't wait to tell you the good news. We've had a breakthrough modifying the fertilizer for crop production, Dr. Green said excitedly. That was really quick. I expected this to take far longer, Naruto said as he scrunched his face up and tried to figure out if Dr. Green and his team was working for longer than they should. It had happened before when a few teams got too enthusiastic about their projects. I thought so too but I forgot to include the resources you provided. As a result, we've had far greater progress than what I was able to accomplish on my own during my retirement, Dr. Green said before he got excited once more. But that's not the reason I called. We've been able to successfully grow a number of crops in a matter of days, when it'd usually take months to do so. We're currently running tests on them to see how they compare to their normally grown counterparts, Dr. Green said with barely controlled excitement. As of now I want daily reports. I don't care if it's just to say that nothing new has been found out. Naruto said considering how this would affect his future plans. No problem. But I've got to go. They're about to test the calorie count of the crops. Dr. Green said before hanging up. Putting his phone away. Naruto turned around to see Kim examining the talisman they had come retrieve. You and Dr. Green are working together. Kim asked as she handed Naruto the visor and the talisman. Yeah, I asked him to come out of retirement. Naruto said he looked at the horse talisman and flipped it over to see the symbols in the back. Raising an eyebrow, Kim tried to remember what she could about Dr. Green. Retired weapons expert. His information is obsolete. So it's not about weapons, but he is the only person in the world with a super growth fertilizer. The fertilizer, Kim asked with a small smirk as she figured it out. Bingo. We're trying to see what we can do with it, Naruto said without revealing anything. Well, I can't wait to hear about it when you make it public, Kim said as she walked past him to her snowmobile. You coming? Kim asked with a muffled voice as she had put her balaclava back on. Nodding to her, Naruto put his back on as well and saw that Ron was doing the same. Getting on the snowmobile behind Kim, Naruto wrapped his arms around her, while making sure that the talisman was secured. Once done with that, he looked over to Ron and saw that he was ready as well. Getting a thumbs up from him, Naruto gave one back. Squeezing Kim's stomach a bit, she nodded her head at a signal, and began to go down the mountain. 9.30 p.m. Remember when I told you that you'd find out why I didn't take the ship up the mountain? Now you know, Naruto said as he saw the avalanche's aftermath from the safety of the ship. That wasn't our fault, right? Ron asked as he saw tons of snow that had collapsed on top of the temple they had found the horse talisman in. Not likely. This entire area has been hit with a lot of snow in the past few weeks, so an avalanche was just waiting to happen, but I didn't want to risk the ship causing an avalanche, Naruto said as he tried to find any remains of the temple they had been in. Let's go put the talisman in section 13, and then just go home. The sooner we put this one away, the sooner we can relax, Kim said as she stretched and snuggled into her chair with a blanket. Looking at her, Naruto decided not to comment that she reminded him of a cat. Naruto's Workshop December 7, 2003 11.30 a.m. Reclining in his chair, Naruto took pleasure in knowing that one of his personal projects wasn't running into any sort of problems. The modified Nanomachines for Medicine Project or MNM, as he labeled it, was nearing completion. It had taken him some time to figure out how to make the Nanomachines break down into material usable by the body, but he had and afterward, he assigned the project to a team that was familiar with medical technology. They would handle any little problems the nanomachines might have when working within the human body. Naruto didn't really think it was necessary as the nanomachines were designed to operate within the human body without causing any damage. But it was a necessary precaution. The last thing he wanted was to have someone die because of a mistake on his part. Unfortunately, Naruto's happy mood quickly disappeared once he began to think about his proposal to GJ. Betty had decided to consult her top agents to see if his proposal had merit. But Naruto already knew they would accept. Except that Naruto knew that it wouldn't be without him having to sacrifice something, and he already had an idea about what it would be. Hopefully, the entire endeavor would be worth it. Middleton High School, December 8, 2003, 12.10 p.m. 
Why is everyone staring at me now? Naruto asked as he ate his lunch. I'd say it has to do with your new clothes. Which by the way, I approve of. Monique said while looking at Naruto with an appraising eye. He had done away with the orange t-shirt and cargo pants in favor of a red collared shirt and jeans. You should thank Kim. She pretty much made me get new clothes on Saturday. Naruto said as he pointed to Kim with his fork. Turning to Kim to ask something. Monique froze when she saw the glare that Kim sent her. Quickly connecting the dots. Monique got a small smirk on her face and raised an eyebrow at Kim in question. Realizing what she was doing, she stopped and tried to play it off. But Monique saw right through it. Having an entire conversation using nothing but facial expressions, Naruto remained oblivious to the fact that he was the subject of their conversation. He was focused more on how Ron and Amelia were acting. Their body language had changed. It used to be that they almost seemed scared to express how they felt about each other. But that didn't seem to be the case anymore. They were relaxed, happy, and, best of all, completely at ease with each other. Something had changed yesterday when they separated after delivering the horse talisman. Hopefully that meant that Ron would finally introduce Amelia as his girlfriend to Kim. Naruto's home for 20 p.m. You know, when you told me you were going to introduce Amelia to Kim, and that you wanted to do it at my house, I thought that was smart. Naruto said as he sat on the steps in his backyard with Ron and Rufus. Thanks, I wanted a neutral location, you know, in case things got ugly. Ron said as he picked up a rock and threw it as far as he could. He didn't have to worry it hitting anything since Naruto lived on an airfield, or aerodrome as he called it. Nodding at Ron's reasoning, Naruto continued. However, I can say without a doubt that I didn't expect to be kicked out of my own home by Kim, as she interrogated your girlfriend. I didn't expect Kim to kick you out either. Ron said as he got tired of rock throwing and just looked off into the distance. Why do you think she needs the whole house for? Naruto asked as he turned his head to look at Ron. I have no idea. Don't you have this place set up with all kinds of security cameras? Ron asked in response. Of course I do. Naruto said rolling his eyes. Then why don't we see? Ron asked as he stood up. I trust Kim not to do anything bad, she's probably just asking a bunch of embarrassing questions. Naruto said as he squashed the urge to look through his security cameras. Oh god, I hope not. Ron said as his eyes widened. Raising an eyebrow, Naruto decided not to ask, and instead decided to lay back. But a call on his phone interrupted him. Pulling it out of his pocket, Naruto flipped it open and answered. Hello, Mr. Yuzumaki. Sitting up, Naruto replied. Betty, you got back to me pretty quickly. I'm guessing things went well when you gave them my proposal. There were a few who were wary, but overall we have decided to go through with it, but on a few conditions. Betty told Naruto as he tried to get a feel for her response. Unfortunately, she was a super spy for a reason. What conditions? Naruto asked while imagining the worst possible scenario. While we might have unlimited funding, even we can't produce the material that the plan would need quick enough, and as a result we need to modify a few things, Betty said. But before she could explain more she was interrupted by Naruto. Don't worry about the materials or the cost. I'll provide everything and no I won't tell you how. Naruto said as he already knew that she was going to ask that. Very well then. Betty drawled out slowly before returning to her list of conditions. North Korea is a dangerous place for anyone. We are going to need something that can help us stay safe while inside the country. I already talked it over with my buddy and we agreed. We'll provide GJ with the stealth technology that you're currently having trouble creating. Naruto said as he knew that would guarantee GJ's support for the plan. How do you know about that? Was it online? Betty asked with emotion for the first time in the call. No, I got that from when you hacked into my systems to get my phone number. Naruto said with a smirk. I never received word that we were hacked. Betty said in a tone that let Naruto realize that someone was gonna get chewed out. My system is designed so that when it's attacked it attacks back. Unfortunately, all I was able to get was information on the stealth technology you have been developing. Naruto said honestly as the GJ's systems had been able to repel the attack soon after it was initiated. I see, Betty said before sighing. The final condition has to deal with the conditions you put forward. Staying quiet, Naruto listened as she explained the last condition. You wish to enact a non-violent revolution in North Korea. Something like that is incredible difficult to do, and you wish to do it within a matter of months. We have to extend the deadline. Closing his eyes, Naruto knew that the longer a revolution took to succeed, 
the more likely it was to turn violent, as it was by the end of summer was pushing it. Opening his eyes, Naruto replied, we can't do that. The longer this takes the greater the risk of violence. You want to remove a dictator from power, there will be violence. The best we can do is minimize it. Betty replied calmly, not if we get the military on our side. Naruto replied smoothly, you are asking us to turn nearly 10 million people against their own country. Betty said incredulously, when you say it like that, it sounds impossible. Naruto said jokingly before he answered seriously. People are people no matter where they're from. No one wants to be the cause of despair for someone else. What about sadistic murderers who enjoy inflicting pain on others? Betty interrupted finding a flaw in his reasoning. Sighing, Naruto said, I was trying to make a point about how we're all human, and because we can help people we should. Now you went and ruined the whole thing. My apologizes. Would you like to start over? Betty asked, regretful that she had interrupted. No, the moment's gone. Naruto said sullenly before he followed it up with. Anyway, even if they're soldiers they're still human. All we have to do is convince them a few at a time. And then when the time comes we get them all to follow through. The ones that don't we capture and detain before anything can happen. I'll discuss this with my people. Betty said before hanging up. Hearing the line go dead Naruto looked at his phone with narrowed eyes. Not even a goodbye. You're gonna give up your stealth tech. Ron asked completely surprised by what he had heard. Turning to look at Ron in surprise, Naruto had forgotten that he was there. Yeah. It's the only way I was sure that GJ would actually go through with the plan. But that's your and Wade's most prized work. I remember how you two would work for days at a time trying to get it to work. Ron said as he looked at Naruto intensely. Yeah, but if we get GJ's help with this, then it's a small price to pay. Naruto said looking away from Ron. While the stealth technology was something that he and Wade had made together, it legally belonged to him. However, Naruto didn't feel right just giving it away without Wade's approval. Thankfully, Wade had been understanding. Unfortunately, it did nothing for the feelings of guilt he now carried. Don't tell Kim, Naruto said suddenly without looking at Ron. Dude, she's gonna find out. Ron said as he saw that Naruto was doing his best to not look at him. Yeah, but I want to be the one to tell her. I don't want her to feel guilty about this. Naruto said as he turned back to look at Ron and let him know how serious he was. Whatever Ron was going to say was cut off as the back door to Naruto's house was opened. Ron, Amelia wants to talk to you, Kim said before holding the door open for him. Watching Ron walk into the house, Naruto raised an eyebrow at Kim as she sat next to him, and laid her head on his shoulder. Laying his head on hers, Naruto closed his eyes and breathed in Kim's scent. It was a nice smell that he never really bothered to identify. She's really nice. Kim's sudden statement, brought Naruto out of his zen-like state. Well, if Ron's dating her then she can't be that bad. Naruto said in response. Well, I wasn't really expecting it. I really thought she was just going after him as a way to get closer to you. Kim said as she grabbed Naruto's arm and started playing with his fingers. Ron's got a way with people. He can usually bring out the best in them when he doesn't try to be someone he's not. Naruto said as he just observed Kim playing with his fingers. That's true. Kim said as she stopped playing with Naruto's hand and just held it. Enjoying the moment, Naruto decided to ruin it. I contacted GJ about helping us bring down North Korea. I don't see why they wouldn't help. This is right up their alley, isn't it? Kim asked as she remembered reading about the many classified missions that GJ had done. Oh yeah, but they had a few issues with my idea. One of the problems was the deadline. We want to finish it by the end of summer so that we don't have to worry about it during the next school year. Naruto said as he began to comb Kim's hair with his fingers. So then what did they say? Kim asked with her eyes closed as she enjoyed Naruto's ministrations. They're wary, but I offered them something, and I'm pretty sure that they'll accept. Naruto said as he knew that Kim was about to ask what. What did you offer? Kim half asked half mumbled as Naruto's fingers were putting her to sleep. I offered them my stealth tech, Naruto said without missing a beat and continuing his activity. Kim though, had a different reaction. Her eyes shot open as she realized what Naruto had said. Getting off his shoulder, Kim looked Naruto in the eyes. But that's… I already talked it over with Wade and we agreed that it's a small sacrifice if we can take down North Korea. Naruto said cutting off whatever Kim was going to say. Besides, the stealth technology is already a few years old. We needed a new version anyway. Naruto said with a small grin. I can't let you do that. Kim said with a frown. She received a snort in response. 
Kim, I'm not asking for your permission, Naruto said as he looked directly into her eyes. I'm telling you this so that you don't raise a fuss later on. I don't like it, Kim said as she turned her head away. Rolling his eyes, Naruto responded. It's not like I'm giving it to them and then destroying mine. I'll still have my stealth technology. It's just that Wade and I won't be the only ones with it anymore. Naruto finished with a shrug. If you're sure, Kim said as she looked back and saw that Naruto was smiling. I am. Now, let's go bother those two lovebirds. I don't want them to start mating inside my house, Naruto said as he stood up. You, would you have to go and put that image in my head? Kim asked as the thought wormed its way into her mind. Because I just thought of it, and if I had to suffer, so do you. Naruto replied with a cheeky grin. 6 p.m. We aren't going after the remaining talismans today. Naruto said into his cell phone as he looked through his fridge. Why? Jade asked as she browsed the internet on her laptop. There's an 8-hour time difference, and it's about 2 a.m so we'd get there around 3 a.m. Naruto replied as he tried to find some food that wasn't expired. Looking at the expiration date of some milk, he was repulsed by how long ago it had expired. What about tomorrow then? Jade said as her attention was drawn to the website she had found. It was for Infinitech. I'll probably go alone later tonight around 1 or so, and with the 8-hour time difference and the 1 hour of flight time. I'd arrive at around 10 a.m. or so. That way there's plenty of light. Naruto said as he looked at how much trash he had pulled out of his fridge. Using his omniband, he sent out four cables which encompassed the trash in a sphere. With a few thoughts, the trash was completely converted into energy and absorbed by the omniband. Wait, are you gonna go after both? Jade asked once she registered what Naruto said. Looking into his empty fridge and deciding that he needed to go grocery shopping, he replied, if I can. Though, if any of the others have been any indication I probably won't be able to. Tell me about it. Did Jackie tell you what happened when we got the monkey talisman? Jade asked as she looked through the website and found a catalog of things they had made. Most of it was just stuff that wasn't useful on its own. No, he just told me that you had some trouble. I didn't really ask for details because I don't think he wanted to talk about it. Naruto said as he created a new clean trash can. We had retrieved the talisman, but we were marooned on an island by a freak storm. I didn't come to until later in the day, and a monkey had stolen the talisman. I was able to get it back, but apparently the monkey talisman is voice activated. Jade said as she remembered being turned into a monkey, simply because she had said it out loud. What did it do? Naruto asked as he focused on the story and leaned against the counter of his kitchen. It apparently transforms you into any animal. Luckily you can change back to normal pretty easily. Jade said with obvious relief in her voice. Hmm. So only the dragon talisman is inherently a weapon. Naruto said out loud without realizing it. Wait, what about the dragon talisman? Jade asked now wanting to know what the dragon talisman did. Shit, I said that out loud didn't I? Naruto said exasperated at accidentally breaking his word to Jackie. Yes, now what does the dragon talisman do? Jade asked excited to know more about the magic talismans. I promised Jackie I wasn't going to tell you. But if I don't you'll just go and use it yourself won't you? Naruto asked even though he already knew the answer. Yep. Jade said in a cheeky tone. Sighing, Naruto decided to tell her so that she wouldn't do something dangerous. The dragon talisman releases a fireball that explodes on contact. No way, Jade said breathless as she imagined using it. Don't use it, Naruto said immediately after. I wasn't going to, Jade said trying to deny the fact that it did occur to her to use it. I agree with Jackie that the dragon talisman is too dangerous to be used lightly. Jade, you should only use it if you're in danger. Naruto warned as he knew that while Jade was a good kid, she was a bit rebellious. If her continued dismissal of Jackie's warnings was anything to go by. Fine. Jade relented as he was right about it being dangerous. Good. So, how was school? Did you get detention today? Naruto asked as Jade began talking about Ms. Hartman being a jerk. Naruto's workshop 10.25 p.m. Shouldn't you be going to sleep soon? Naruto said into his phone as he read the report that Dr. Green had sent him. I would, but my giant teddy bear is gone. Kim said slyly as she looked through the winter catalog of Club Banana. You don't have a giant teddy bear, Naruto said confused as to how he had never seen it in her room. I'm talking about you dingus, Kim said with no rancor. I've been demoted from best friend to teddy bear, Naruto asked incredulously as he stopped reading the report to put his full attention on the call. No, you just got new duties to perform. Ever since mom and dad told us that they've known that you sleep over, 
I've gotten used to having you there. Kim said honestly as she enjoyed the physical contact. I still don't have any idea why your mom and dad even allowed it when they found out years ago, or why they even let us keep doing it. Naruto said honestly as it was something that just kept bugging him. Weren't you the one who once told me not to look a gift horse in the mouth? Kim asked amused that it was bugging him so much. Yes, but this is different. No sane parents would allow a young man to sleep in the same bed as their daughter. Naruto said without realizing he insulted James and Anne. Are you calling my parents crazy? Kim asked as she frowned and put her catalog down. Of course not, Naruto said without even knowing that Kim had gotten close to getting angry at him. But they aren't normal that's for sure. Then again, we aren't either. What do you mean? Kim asked once she knew that Naruto hadn't meant to insult her parents on purpose. Think about it Kim, a brain surgeon and a rocket scientist, both of them easily near the top of their respective fields. Your mom does brain surgery almost daily with such skill that she gets asked to videotape her surgeries, so that others may learn from them. Your dad is in charge of the Hephaestus Project, a secret government research project to create actual Cybertronic technology, and they're actually making headway. The thing is though, both of these jobs are stressful as hell, and yet they only work from about 9 to 5. That shouldn't be possible for normal people, and then they have children. One of them ends up being a teenage hero who goes around the world helping people and saving the world, when the called upon to do so. Then you have the twins. Both of them are geniuses, even though right now they're more interested in blowing stuff up. But geniuses nonetheless. Kim, some of the rockets they've tested over here are amazing. I'm actually kind of scared to see what they could do if I actually let them have access to more dangerous materials. Naruto finished with a small chuckle. Taking a moment to gather her thoughts, Kim realized that Naruto hadn't actually said anything about himself. What about you, Mr. Billionaire? Taken by surprise that Kim knew he was a billionaire, he asked. How do you know about that? My dad mumbles a bit when he wakes up. He said something about you and billions, and I kinda just took a leap. Kim said, proud that she had figured it out. Ah, uh, huh. Well, to answer your question, I'm weird too. But not just the good kind. Obviously I'm an insomniac, but it goes away when I'm near a certain redeed which shouldn't be possible. But somehow it is. I'm a genius and I have my own multi-million dollar company that's fit to expand and grow into a billion dollar company in a few years if I play my cards right. Naruto said without going into too much detail about himself. That's it. Come on, Naruto. You know you can do better than that. Kim said teasingly. I'm just talking about the things we've accomplished. Naruto said as he returned to reading the report on the super growth formula. Really? That's all the genius teenage billionaire has done. Kim said while trying to make Naruto say more about himself. Yep. Naruto said while already catching on to what Kim wanted him to do. What about lights out Kimmy? Turning her head, Kim saw her mother flipping the light switch. Now in the dark, Kim knew she had to end the conversation. This conversation isn't over. It is for now, Naruto said with a smile. Good night Kim, good night. Hearing the call end, Naruto went back to reading the report. Though he now realized that he had no idea about what he had just read. Starting over, and actually paying attention to what he was reading. Let him know that the quickly grown crops were about a third less nutritious than their normal counterparts. The report continued on saying that the results were promising, and that more testing needed to be completed, before it hit the market to be sold. Incredibly pleased with how the fertilizer was coming along, Naruto archived the message. Looking at the time he saw that he still had time to go over some more work he needed to finish. Netherlands December 9th. 2003 10:20 a.m. Prying the dog talisman out of the wall, Naruto took pictures of it. Once he was done with that, he put it away. Walking out of the windmill he walked towards his ship. It seemed that he had just been paranoid when he thought that things were going to go wrong. Bavaria Clock Tower December 9, 2003 11 a.m. Shooting a grappling hook into the air, Naruto saw it latch onto some rails. Lifting himself up, he came face to face with the mechanical pig that had the pig talisman on its forehead. Pulling it free, he took some pictures of it, and as he prepared to climb back down, he heard a voice. Angry Crow takes flight. Bavaria Clock Tower December 9, 2003 11.02 AM. Angry Crow takes flight. Hearing the yell, Naruto turned his head around, and then threw himself off the ledge, in order to avoid being pulverized by a red blur that had jumped over 20 feet into the air. Shooting a grappling hook as he fell, Naruto swung to safety. Looking up at his attacker, Naruto asked. So, any reason why you just tried to stomp me? Rising from his crouch, the attacker slowly turned around, 
and Naruto was able to get a good look at him. Spiky red hair, along with a mustache and a small chin beard, were the most prominent identifiers of the man's face. I am Hakfu, and you have made an enemy of the Dark Hand. Makes sense. I'm guessing Valmont wasn't exactly happy with me interrupting him when he tried to get the snake talisman. Though I have to ask, how did you find me? Naruto asked as he tried to figure out how he was tracked. Seeing the man jump down 20 feet and then stand up like it was nothing had Naruto wondering if he was freakishly strong like him. Your ship? We placed a tracking device on it. Hakfu stated as he began to walk towards Naruto. Impossible. My ship is protected against that. Naruto said as he began to back away from Hakfu. Unless, the tracking device was specifically designed to work solely on your ship. Hearing another voice behind him, Naruto turned around and saw that it was the large sumo that Kim kicked around during the rabbit talisman fiasco. The only problem I can see is that the Dark Hand doesn't have the necessary technology to do something like that. Naruto said as he kept an eye on both Toru and Hakfu. However, his problems got worse when even more people began to come out. It's true that we don't have the necessary resources to make something like it, but the worldwide evil empire does. Toru said making Naruto's eyes widen. The Dark Hand works with we, he asked in shock. Whenever it is mutually beneficial, and your death is mutually beneficial, Toru said as all of the enforcers that he had brought along had surrounded Naruto. Why exactly? He asked as he tried to figure out his odds. The worldwide evil empire knows you're working with global justice, and wants you eliminated. Valmont wants you dead for humiliating the Dark Hand. Toru spoke as all of the enforcers brought out their weapons. You mean Valmont wants me dead for humiliating him? I knew he was a bad guy, but petty too. Naruto stated as he figured out his plan of attack. Well, if you want me, come and get me. Taunting criminals always worked and it was proven true once again as they ran at Naruto. However, they didn't get anywhere close to him as he surprised them. Throwing a flashbang at his feet, Naruto closed his eyes as the light blinded everyone around him. Jumping up and shooting a grappling hook, Naruto lifted himself onto a moving gear. Looking back at the dark hand cronies, he saw that they were all still disoriented. Hakfu looked like he was recovering quickly, so Naruto had the Omniban create one of his favorite gadgets, his jetpack. Putting it on his back, Naruto linked it up to his Omniband for greater control over its thrust capabilities. Jumping off the gear, Naruto took off to the top of the tower. Once he was near the roof, he looked down and saw that the thugs had recovered and were looking up at him. You know, when I look at all of you I see nothing but thugs and murderers. It makes me wonder what type of legacy you're trying to leave. Shaking his head, he continued, I have big plans, and dying would really put a damper on that. Therefore, I can't die until I'm done. All of you though, I'm quite sure that if you died right now, the world might actually end up a better place for it. Bringing his arms forward, Naruto summoned his arm cannons. Beginning to charge them up, he saw that the enforcers were beginning to panic over their possible demise. Reaching a full charge, Naruto took aim and didn't fire. Sighing, he lowered his arms and discharged the gathered energy. I really think that if I killed you, the world would be better off but on the smallest chance that you might be redeemable I won't. Besides, I'm sure even thugs like you have families. Aiming at a wall, Naruto had his Omniband disassemble a hole big enough for him to fly through. Passing through it, the wall was reassembled, sealing the exit. Flying towards his hovering ship, Naruto saw a tiny little discoloration on sight of the wing. Landing on the wing, he saw the discoloration was actually a small disc. Prying it off the wing took some work as it was magnetically attached. Once he had it in his hand, Naruto had his Omniband remove the outer covering, exposing the internal components. Spotting a transmitter, he realized that this was the tracking device. Having his Omniband disintegrate the tracking device, he figured it was about time to start drawing up plans for an upgraded ship. Getting into his ship, he set the destination towards Middleton and took off. A few minutes into the flight, he saw something approaching behind him on his monitor. Activating the rear view cameras, he saw that it was a GJ hover jet. However, when it began to open fire on him, he realized that it wasn't global justice. Taking manual control, he increased his ship's speed and began pulling upward. Looking at the monitor and seeing that he was still being followed, he began to spin and move in and out of sight of his pursuer. Reaching 50,000 feet, Naruto doubled his speed and reversed his direction, flying toward his pursuer. The ship's force fields activated as the gunfire from the pursuer was now hitting his general location. Activating the ship's only weapon, he began to charge it up. As both ships turned to avoid each other, 
he activated the charged weapon. An absolutely massive amp was released from the ship. As it spread out, it didn't have to travel far to reach the pursuing ship. Within moments, the amp overloaded the hover jet. As it lost momentum, the hover jet began to plummet downward. Tracking it, Naruto fired off the ship's grappling claw and managed to catch the ship before it plummeted too much. Dragging the ship behind him as he began lowering his elevation, he dropped it when he was a few stories above the ocean. Knowing the ship would float, Naruto flew away as he started calling Betty. She would want to know that Wee was after his head. Naruto's Workshop 4.50 AM Looking at the dog talisman, Naruto was unsure of what to make of the inscription. His translating program was improving with every book translated, and it had taken less than a second to fully translate the inscription on the back of the talisman. However, that's where he ran into a problem. If the translation was to be taken at face value, then this was probably the most powerful talisman of the bunch. The dog talisman is best friend to man. It restores youthful energy to its holder and grants eternal life. Naruto repeated to himself for what seemed like the thousandth time, flipping it over again. To look at the dog sigil, he could see the magic flowing within the talisman. Unlike the magic of the other talismans, this magic seemed to pulse like a heartbeat. It was actually kind of beautiful to look at. Closing his hand around the talisman, Naruto focused on it, and a rush of something flowed through him. Unlike the other time he felt magic flow through his body, this one made him feel alive. Breathing deeply, he had to let go of the talisman as he felt that he was about to be overwhelmed. Feeling the rush start to dissipate, he took a few deep breaths, in order to orient his mind on what he needed to do. Injecting some nanomachines into his body, he waited a bit for them to be completely distributed throughout his body. Grabbing the talisman again, he felt the rush like before, but this time he was able to keep himself from feeling overwhelmed. Keeping a grip on the talisman, he looked at the information the nanomachines in his body were recording. Narrowing his eyes, he saw that his body had begun to produce a variety of compounds in abundance, and even a few that didn't have any recorded existence. Keeping the nanomachines active, he released the talisman. Almost instantly his body stopped producing the compounds that made him feel great. His body still had the compounds that had been produced, but they were quickly disintegrating. Grabbing the talisman again, Naruto ignored the feeling it produced and focused on what was happening in his body. Once again his body began to produce the compounds. However this time he had his nanomachines focus solely on what the compounds were doing throughout his body. This information would be just as important as the compounds being formed within his body. Continuing to hold the talisman, Naruto wondered exactly how extensive the eternal life the dog talisman provided was. He was extremely tempted to test it, but the dangers were too great. One world-changing discovery at a time, he said softly to himself as he buried his temptation. Besides, trying to do too many things at once would just be a waste, and he had far too much to do with too little time. Section 13 San Francisco 11 AM And these last two make 12, Captain Black said as he held the pig and dog talismans in his hand, which means that as of now, I can go back and work at the university right, Jackie said with a big hopeful smile, seeing his friend smile with such hope in his eyes. Let Augustus Black know what he had to do. No. We still need to find out why the Dark Hand wanted these things so badly. And ancient Chinese artifacts is your area of expertise, Jackie. It's unfortunate. But you'll just have to be a consultant for a bit longer. Seeing Jackie's face fall had Naruto chuckling as he walked out of Section 13. Bringing out his visor he followed Captain Black and Jackie's progress through the base towards the vault from the security cameras. Seeing Black put the talismans into the security container, Naruto pulled up the live feed of the talisman's energy, and he was able to see the jump in energy when they were attached. Pulling up the camera view of the dog talisman he had back in his workshop, he saw that the energy readings had spiked immensely. It worked? Naruto whispered with a grin. What he had done was completely untested, and he wasn't even sure it was going to work. However, it hadn't as a result he had proven that macroscopic entanglement was possible, and that it worked even with magical artifacts. Thankfully now with all of the talisman business over and done with, he could now focus on other things. Middleton High School, December 197 AM. You ready to ski for fun for once? Naruto asked as he loaded his things into the bus. Yes, it's been so long since I've duck. Kim suddenly shouted as she dragged Naruto to the ground. Over their heads passed a few skis as Ron swung them around haphazardly. Whoops, sorry about that. Ron said when he saw Naruto and Kim on the ground. Pulling Naruto up with her, Kim dusted off her jacket. You should be more careful, Ron. I'm too excited to be careful. Ron said as he planted his skis upright. 
Woohoo! Rufus yelled out suddenly as he jumped out of Ron's pocket. Looks like you're not the only one excited. Glad to see you're still rocking the Rufus suit. Naruto said as he saw that Rufus was wearing his snowsuit. Oh guys look. Kim said while staring behind them. Turning to look, Ron and Naruto saw who she was talking about. Alan Platt. Naruto asked confused as to why Kim was talking about him. He deserves our pity. Ron said as he lowered his head and closed his eyes in pity. Seeing Kim nod her head, had Naruto wondering what they were talking about. I don't get it. What's going on? He asked completely confused. Wait, you don't know. Kim asked shocked that he actually didn't know what was going on. No, I don't. That's why I'm asking. Naruto stated as he began to get frustrated that he didn't know what was going on. Sorry, Kim said as she raised her hand showing that she didn't mean to antagonize him. It's just that you usually know everything about our school trips beforehand. Oh, Naruto said as he now realized what was going on. Yeah, I've been so busy lately that I haven't been keeping up with anything else. Tell me about it. Ron said as he crossed his arms and sulked. Oh, don't be like that. I thought you liked getting to fly with Bertina. Naruto asked as he leaned against the bus. I did it's just that after I asked for an autograph for Amelia, she started grilling me about our relationship. Ron said as his face blushed a bit. It was hilarious. Kim said with a wide grin. His face just kept getting redder and redder. You wouldn't be thinking that. If you were on the receiving end, Ron said glumly as he slumped his shoulders. Ah, don't worry about it. I'm sure Bertina didn't do it to embarrass you. Naruto said as he slung his arm over Ron's shoulder and led him towards the bus. I know, it was just weird getting asked all of these personal questions. Ron said as he stepped onto the bus. Hold on you three. Barkin said as he pulled Ron out of the bus. It has come to my attention that we apparently don't have enough space for everyone. Barkin said while looking uncomfortable. There was apparently some sort of mix-up, and we got sent the wrong bus. Barkin stated as he tried to ignore the look that Naruto was sending him. Meaning what exactly? Kim asked as she desperately hoped that the trip wasn't cancelled as a result. It means that if we don't find another suitable transport within the next hour or so, the trip is going to be cancelled for everyone. Barkin said as he now looked directly at Naruto, who took out his phone. Do we know anyone who owns a bus that owes us a favor? Kim asked Ron as she racked her brain trying to figure out a solution. I don't think so. Usually when we need a favor, it's to go to another state or another country. Not a few miles. Ron said as he crossed his arms, remembering the few times they needed favors done. Humming, Kim pulled out her communicator. Pulling up the list of people who owed Team Possible favors, she looked through them to find a possible solution. Wow, I often forget how many people we've managed to help out. Ron said as he looked at the list featuring hundreds of names. And yet not a single one of them owns a bus. Kim said with a frown as she started looking over the list again in case she missed something. Well, after six different calls I can safely say we have our bus. Naruto said as he put his phone away. Great, we'll meet you there. Barkin said as he began to get on the bus. Wait, don't we need a chaperone for a school trip? Kim asked completely confused as to why he was leaving. Your chaperones are right there. Barkin pointed behind Kim as he closed the bus door. Turning around, Kim gasped as she saw who the chaperones were. 7.30 a.m. I can never show my face at school again. Kim said as she buried her face into her arms, sitting on either side of her. Were Naruto and Ron who were doing their best to comfort her. Your parents are fun, Kim. You're just letting Bonnie get to you, again. Naruto said as he tried to braid Kim's hair. Bonnie literally hung out the window, laughing her head off as the bus pulled away. Kim deadpanned, as she looked at Naruto, as he struggled to figure out how to braid her hair. If Hope hadn't pulled her back in, she would have fallen out. Giving up on braiding Kim's hair, he let Ron take over, and as he enviously saw Ron begin forming the braid, he spoke to Kim. So what? You're just going to spend all weekend being miserable. That's not the Kim Possible I know. Oh, and what would the Kim Possible you know do? Kim asked irritated as she looked at him from the corner of her eye. Well for one, she'd talk to her parents about them being her chaperones and not run away. Secondly, she'd find a way to get back at Bonnie. She wouldn't be malicious about it though. That girl just doesn't have it in her to be malicious. Naruto sighed dramatically as he looked up at the sky and ignored Kim's look. He's right KP, Ron said suddenly as he finished Kim's braid. You don't take things lying down. You stand up and fight. Ron yelled out loud as he stood up. Looking at Ron and then Naruto, Kim came to a conclusion. You two are weird, but you're not wrong. Standing up Kim dusted off the snow on her pants, and then went to talk to her parents. Behind her, 
Ron and Naruto fist bumped. However, their celebration was cut short when a short thumping sound was heard getting louder. Seeing a bus pull up with loud thumping music next to the school, Naruto whistled loudly to get everyone's attention. Our bus is here. You got us a party bus. Ron asked as he saw the bus door open and loud dance music spill out. It was the only one they had left. It would have been here sooner but they needed to make sure it could deal with all of the snow. Naruto said as their classmates cheered and scrambled to get into the bus. Naruto, think we can make a quick pit stop? And sudden question made him raise an eyebrow. 8 a.m. And then Bone Bone just started crying. Bonnie's mother said as she recounted a particular tale of when Bonnie broke down crying. Wow, that's really messed up. Kim said in response to the story. I didn't think it was actually possible but I feel so bad for Bonnie. Ron's disbelief could be heard in his voice. Her sisters are horrible people. Naruto whispered as his sympathy for Bonnie skyrocketed. With half the crap that she'd gone through he was surprised she wasn't a completely horrible person. Hell, thinking back on it now, he wasn't sure if he could ever remember a time when she picked on anyone. Yeah, she usually always had a snippy or even insulting comment, but she was never cruel or malicious like her sisters were. Feeling ashamed, he saw that his friends were also reevaluating what they thought of Bonnie. Around them, their classmates continued to dance as the music got even louder. Anne and James were dancing as well, but Kim was far too preoccupied with her own thoughts to even try and stop them. Mount Middleton 10 a.m. Seeing Bonnie is going to be awkward, Kim said as the bus pulled up to the ski lodge. Yeah, but we really can't do anything about that. Ron said as everyone but them started to leave the bus. I guess all we can do is to try and get along with her. Though her personality is going to make that a bit difficult. Naruto said as he walked up to the bus driver. Look, let's just ignore her when she tries to start something. Sooner or later she'll come to us. Kim said as Ron and she stepped off the bus. Looking around. They saw that everyone else was already inside the ski lodge. And so was Barkin. Okay, so the bus driver is going to leave and come back on Sunday around 5 or so. This is supposed to be our class trip. So let's go have fun, Kim said as she led her team towards the lodge. 5 p.m. Every time, every time there's a villain lair in the mountains, we always end up having to outrun an avalanche. Ron screamed as he held onto Naruto who was snowboarding down the mountain, while holding Dnami under his arm. Next to him Kim and Barkin were holding onto Mr. Possible who was using his own rocket snowboard to outrun the avalanche. One thing that Naruto noticed that he didn't like was that James' snowboard was faster than his own. Hey dude, Dr. P's rocket board is kicking the snot out of your rocket board. Ron yelled out as Naruto's eyebrow began to twitch. Seeing a gorge up ahead, he pushed his snowboard to its limit and was able to catch up with James. However, once they went over the ledge, he realized that they wouldn't make it. His board wasn't fast enough. Throwing his left arm forward, he sent grappling hooks into the side of the cliff as they fell. Gritting his teeth as the Omniband expanded and covered his arm as it compensated for the forces being exerted on it, he swung them up and over the cliff. Flailing in midair, they landed in a snowbank. Lifting himself up, Naruto dusted the snow off himself. Trudging through the snowbank, he saw Ron was having difficulty getting up. Helping him up, he saw that Dnami was having trouble too. Sighing he dragged Ron along to help him. 6 p.m. I don't know if I want to leave the lodge at all for the rest of the weekend. Naruto complained as he sat by the fire inside the lodge. Oh, don't be like that. You were having fun. Before Ron and Barkin got kidnapped, Kim said as she sat across him with her legs up on a stool. I was, but then I saw your dad with his rocket board. It's faster than mine. He said grumpily as Kim rolled her eyes. Seeing Ron coming, Naruto took his backpack off the seat next to him. Thanks for saving me a seat. No problem, Ron. So, how's the first night of Hanukkah going for you? Kim asked as Rufus jumped out of Ron's pocket and settled in front of the fire. That's today Ron yelled in shock as he jumped out of his chair and ran to his room. Ron's a bad Jew. Naruto deadpanned as he saw Rufus chase after him. Says the guy who forgets his own birthday. She shot back with a smirk. Opening his mouth to retort, he found that nothing came out. Touché. Okay, enough lounging around. It's time to ski, Kim said as she jumped out of her chair, grabbing Naruto's arm. She began to drag him out of the lodge. Wait, my backpack. 9 p.m. So why are we all the way out here? Kim asked as she, Ron, and Naruto were at Nami's former lair. 
There's a bunch of stuff that we can still salvage. Plus, I thought you'd want this. Naruto said as he dug out a cuddle buddy. They belong to Dnami. It's stealing. Kim argued even though all she really wanted to do was take every single cuddle buddy she could get her hands on and just run for the hills. For all we know she stole them. Besides, are you really going to let all these poor lonely cuddle buddies freeze out here? Naruto asked with eyes wide. Grumbling, Kim got to work digging out the cuddle buddies. Next to her Ron and Rufus were looking through a machine to direct them on where to dig. December 22 3 a.m. Wearing headphones, Naruto was able to drown out Ron snoring as he tried to work out plans for an upgraded ship. As schematic after schematic scrolled past the laptop screen, he realized he didn't know if he'd actually be able to do it. Sure, he could improve a few system, but the gains were inconsequential when scaled up to something the size of his ship. The reason he had so much trouble creating something more advanced was simple. The ship could easily be considered the pinnacle of all human technology. From the alloys that made up the ship's hull to the fusion engine it was equipped with, nothing else on Earth could compete with it. Pushing his chair back, Naruto had to start pinwheeling his arms, in order to keep from falling as he had forgotten he wasn't in his lab. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to correct himself before he fell backwards. With an oof, he hit the floor hard. Groaning, he sat up and looked at Ron. Thankfully he was still asleep. Rufus, however, was looking around in alarm. A moment later though he saw Naruto on the floor and then went back to sleep. Rubbing his back, he lifted the chair up and sat back down. Sighing, he decided to postpone the upgrade. Instead he started to look over some company reports. A lot of it was simple end-of-the-year reports, gains and loses, and progress on various projects. It was going to be a boring night for him. 1 p.m. The brunch here is good, Ron said as he ate another helping. To his left, Naruto sat drinking coffee. One of the few times that he could actually remember him actually doing so. To his right, Kim was looking through her communicator. He hadn't actually paid attention to what she said though. Super moose. Antler gear solid. That got Ron's attention immediately. Yeah, Jackie asked me if I could help him get it for Jade. Except it's next to impossible to find anywhere. I found a few people online willing to sell it. But they marked it up so high that it'd be cheaper to just buy the damn company. Naruto complained as he sipped his coffee. Have you tried Nakasumi-san? Kim asked as she brought up his picture in the communicator. I didn't really want to bug him. He's probably really busy during this time of year. He said as he shook his head. Well you'll never know unless you ask. She sing-songed as she dangled the communicator in front of his face. Before he could say anything though, Ron grabbed it. Looking at each other, Naruto and Kim shrugged their shoulders and went back to their food as Ron spoke to Nakasumi-san. Middleton High School 7.20 p.m. Wait you want us to what? Kim asked Naruto as she and Ron looked at him confused. It's important and besides, it won't take long. He defended as they were reluctant to go. It won't take all night will it? Ron asked as he really wanted to get home for Hanukkah. I promise that it won't take more than a half hour. Naruto said honestly. Naruto's workshop 7.37 p.m. This is your workshop. It's incredible. Anne said as she looked around and saw how large the underground workshop was. So this is where you do all of your testing. I was wondering since you never work with the space center. James said as he saw a rocket part scattered along a wall. What exactly are you up to Naruto? Kim asked as it was suspicious that he allowed her parents into the workshop. Well, I wanted to give you all your presents early since I might not be here for Christmas. He said as he typed something into his computer and a large column rose from the ground. You're missing Christmas. Kim asked saddened that he might not be there. Maybe. I have to do something pretty important. But I don't know if it'll take all day. I'll try and make it back at night. But I might not be able to. He explained as he circled the column and opened a few slots exposing gift-wrapped presents. This one is for Anne. James, this one's yours. He said giving them their presents. Don't open them until Christmas. Oh, but I wanna know now. James said as he shook his a bit to see if he could figure out what was inside. Shaking his head, Naruto grabbed the last two presents and gave them to Kim and Ron. These you can open right now. Kim raised an eyebrow, but Ron merely ripped his apart. A bracelet? Ron asked as he pulled out a silver bracelet from the box. Getting curious, Kim opened hers up and saw a bracelet that was identical to Ron's. Thanks for the accessory, but why? Well, aren't you going to put them on? He said ignoring their questions. Getting the hint, they put on the bracelets. A moment later the bracelets expanded covering the entirety of their forearm. Eyes wide they realized exactly what the bracelets were. I figured it was time that you two got your own omnibands. Cool. 
How do I make it do stuff? Ron asked as he moved his arm around trying to get it do something. It won't actually be able to do anything for the next 24 hours or so. It'll be tailoring itself to you. So until then it'll just be an accessory. Naruto said as Ron tapped the metal band on his forearm. So no laser cannons. Ron asked depressed. No cannons. Kim said as she moved her arm around to see how it affected her movement. I can hardly feel it. These two are upgraded designs than the one I use. Smaller nanotechnology and they can assemble and disassemble things quicker. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to make them as personalized as I would have liked. He said as looked away in embarrassment. Dude, they're perfect. Don't worry about it. Ron said as he thanked him for the gift. Smiling at their friendship, Anne and James were thankful that they had such a strong friendship. December 23, 6 a.m. Sorry for making you work so late, David. Naruto said into his phone as he reviewed the files being sent over. It's really no problem, sir. With how much you're paying me, I'd work Christmas. David replied before he spoke again. You're not going to make me work Christmas, are you? Laughing, Naruto replied. No, everyone has time off, and that includes you. I'm sure I'll survive a few days without you coordinating everything. Skimming over the files, one caught his attention. David, can you send me the rest of the personnel files on Linda Wilson? No problem, sir. It's horrible what has happened to her husband. Looking through the files, he saw what David meant. What happened to her husband? He asked as he looked through her employee files. He has pancreatic cancer. Stopping what he was doing, he replied. Pancreatic cancer has about a 5% survivability rate. When was he diagnosed? He asked as his mind started making connections. I'd say a few months ago. I found out when I was visiting her lab. It was the office gossip. David explained as he finished sending the required files Naruto needed. And that's the last of it, sir. Will you be needing anything else? Hearing that snap Naruto back to the present. No, that was all I needed. Thank you, David. Tell your family I wish them a Merry Christmas. I will, sir. Thank you. Hearing the hymn hang up, Naruto began to look through Linda Wilson's records. She began to work longer hours a few months ago. That must be when she found out that her husband had cancer. Then a small dip near Halloween. That's when I was in the hospital and things were leaked. Afterward, her hours went back to normal. Realizing he needed more information, he looked through the reports the internal investigation had assembled for him. Nothing was stolen. No inventory went missing or was lost. The only thing out of the ordinary was Linda Wilson missing a few days of work. But that was ignored since her husband was in the hospital being treated for cancer, and it was assumed that such a reason was why she missed work. Looking through the rest of the reports, he saw there wasn't any follow-up. They probably didn't follow up, since that was a legal minefield. Sighing, he knew he'd have to hack a few systems to get the information he needed. Amarillo, Texas, December 23, 12.40 p.m. Texas Oncology. Naruto said out loud as he looked at the sign. Taking a deep breath, he walked in. Walking through the building he drew a few looks, but was almost completely ignored. Until he arrived at the waiting room. Linda Wilson was sitting there looking straight at him. Sitting down next to her, he could see how nervous she looked. She also looked to be in worse condition than when they last met. But that was probably stress from her husband's diagnosis. Hello, Linda. He said with a sad smile. Hello, sir. I'm assuming you know what I did. She said as she gripped her hands. You leaked the information to the media, and I'm guessing you did a fair bit more than just that. He said as he grabbed a magazine from the table in front of him. I let slip a bit of information about what we were working on in my lab, she said as the stress was lifted from her shoulders. Taking a moment to process that, he asked, why? There's a new drug being tested here. The first few clinical trials have shown favorable results. We tried to get him into the trials, but they wouldn't accept him. That's when I was approached. She explained as he could hear the pain in her voice. You didn't tell the media about me. I'm guessing that it was done by them, wasn't it? He said as he closed the magazine and put back on the table. He hadn't actually read anything in it, but it helped keep his hands occupied. I don't really understand why they did that. She admitted as she looked at him, probably hoping that it would make me do something stupid. He said as he closed his eyes and thought about what he needed to do. You understand you broke your contract, correct? Knowing she nodded, he sighed. I'm going to have to let you go. The end.